Alma, chapters 33 through 34 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 33 through 34. Alma, chapter 33. Now after Alma had spoken these words, they sent forth unto him, desiring to know whether they should believe in one God, that they might obtain this fruit of which he had spoken, or how they should plant the seed, or the word of which he had spoken, which he said must be planted in their hearts, or in what manner they should begin to exercise their faith. And Alma said unto them, Behold, ye have said that ye could not worship your God, because ye are cast out of your synagogues. But behold, I say unto you, If ye suppose that ye cannot worship God, ye do greatly err, and ye ought to search the Scriptures. If ye suppose that they have taught you this, ye do not understand them. Do you remember to have read what Zenos the prophet of old has said concerning prayer, or worship? For he said, Thou art merciful, O God, for thou hast heard my prayer. Even when I was in the wilderness, yea, thou wast merciful when I prayed concerning those who were mine enemies, and thou didst turn them to me. Yea, O God, and thou wast merciful unto me when I did cry unto thee in my field, when I did cry unto thee in my prayer, and thou didst hear me. And again, O God, when I did turn to my house, thou didst hear me in my prayer. And when I did turn unto my closet, O Lord, and prayed unto thee, thou didst hear me. Yea, thou art merciful unto thy children, when they cry unto thee, to be heard of thee and not of men, and thou wilt hear them. Yea, O God, thou hast been merciful unto me, and heard my cries in the midst of thy congregations. Yea, and thou hast also heard me, when I have been cast out, and have been despised by mine enemies. Yea, thou didst hear my cries, and wast angry with mine enemies and thou didst visit them in thine anger with speedy destruction. And thou didst hear me because of mine afflictions, and my sincerity. And it is because of thy Son that thou hast been thus merciful unto me. Therefore I will cry unto thee in all mine afflictions, for in thee is my joy, for thou hast turned thy judgments away from me because of thy Son. And now Alma said unto them, Do you believe those scriptures which have been written by them of old? Behold, if ye do, ye must believe what Zenos said. For behold, he said, Thou hast turned away thy judgments because of thy son. And behold, my brethren, I would ask if ye have read the scriptures. If ye have, how can ye disbelieve on the Son of God? For it is not written that Zenos alone spake of these things. But Zenoch also spake of these things. For behold, he said, Thou art angry, O Lord, with this people, because they will not understand thy mercies, which thou hast bestowed upon them because of thy Son. And now, my brethren, ye see that a second prophet of old has testified of the Son of God, and because the people would not understand his words, they stoned him to death. But behold, this is not all. These are not the only ones who have spoken concerning the Son of God. Behold, he was spoken of by Moses. Yea, and behold, a type was raised up in the wilderness, that whosoever would look upon it might live. And many did look and live. But few understood the meaning of those things, and this because of the hardness of their hearts. But there were many who were so hardened that they would not look. Therefore they perished. Now the reason they would not look is because they did not believe that it would heal them. O oh, my brethren, if ye could be healed by merely casting about your eyes that ye might be healed, would ye not behold quickly? Or would ye rather harden your hearts in unbelief and be slothful, that ye would not cast about your eyes that ye might perish? If so, woe shall come upon you. But if not so, then cast about your eyes and begin to believe in the Son of God that he will come to redeem his people and that he shall suffer and die to atone for their sins, and that he shall rise again from the dead, which shall bring to pass the resurrection that all men shall stand before him, to be judged at the last and judgment day, 
according to their works. And now, my brethren, I desire that ye shall plant this word in your hearts, and as it beginneth to swell, even so nourish it by your faith. And behold, it will become a tree springing up in you unto everlasting life. And then may God grant unto you that your burdens may be light through the joy of his Son. And even all this can ye do if ye will. Amen. Alma chapter 34 And now it came to pass that after Alma had spoken these words unto them, he sat down upon the ground. And Amulek arose and began to teach them, saying, My brethren, I think that it is impossible that ye should be ignorant of the things which have been spoken concerning the coming of Christ, who is taught by us to be the Son of God. Yea, I know that these things were taught unto you bountifully before your dissension from among us. And as ye have desired of my beloved brother, that he should make known unto you what ye should do because of your afflictions, and he hath spoken somewhat unto you, to prepare your minds, yea, and he hath exhorted you unto faith and to patience, yea, even that ye would have so much faith as even to plant the word in your hearts, that ye may try the experiment of its goodness. And we have beheld that the great question which is in your minds is whether the word be in the Son of God, or whether there shall be no Christ. And ye also beheld that my brother hath proved unto you in many instances that the word is in Christ, unto salvation. My brother has called upon the words of Zenos, that redemption cometh through the Son of God, and also upon the words of Zenoch. And also he has appealed unto Moses to prove that these things are true. And now, behold, I will testify unto you of myself that these things are true. Behold, I say unto you that I do know that Christ shall come among the children of men to take upon him the transgressions of his people, and that he shall atone for the sins of the world, for the Lord God hath spoken it. For it is expedient that an atonement should be made. For according to the great plan of the eternal God there must be an atonement made, or else all mankind must unavoidably perish. Yea, all are hardened. Yea, all are fallen, and are lost, and must perish except it be through the atonement which it is expedient should be made. For it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, Yea, not a sacrifice of man, neither of beast, neither of any manner of fowl. For it shall not be a human sacrifice, but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. Now there is not any man that can sacrifice his own blood, which will atone for the sins of another. Now if a man murdereth, behold, will our law, which is just, take the life of his brother? I say unto you, Nay, but the law requireth the life of him who hath murdered. Therefore, there can be nothing which is short of an infinite atonement, which will suffice for the sins of the world. Therefore, it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, and then shall there be, or it is expedient, there should be a stop to the shedding of blood. Then shall the law of Moses be fulfilled, yea, it shall be all fulfilled, every jot and tittle, and none shall have passed away. And behold, this is the whole meaning of the law, every whit pointing to the great and last sacrifice, and that great and last sacrifice will be the Son of God, yea, infinite and eternal. And thus he shall bring salvation to all those who shall believe on his name, this being the intent of this last sacrifice, to bring about the bowels of mercy, which overpowereth justice, and bringeth about means unto men, that they may have faith unto repentance." and thus mercy can satisfy the demands of justice, and encircles them in the arms of safety, while he that exercises no faith unto repentance is exposed to the whole law of the demands of justice. Therefore only unto him that has faith unto repentance is brought about the great and eternal plan of redemption. Therefore may God grant unto you, my brethren, that ye may begin to exercise your faith unto repentance, that ye begin to call upon his holy name, that he would have mercy upon you. Yea, cry unto him for mercy, for he is mighty to save. Yea, humble yourselves and continue in prayer unto him. Cry unto him when ye are in your fields. Yea, over all your flocks. Cry unto him in your houses. 
yea, over all your household, both morning, midday, and evening. Yea, cry unto him against the power of your enemies. Yea, cry unto him against the devil, who is an enemy to all righteousness. Cry unto him over the crops of your fields, that ye may prosper in them. Cry over the flocks of your fields, that they may increase. But this is not all. Ye must pour out your souls in your closets, and your secret places, and in your wilderness. Yea, and when ye do not cry unto the Lord, let your hearts be full, drawn out in prayer unto him continually for your welfare, and also for the welfare of those who are around you. And now behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, do not suppose that this is all, for after ye have done all these things, if ye turn away the needy, and the naked, and visit not the sick and afflicted, and impart of your substance, if ye have, to those who stand in need, I say unto you, If ye do not any of these things, behold, your prayer is vain, and availeth you nothing, and ye are as hypocrites who do deny the faith. Therefore, if ye do not remember to be charitable, ye are as dross, which the refiners do cast out, it being of no worth, and is trodden under the foot of men. And now, my brethren, I would that after ye have received so many witnesses, seeing that the holy scriptures testify of these things, ye come forth and bring fruit unto repentance. Yea, I would that ye would come forth and harden not your hearts any longer, for behold, now is the time and the day of your salvation, and therefore, if ye will repent and harden not your hearts, immediately shall the great plan of redemption be brought about unto you. For behold, this life is the time for men to prepare to meet God. Yea, behold, the day of this life is the day for men to perform their labors. And now, as I said unto you before, as ye have had so many witnesses, therefore I beseech of you that ye do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. For after this day of life, which is given us to prepare for eternity, behold, if we do not improve our time while in this life, then cometh the night of darkness, wherein there can be no labor performed. Ye cannot say, when ye are brought to that awful crisis, that I will repent, that I will return to my God. Nay, ye cannot say this, for that same spirit which doth possess your bodies at the time that ye go out of this life, that same spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. For behold, if ye have procrastinated the day of your repentance, even until death, behold, ye have become subjected to the spirit of the devil, and he doth seal you his. Therefore the spirit of the Lord hath withdrawn from you, and hath no place in you, and the devil hath all power over you, and this is the final state of the wicked. And this I know, because the Lord hath said, He dwelleth not in unholy temples, but in the hearts of the righteous doth he dwell. Yea, and he has also said that the righteous shall sit down in his kingdom to go no more out, but their garments should be made white through the blood of the Lamb. And now, my beloved brethren, I desire that ye should remember these things, and that ye should work out your salvation with fear before God, and that ye should no more deny the coming of Christ, that ye contend no more against the Holy Ghost, but that ye receive it, and take upon you the name of Christ, that ye humble yourselves even to the dust, and worship God in whatsoever place ye may be in, in spirit and in truth, and that ye live in thanksgiving daily for the many mercies and blessings which he doth bestow upon you. Yea, and I also exhort you, my brethren, that ye be watchful unto prayer continually, that ye may not be led away by the temptations of the devil, that he may not overpower you, that ye may not become his subjects at the last day. For behold, he rewardeth you no good thing. And now, my beloved brethren, I would exhort you to have patience, and that ye bear with all manner of afflictions, that ye do not revile against those who do cast you out because of your exceeding poverty, lest ye become sinners like unto them, but that ye have patience, and bear with those afflictions, with a firm hope, that ye shall one day rest from all your afflictions.
End of Alma, chapters 33 through 34. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 35 through 37 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 35 through 37. Alma, chapter 35. Now it came to pass that after Amulek had made an end of these words, they withdrew themselves from the multitude, and came over into the land of Jershon. Yea, and the rest of the brethren, after they had preached the word unto the Zoramites, also came over into the land of Jershon. And it came to pass that after the more popular part of the Zoramites had consulted together concerning the words which had been preached unto them, they were angry because of the word, for it did destroy their craft. Therefore they would not hearken unto the words. And they sent and gathered together throughout all the land all the people, and consulted with them concerning the words which had been spoken. Now their rulers and their priests and their teachers did not let the people know concerning their desires. Therefore they found out privily the minds of all the people. And it came to pass that after they had found out the minds of all the people, those who were in favor of the words which had been spoken by Alma and his brethren were cast out of the land, and they were many, and they came over also into the land of Jershon. And it came to pass that Alma and his brethren did minister unto them. Now the people of the Zoramites were angry with the people of Ammon, who were in Jershon. And the chief ruler of the Zoramites, being a very wicked man, sent over unto the people of Ammon, desiring them that they should cast out of their land all those who came over from them into their land. And he breathed out many threatenings against them, and now the people of Ammon did not fear their words, therefore they did not cast them out, but they did receive all the poor of the Zoramites that came over unto them, and they did nourish them, and did clothe them, and did give unto them lands for their inheritance, and they did administer unto them according to their wants. Now this did stir up the Zoramites to anger against the people of Ammon, and they began to mix with the Lamanites, and to stir them up also to anger against them. And thus the Zoramites and the Lamanites began to make preparations for war against the people of Ammon, and also against the Nephites. And thus ended the seventeenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And the people of Ammon departed out of the land of Jershon, and came over into the land of Melech, and gave place in the land of Jershon for the armies of the Nephites, that they might contend with the armies of the Lamanites and the armies of the Zoramites. And thus commenced a war betwixt the Lamanites and the Nephites in the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges, and an account shall be given of their wars hereafter. And Alma and Ammon and their brethren, and also the two sons of Alma, returned to the land of Zarahemla, after having been instruments in the hands of God of bringing many of the Zoramites to repentance. And as many as were brought to repentance were driven out of their land, but they have lands for their inheritance in the land of Jershon, and they have taken up arms to defend themselves and their wives and children and their lands. Now Alma, being grieved for the iniquity of his people, yea, for the wars and the bloodsheds and the contentions which were among them, and having been to declare the word, or sent to declare the word, among all the people in every city, and seeing that the hearts of the people began to wax hard, and that they began to be offended because of the strictness of the word, his heart was exceedingly sorrowful. Therefore he caused that his sons should be gathered together, that he might give unto them every one his charge separately, concerning the things pertaining unto righteousness. And we have an account of his commandments which he gave unto them, according to his own record. Alma chapter 36 My son, give ear to my words, for I swear unto you that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. I would that ye should do as I have done in remembering the captivity of our fathers, for they were in bondage, and none could deliver them except it was the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and he surely did deliver them in their afflictions. And now, O my son Helaman, behold, thou art in thy youth, and therefore I beseech of thee that thou wilt hear my words, 
and learn of me. For I do know that whosoever shall put their trust in God shall be supported in their trials, and their troubles, and their afflictions, and shall be lifted up at the last day. And I would not that ye think that I know of myself, not of the temporal, but of the spiritual, not of the carnal mind, but of God. Now behold, I say unto you, If I had not been born of God, I should not have known these things. But God has, by the mouth of his holy angel, made these things known unto me, not of any worthiness of myself. For I went about with the sons of Mosiah, seeking to destroy the church of God. But behold, God sent his holy angel to stop us by the way. And behold, he spake unto us, as it were, the voice of thunder. And the whole earth did tremble beneath our feet. And we all fell to the earth, for the fear of the Lord came upon us. But behold, the voice said unto me, Arise. And I arose, and stood up, and beheld the angel. And he said unto me, If thou wilt of thyself be destroyed, seek no more to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass that I fell to the earth, and it was for the space of three days and three nights that I could not open my mouth, neither had I the use of my limbs. And the angel spake more things unto me, which were heard by my brethren, but I did not hear them. For when I heard the words, If thou wilt be destroyed of thyself, seek no more to destroy the church of God, I was struck with such great fear and amazement, lest perhaps I should be destroyed, that I fell to the earth, and I did hear no more. But I was racked with eternal torment, for my soul was harrowed up to the greatest degree, and racked with all my sins. Yea, I did remember all my sins and iniquities, for which I was tormented with the pains of hell. Yea, I saw that I had rebelled against my God, and that I had not kept his holy commandments. Yea, and I had murdered many of his children, or rather, led them away unto destruction. Yea, and in fine, so great had been my iniquities, that the very thought of coming into the presence of my God did rack my soul with inexpressible horror. Oh, thought I, that I could be banished and become extinct both soul and body, that I might not be brought to stand in the presence of my God to be judged of my deeds. And now for three days and for three nights was I racked, even with the pains of a damned soul. And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O oh, Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, who am in the gall of bitterness, and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now, behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. And, oh, what joy, and what marvelous light I did behold! Yea, my soul was filled with joy, as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. Yea, methought I saw, even as our father Lehi saw, God sitting upon his throne, surrounded with numberless concourses of angels, in the attitude of singing and praising their God. Yea, and my soul did long to be there. But, behold, my limbs did receive their strength again, and I stood upon my feet, and did manifest unto the people that I had been born of God. Yea, and from that time, even until now, I have labored without ceasing, that I might bring souls unto repentance, that I might bring them to taste of the exceeding joy of which I did taste, that they might also be born of God, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yea, and now behold, O my son, the Lord doth give me exceedingly great joy in the fruit of my labors. For because of the word which he has imparted unto me, behold, many have been born of God, and have tasted as I have tasted, and have seen eye to eye as I have seen, 
Therefore they do know of these things of which I have spoken, as I do know. And the knowledge which I have is of God. And I have been supported under trials and troubles of every kind. Yea, and in all manner of afflictions. Yea, God has delivered me from prison, and from bonds, and from death. Yea, and I do put my trust in him, and he will still deliver me. And I know that he will raise me up at the last day to dwell with him in glory. Yea, and I will praise him forever, for he has brought our fathers out of Egypt, and he has swallowed up the Egyptians in the Red Sea, and he led them by his power into the promised land. Yea, and he has delivered them out of bondage and captivity from time to time. Yea, and he has also brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem, and he has also by his everlasting power delivered them out of bondage and captivity from time to time, even down to the present day and I have always retained in remembrance their captivity. Yea, and ye also ought to retain in remembrance, as I have done, their captivity. But behold, my son, this is not all. For ye ought to know, as I do know, that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. And ye ought to know also that inasmuch as ye will not keep the commandments of God, ye shall be cut off from his presence. Now this is according to his word. Alma, chapter 37. And now, my son Helaman, I command you that ye take the records which have been entrusted with me. And I also command you that ye keep a record of this people according as I have done upon the plates of Nephi, and keep all these things sacred which I have kept, even as I have kept them. For it is for a wise purpose that they are kept. And these plates of brass, which contain these engravings, which have the records of the Holy Scriptures upon them, which have the genealogy of our forefathers even from the beginning, behold, it has been prophesied by our fathers that they should be kept and handed down from one generation to another, and be kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord until they should go forth unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, that they shall know of the mysteries contained thereon. And now, behold, if they are kept, they must retain their brightness. Yea, and they will retain their brightness. Yea, and also shall all the plates, which do contain that which is holy writ. Now ye may suppose that this is foolishness in me. But behold, I say unto you, that by small and simple things are great things brought to pass. And small means in many instances doth confound the wise. And the Lord God doth work by means to bring about his great and eternal purposes. And by very small means the Lord doth confound the wise, and bringeth about the salvation of many souls. And now it has hitherto been wisdom in God that these things should be preserved. For behold, they have enlarged the memory of this people, yea, and convinced many of the error of their ways, and brought them to the knowledge of their God unto the salvation of their souls. Yea, I say unto you, were it not for these things that these records do contain, which are on these plates, Ammon and his brethren could not have convinced so many thousands of the Lamanites of the incorrect tradition of their fathers. Yea, these records and their words brought them unto repentance. That is, they brought them to the knowledge of the Lord their God, and to rejoice in Jesus Christ their Redeemer. And who knoweth but what they will be the means of bringing many thousands of them, yea, and also many thousands of our stiff-necked brethren, the Nephites, who are now hardening their hearts in sin and iniquities, to the knowledge of their Redeemer. Now these mysteries are not yet fully made known unto me, therefore I shall forbear. And it may suffice if I only say they are preserved for a wise purpose, which purpose is known unto God. For he doth counsel in wisdom over all his works, and his paths are straight, and his course is one eternal round. O oh, remember, remember, my son Helaman, how strict are the commandments of God. And he said, if ye will keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. But if ye keep not his commandments, ye shall be cut off from his presence. And now remember, my son, that God hath entrusted you with these things which are sacred, which he has kept sacred, and also which he will keep and preserve for a wise purpose in him, that he may show forth his power unto future generations. And now, behold, I tell you by the spirit of prophecy, that if ye transgress the commandments of God, behold, these things which are sacred 
shall be taken away from you by the power of God, and ye shall be delivered up unto Satan, that he may sift you as chaff before the wind. But if ye keep the commandments of God, and do with these things which are sacred according to that which the Lord doth command you, for you must appeal unto the Lord for all things whatsoever ye must do with them, behold, no power of earth or hell can take them from you, for God is powerful to the fulfilling of all his words. For he will fulfill all his promises which he shall make unto you. For he has fulfilled his promises which he has made unto our fathers. For he promised unto them that he would preserve these things for a wise purpose in him, that he might show forth his power unto future generations. And now behold, one purpose hath he fulfilled, even to the restoration of many thousands of the Lamanites to the knowledge of the truth. And he hath shown forth his power in them, and he will also still show forth his power in them unto future generations. Therefore they shall be preserved. Therefore I command you, my son Helaman, that ye be diligent in fulfilling all my words, and that ye be diligent in keeping the commandments of God as they are written. And now I will speak unto you concerning those twenty-four plates, that ye keep them, that the mysteries and the works of darkness, and their secret works, or the secret works of those people who have been destroyed, may be made manifest unto this people, yea, all their murders, and robbings, and their plunderings, and all their wickedness and abominations may be made manifest unto this people, yea, and that ye preserve these interpreters. For behold, the Lord saw that his people began to work in darkness, yea, work secret murders and abominations. Therefore the Lord said, If they did not repent, they should be destroyed from off the face of the earth. And the Lord said, I will prepare unto my servant Gazelum a stone, which shall shine forth in darkness unto light, that I may discover unto my people who serve me, that I may discover unto them the works of their brethren, yea, their secret works, their works of darkness, and their wickedness and abominations. And now, my son, these interpreters were prepared that the word of God might be fulfilled, which he spake, saying, I will bring forth out of darkness unto light all their secret works and their abominations, and except they repent I will destroy them from off the face of the earth and I will bring to light all their secrets and abominations unto every nation that shall hereafter possess the land. And now, my son, we see that they did not repent, therefore they have been destroyed, and thus far the word of God has been fulfilled. Yea, their secret abominations have been brought out of darkness and made known unto us. And now, my son, I command you that ye retain all their oaths, and their covenants, and their agreements, and their secret abominations, yea, and all their signs and their wonders ye shall keep from this people, that they know them not, lest, peradventure, they should fall into darkness also and be destroyed. For behold, there is a curse upon all this land, that destruction shall come upon all those workers of darkness, according to the power of God, when they are fully ripe. Therefore I desire that this people might not be destroyed, Therefore ye shall keep these secret plans of their oaths and their covenants from this people, and only their wickedness and their murders and their abominations shall ye make known unto them. And ye shall teach them to abhor such wickedness and abominations and murders, and ye shall also teach them that these people were destroyed on account of their wickedness and abominations and their murders. For behold, they murdered all the prophets of the Lord who came among them to declare unto them concerning their iniquities and the blood of those whom they murdered did cry unto the Lord their God for vengeance upon those who were their murderers. And thus the judgments of God did come upon these workers of darkness and secret combinations. Yea, and cursed be the land for ever and ever, unto those workers of darkness and secret combinations, even unto destruction, except they repent before they are fully ripe. And now, my son, remember the words which I have spoken unto you, Trust not those secret plans unto this people, but teach them an everlasting hatred against sin and iniquity. Preach unto them repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach them to humble themselves and to be meek and lowly in heart. Teach them to withstand every temptation of the devil with their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
teach them to never be weary of good works, but to be meek and lowly in heart, for such shall find rest to their souls. O oh, remember, my son, and learn wisdom in thy youth. Yea, learn in thy youth to keep the commandments of God. Yea, and cry unto God for all thy support. Yea, let all thy doings be unto the Lord, and whithersoever thou goest, let it be in the Lord. Yea, let all thy thoughts be directed unto the Lord. Yea, let the affections of thy heart be placed upon the Lord for ever. Counsel with the Lord in all thy doings, and he will direct thee for good. Yea, when thou liest down at night, lie down unto the Lord, that he may watch over you in your sleep. And when thou risest in the morning, let thy heart be full of thanks unto God. And if ye do these things, ye shall be lifted up at the last day. And now, my son, I have somewhat to say concerning the thing which our fathers call a ball, or director, or our fathers called it Liahona, which is, being interpreted, a compass. And the Lord prepared it. And behold, there cannot any man work after the manner of so curious a workmanship. And behold, it was prepared to show unto our fathers the course which they should travel in the wilderness. And it did work for them according to their faith in God. Therefore, if they had faith to believe that God could cause that those spindles should point the way they should go, behold, it was done. Therefore they had this miracle, and also many other miracles wrought by the power of God day by day. Nevertheless, because those miracles were worked by small means, it did show unto them marvelous works. They were slothful, and forgot to exercise their faith and diligence, and then those marvelous works ceased, and they did not progress in their journey. Therefore they tarried in the wilderness, or did not travel a direct course, and were afflicted with hunger and thirst because of their transgressions. And now, my son, I would that ye should understand that these things are not without a shadow. For as our fathers were slothful to give heed to this compass, now these things were temporal, they did not prosper, even so it is with things which are spiritual. For behold, it is as easy to give heed to the word of Christ, which will point to you a straight course to eternal bliss, as it was for our fathers to give heed to this compass, which would point unto them a straight course to the promised land. And now I say, is there not a type in this thing? For just as surely as this director did bring our fathers by following its course to the promised land, shall the words of Christ, if we follow their course, carry us beyond this veil of sorrow into a far better land of promise. O oh, my son, do not let us be slothful because of the easiness of the way. For so was it with our fathers. For so was it prepared for them that if they would look, they might live. Even so it is with us. The way is prepared. And if we will look, we may live forever. And now, my son, see that ye take care of these sacred things. Yea, see that ye look to God and live. Go unto this people, and declare the word, and be sober. My son, farewell. End of Alma, chapters 35 through 37. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 38 through 41 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 38 through 41. Alma, chapter 38. My son, give ear to my words, for I say unto you, even as I said unto Helaman, that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. And inasmuch as ye will not keep the commandments of God, ye shall be cut off from his presence. And now, my son, I trust that I shall have great joy in you, because of your steadiness and your faithfulness unto God. For as you have commenced in your youth to look to the Lord your God, even so I hope that you will continue in keeping his commandments. For blessed is he 
that endureth to the end. I say unto you, my son, that I have had great joy in thee already, because of thy faithfulness, and thy diligence, and thy patience, and thy long suffering among the people of the Zoramites. For I know that thou wast in bonds. Yea, and I also know that thou wast stoned for the word's sake. And thou didst bear all these things with patience, because the Lord was with thee. And now thou knowest that the Lord did deliver thee. And now, my son, Shiblon, I would that ye should remember that as much as ye shall put your trust in God, even so much ye shall be delivered out of your trials, and your troubles, and your afflictions, and ye shall be lifted up at the last day. Now, my son, I would not that ye should think that I know these things of myself, but it is the Spirit of God which is in me, which maketh these things known unto me. For if I had not been born of God, I should not have known these things. But behold, the Lord in his great mercy sent his angel to declare unto me that I must stop the work of destruction among his people. Yea, and I have seen an angel face to face, and he spake with me, and his voice was as thunder, and it shook the whole earth. And it came to pass that I was three days and three nights in the most bitter pain and anguish of soul, and never until I did cry out unto the Lord Jesus Christ for mercy did I receive a remission of my sins. But, behold, I did cry unto him, and I did find peace to my soul. And now, my son, I have told you this, that ye may learn wisdom, that ye may learn of me that there is no other way or means whereby man can be saved, only in and through Christ. Behold, he is the life and the light of the world. Behold, he is the word of truth and righteousness. And now, as ye have begun to teach the word, even so I would that ye should continue to teach, and I would that ye would be diligent and temperate in all things. See that ye are not lifted up unto pride. Yea, see that ye do not boast in your own wisdom, nor of your much strength. Use boldness, but not overbearance, and also see that ye bridle all your passions, that ye may be filled with love. See that ye refrain from idleness. Do not pray as the Zoramites do, for ye have seen that they pray to be heard of men and to be praised for their wisdom. Do not say, O God, I thank thee that we are better than our brethren, but rather say, O Lord, forgive my unworthiness, and remember my brethren in mercy. Yea, acknowledge your unworthiness before God at all times. And may the Lord bless your soul, and receive you at the last day into his kingdom, to sit down in peace. Now go, my son, and teach the word unto this people. Be sober, my son. Farewell. Alma chapter 39 And now, my son, I have somewhat more to say unto thee than what I said unto thy brother. For behold, have ye not observed the steadiness of thy brother, his faithfulness, and his diligence in keeping the commandments of God? Behold, has he not set a good example for thee? For thou didst not give so much heed unto my words as did thy brother among the people of the Zoramites. Now this is what I have against thee. Thou didst go on unto boasting in thy strength and thy wisdom. And this is not all, my son. Thou didst do that which was grievous unto me. For thou didst forsake the ministry, and did go over into the land of Siren, among the borders of the Lamanites, after the harlot Isabel. Yea, she did still away the hearts of many. But this was no excuse for thee, my son. Thou shouldst have tended to the ministry wherewith thou wast entrusted. Know ye not, my son, that these things are an abomination in the sight of the Lord? Yea, most abominable above all sins, save it be the shedding of innocent blood, or denying the Holy Ghost. For behold, if ye deny the Holy Ghost, when it once has had place in you, and ye know that ye deny it, behold, this is a sin which is unpardonable. Yea, and whosoever murdereth against the light and knowledge of God, it is not easy for him to obtain forgiveness. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that it is not easy for him to obtain a forgiveness. And now, my son, I would to God that ye had not been guilty of so great a crime. I would not dwell upon your crimes to harrow up your soul, if it were not for your good. But behold, ye cannot hide your crimes from God and except you repent, they will stand as a testimony against you at the last day. Now, my son, I would that ye should repent, and forsake your sins, and go no more after the lusts of your eyes, but cross yourself in all these things, 
for except ye do this, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. O oh, remember, and take it upon you, and cross yourself in these things. And I command you to take it upon you, to counsel with your elder brothers in your undertakings. For behold, thou art in thy youth, and ye stand in need to be nourished by your brothers, and give heed to their counsel. Suffer not yourself to be led away by any vain or foolish thing. Suffer not the devil to lead away your heart again after those wicked harlots. Behold, O my son, how great iniquity ye brought upon the Zoramites, for when they saw your conduct, they would not believe in my words. And now the Spirit of the Lord doth say unto me, Command thy children to do good, lest they lead away the hearts of many people to destruction. Therefore I command you, my son, in the fear of God, that ye refrain from your iniquities, that ye turn to the Lord with all your mind, might, and strength, that ye lead away the hearts of no more to do wickedly, but rather return unto them, and acknowledge your faults, and that wrong which ye have done. Seek not after riches, nor the vain things of this world, for behold, you cannot carry them with you. And now, my son, I would say somewhat unto you concerning the coming of Christ. Behold, I say unto you, that it is he that surely shall come to take away the sins of the world. Yea, he cometh to declare glad tidings of salvation unto his people. And now, my son, this was the ministry unto which ye were called, to declare these glad tidings unto this people, to prepare their minds, or rather that salvation might come unto them, that they may prepare the minds of their children to hear the word at the time of his coming. And now I will ease your mind somewhat on this subject. Behold, you marvel why these things should be known so long beforehand. Behold, I say unto you, is not a soul at this time as precious unto God as a soul will be at the time of his coming? Is it not as necessary that the plan of redemption should be made known unto this people as well as unto their children? Is it not as easy at this time for the Lord to send his angel to declare these glad tidings unto us as unto our children, or as after the time of his coming? Alma chapter 40 now, my son, here is somewhat more I would say unto thee, for I perceive that thy mind is worried concerning the resurrection of the dead. Behold, I say unto you that there is no resurrection, or I would say in other words, that this mortal does not put on immortality, this corruption does not put on incorruption, until after the coming of Christ. Behold, he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead. But behold, my son, the resurrection is not yet. Now I unfold unto you a mystery, nevertheless there are many mysteries which are kept, that no one knoweth them save God himself. But I show unto you one thing which I have inquired diligently of God that I might know, that is, concerning the resurrection. Behold, there is a time appointed that all shall come forth from the dead. Now when this time cometh, no one knows, but God knoweth the time which is appointed. Now whether there shall be one time, or a second time, or a third time, that men shall come forth from the dead, it mattereth not. For God knoweth all these things, and it sufficeth me to know that this is the case, that there is a time appointed, that all shall rise from the dead. Now there must needs be a space betwixt the time of death and the time of the resurrection. And now I would inquire what becometh of the souls of men from this time of death to the time appointed for the resurrection? Now whether there is more than one time appointed for men to rise, it mattereth not. For all do not die at once, and this mattereth not. All is as one day with God, and time only is measured unto men. Therefore there is a time appointed unto men, that they shall rise from the dead. And there is a space between the time of death and the resurrection. And now concerning this space of time... What becometh of the souls of men is the thing which I have inquired diligently of the Lord to know, and this is the thing of which I do know. And when the time cometh, when all shall rise, then shall they know that God knoweth all the times which are appointed unto man. Now concerning the state of the soul between death and the resurrection, behold, it has been made known unto me by an angel that the spirits of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, Yea, the spirits of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. And then shall it come to pass that the spirits of those who are righteous 
are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all care and sorrow. And then shall it come to pass that the spirits of the wicked, yea, who are evil, for behold, they have no part nor portion of the Spirit of the Lord, for behold, they chose evil works rather than good. Therefore the spirit of the devil did enter into them, and take possession of their house, and these shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping, and wailing, and gnashing of teeth, and this because of their own iniquity, being led captive by the will of the devil. Now this is the state of the souls of the wicked, yea, in darkness, and a state of awful, fearful looking for the fiery indignation of the wrath of God upon them. Thus they remain in this state, as well as the righteous in paradise, until the time of their resurrection. Now there are some who have understood that this state of happiness and this state of misery of the soul before the resurrection was a first resurrection. Yea, I admit it may be termed a resurrection, the raising of the spirit or the soul and their consignation to happiness or misery, according to the words which have been spoken. And behold again, it hath been spoken, that there is a first resurrection, a resurrection of all those who have been, or who are, or who shall be, down to the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Now we do not suppose that this first resurrection, which is spoken of in this manner, can be the resurrection of the souls in their consignation to happiness or misery. You cannot suppose that this is what it meaneth. Behold, I say unto you, Nay. But it meaneth the reuniting of the soul with the body, of those from the days of Adam down to the resurrection of Christ. Now whether the souls and the bodies of those of whom has been spoken shall all be reunited at once, the wicked as well as the righteous, I do not say. Let it suffice that I say that they all come forth. Or in other words, their resurrection cometh to pass before the resurrection of those who die after the resurrection of Christ. Now, my son, I do not say that their resurrection cometh at the resurrection of Christ, but, behold, I give it as my opinion, that the souls and the bodies are reunited of the righteous at the resurrection of Christ and his ascension into heaven. But whether it be at his resurrection or after, I do not say, but this much I say, that there is a space between death and the resurrection of the body, and a state of the soul in happiness or in misery until the time which is appointed of God, that the dead shall come forth and be reunited both soul and body, and be brought to stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Yea, this bringeth about the restoration of those things of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. The soul shall be restored to the body, and the body to the soul. Yea, and every limb and joint shall be restored to its body. Yea, even a hair of the head shall not be lost. But all things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame. And now, my son, this is the restoration of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. And then shall the righteous shine forth in the kingdom of God. But, behold, an awful death cometh upon the wicked, for they die as to things pertaining to things of righteousness, for they are unclean, and no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of God. But they are cast out, and consigned to partake of the fruits of their labors, or their works, which have been evil, and they drink the dregs of a bitter cup. Alma chapter 41 And now, my son, I have somewhat to say concerning the restoration of which has been spoken. For behold, some have wrested the scriptures, and have gone far astray because of this thing. And I perceive that thy mind has been worried also concerning this thing. But behold, I will explain it unto thee. I say unto thee, my son, that the plan of restoration is requisite with the justice of God, for it is requisite that all things should be restored to their proper order. Behold, it is requisite and just, according to the power and resurrection of Christ, that the soul of man should be restored to its body, and that every part of the body should be restored to itself. And it is requisite with the justice of God that men should be judged according to their works. And if their works were good in this life, and the desires of their hearts were good, that they should also at the last day be restored unto that which is good. And if their works are evil, they shall be restored unto them for evil. Therefore all things shall be restored to their proper order. 
everything to its natural frame, mortality raised to immortality, corruption to incorruption, raised to endless happiness to inherit the kingdom of God, or to endless misery to inherit the kingdom of the devil, the one on the one hand, the other on the other. The one raised to happiness according to his desires of happiness, or good according to his desires of good, and the other to evil according to his desires of evil. For as he has desired to do evil all the day long, even so shall he have his reward of evil when the night cometh. And so it is, on the other hand, if he hath repented of his sins, and desired righteousness until the end of his days, even so he shall be rewarded unto righteousness. These are they that are redeemed of the Lord. Yea, these are they that are taken out, that are delivered from that endless night of darkness. And thus they stand or fall, for behold, they are their own judges, whether to do good or do evil. Now the decrees of God are unalterable. Therefore the way is prepared that whosoever will may walk therein and be saved. And now, behold, my son, do not risk one more offense against your God upon those points of doctrine which ye have hitherto risked to commit sin. Do not suppose, because it has been spoken concerning restoration, that ye shall be restored from sin to happiness. Behold, I say unto you, wickedness never was happiness. And now, my son, all men that are in a state of nature, or I would say in a carnal state, are in the gall of bitterness, and in the bonds of iniquity. They are without God in the world, and they have gone contrary to the nature of God. Therefore they are in a state contrary to the nature of happiness. And now, behold, is the meaning of the word restoration to take a thing of a natural state and place it in an unnatural state? or to place it in a state opposite to its nature? O oh, my son, this is not the case. But the meaning of the word restoration is to bring back again evil for evil, or carnal for carnal, or devilish for devilish, good for that which is good, righteous for that which is righteous, just for that which is just, merciful for that which is merciful. Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful unto your brethren deal justly judge righteously and do good continually and if ye do all these things then shall ye receive your reward yea ye shall have mercy restored unto you again ye shall have justice restored unto you again ye shall have a righteous judgment restored unto you again and ye shall have good rewarded unto you again for that which ye do send out shall return unto you again and be restored therefore the word restoration more fully condemneth the sinner, and justifieth him not at all. End of Alma, chapters 38 through 41. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma 42 through 45 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sarah Luann. The Book of Mormon translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, Chapter 42. And now, my son, I perceive there is somewhat more which doth worry your mind, which ye cannot understand, which is concerning the justice of God in the punishment of the sinner. For ye do try to suppose that it is injustice that the sinner should be consigned to a state of misery. Now behold, my son, I will explain this thing unto thee. For behold, after the Lord God sent our first parents forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground, from whence they were taken, yea, he drew out the man, and he placed at the east end of the garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the tree of life. Now we see that the man had become as God, knowing good and evil, unless he should put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live for ever, the Lord God placed cherubim in a flaming sword, that he should not partake of the fruit. And thus we see that there was a time granted unto man to repent, yea, a probationary time, a time to repent and serve God. For behold, if Adam had put forth his hand immediately, and partaken of the tree of life, he would have lived for ever according to the word of God, having no space for repentance, yea, and also the word of God would have been void, and the great plan of salvation would have been frustrated. 
but behold it was appointed unto man to die therefore as they were cut off from the tree of life they should be cut off from the face of the earth and man became lost for ever yea they became fallen man and now ye see by this that our first parents were cut off both temporally and spiritually from the presence of the lord and thus we see they became subjects to follow after their own will now behold it was not expedient that man should be reclaimed from this temporal death for that would destroy the great plan of happiness therefore as the soul could never die and the fall had brought upon all mankind a spiritual death as well as a temporal that is they were cut off from the presence of the lord it was expedient that mankind should be reclaimed from this spiritual death therefore as they had become carnal sensual and devilish by nature this probationary state became a state for them to prepare it became a preparatory state and now remember my son if it were not for the plan of redemption laying it aside as soon as they were dead their souls were miserable being cut off from the presence of the lord and now there was no means to reclaim men from this fallen state which man had brought upon himself because of his own disobedience therefore according to justice the plan of redemption could not be brought about only on conditions of repentance of men in this probationary state yea this preparatory state for except it were for these conditions mercy could not take effect except it should destroy the work of justice now the work of justice could not be destroyed if so god would cease to be god and thus we see that all mankind were fallen and they were in the grasp of justice yea the justice of god which consigned them for ever to be cut off from his presence and now the plan of mercy could not be brought about except an atonement should be made therefore god himself atoneth for the sins of the world to bring about the plan of mercy to appease the demands of justice that god might be a perfect just god and a merciful god also now repentance could not come unto men except there were a punishment which also was eternal as the life of the soul should be a fixed opposite to the plan of happiness which was as eternal also as the life of the soul now how could a man repent except he should sin how could he sin if there was no law how could there be a law save there was a punishment now there was a punishment affixed and a just law given which brought remorse of conscience unto man now if there was no law given if a man murdered he should die would he be afraid he would die if he should murder and also if there was no law given against sin men would not be afraid to sin and if there was no law given if men sin what could justice do or mercy either for they would have no claim upon the creature but there is a law given and a punishment affixed and a repentance granted which repentance mercy claimeth otherwise justice claimeth the creature and executeth the law and the law inflicteth the punishment if not so the works of justice would be destroyed and god would cease to be god but god ceaseth not to be god and mercy claimeth the penitent and mercy cometh because of the atonement and the atonement bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead and the resurrection of the dead bringeth back men into the presence of god and thus they are restored into his presence to be judged according to their works according to the law and justice for behold justice exerciseth all his demands and also mercy claimeth all which is her own and thus none but the truly penitent are saved what do ye suppose that mercy can rob justice i say unto you nay not one whit if so god would cease to be god and thus god bringeth about his great and eternal purposes which were prepared from the foundation of the world and thus cometh about the salvation and the redemption of men and also their destruction and misery therefore o my son whosoever will come may come and partake of the waters of life freely and whosoever will not come the same is not compelled to come but in the last day it shall be restored unto him according to his deeds if he has desired to do evil and has not repented in his days behold evil shall be done unto him according to the restoration of god and now my son i desire that ye should let these things trouble you no more and only let your sins trouble you with that trouble which shall bring you down unto repentance o my son i desire that ye should deny the justice of god no more do not endeavour to excuse yourself in the least point because of your sins by denying the justice of god but do you let the justice of god and his mercy and his long-suffering have full sway in your heart and let it bring you down to the dust in humility and now my son ye are called of god to preach the word unto this people and now my son go thy way declare the word with truth and soberness that thou mayest bring souls unto repentance and that the great plan of mercy may have claim upon them 
and may God grant unto you even according to my words. Amen. Chapter 43 And now it came to pass that the sons of Alma did go forth among the people to declare the word unto them, and Alma also himself could not rest, and he also went forth. Now we shall say no more concerning their preaching, except that they preached the word, and the truth, according to the spirit of prophecy and revelation, and they preached after the holy order of God, by which they were called. And now I return to an account of the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites, in the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges. For behold, it came to pass that the Zoramites became Lamanites. Therefore, in the commencement of the eighteenth year, the people of the Nephites saw that the Lamanites were coming upon them. Therefore they made preparations for war. Yea, they gathered together their armies in the land of Jershon. And it came to pass that the Lamanites came with their thousands, and they came into the land of Antionum, which is the land of the Zoramites. And a man by the name of Zarahemna was their leader. And now, as the Amalekites were of a more wicked and murderous disposition than the Lamanites were, in and of themselves, therefore Zarahemna appointed chief captains over the Lamanites, and they were all Amalekites and Zoramites. Now this he did that he might preserve their hatred towards the Nephites, that he might bring them into subjection to the accomplishment of his designs. For behold, his designs were to stir up the Lamanites to anger against the Nephites. This he did that he might usurp great power over them, and also that he might gain power over the Nephites by bringing them into bondage. Now the design of the Nephites was to support their lands, and their houses, and their wives, and their children, that they might preserve them from the hands of their enemies, and also that they might preserve their rights and their privileges, yea, and also their liberty, that they might worship God according to their desires. For they knew that if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, that whosoever should worship God in spirit and in truth, the true and living God, the Lamanites would destroy. Yea, and they also knew the extreme hatred of the Lamanites towards their brethren, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, who were called the people of Ammon, and they would not take up arms. They had entered into a covenant, and they would not break it. Therefore, if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, they would be destroyed. And the Nephites would not suffer that they should be destroyed. Therefore they gave them lands for their inheritance. And the people of Ammon did give unto the Nephites a large portion of their substance to support their armies, and thus the Nephites were compelled, alone, to withstand against the Lamanites, who were a compound of Laman and Lemuel, and the sons of Ishmael, and all those who had dissented from the Nephites, who were Amalekites and Zoramites, and the descendants of the priests of Noah. Now those descendants were as numerous, nearly, as were the Nephites, and thus the Nephites were obliged to contend with their brethren, even unto bloodshed. And it came to pass, as the armies of the Lamanites had gathered together in the land of Antionum, behold, the armies of the Nephites were prepared to meet them in the land of Jershon. Now the leader of the Nephites, or the man who had been appointed to be the chief captain over the Nephites, now the chief captain took command of all the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Moroni. And Moroni took all the command, and the government of their wars, and he was only twenty and five years old when he was appointed chief captain over the armies of the Nephites. And it came to pass that he met the Lamanites in the borders of Jershon, and his people were armed with swords and with scimitars and all manner of weapons of war. And when the armies of the Lamanites saw that the people of Nephi, or that Moroni, had prepared his people with breastplates and with arm shields, yea, and also shields to defend their heads, and also they were dressed with thick clothing, now the army of Zarahemna was not prepared with any such thing. They had only their swords and their scimitars, their bows and their arrows, their stones and their slings, and they were naked, save it were a skin which was girded about their loins. Yea, all were naked, save it were the Zoramites and the Amalekites. But they were not armed with breastplates nor shields. Therefore they were exceedingly afraid of the armies of the Nephites because of their armor, notwithstanding their number being so much greater than the Nephites. Behold, it now came to pass that they durst not come against the Nephites in the borders of Jershon. Therefore they departed out of the land of Antionum into the wilderness, and took their journey round about in the wilderness, away by the head of the river Sidon, that they might come into the land of Manti and take possession of the land. For they did not suppose that the armies of Moroni would know whither they had gone. 
but it came to pass as soon as they had departed into the wilderness moroni sent spies into the wilderness to watch their camp and moroni also knowing of the prophecies of alma sent certain men unto him desiring him that he should inquire of the lord whither the armies of the nephites should go to defend themselves against the lamanites and it came to pass that the word of the lord came unto alma and alma informed the messengers of moroni that the armies of the lamanites were marching round about in the wilderness that they might come over into the land of manti that they might commence an attack on the weaker part of the people. And those messengers went and delivered the message unto Moroni. Now Moroni, leaving a part of his army in the land of Jershon, lest by any means a part of the Lamanite should come into that land and take possession of the city, took the remaining part of his army and marched over into the land of Manti. And he caused that all the people in that quarter of the land should gather themselves together to battle against the Lamanites, to defend their lands and their country, their rights and their liberties, Therefore they were prepared against the time of the coming of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his army should be secreted in the valley which was near the bank of the river Sidon, which was on the west of the river Sidon in the wilderness. And Moroni placed spies round about, that he might know when the camp of the Lamanites should come. And now, as Moroni knew the intention of the Lamanites, that it was their intention to destroy their brethren, or to subject them and bring them into bondage, that they might establish a kingdom unto themselves over all the land, and he also knowing that it was the only desire of the nephites to preserve their lands and their liberty and their church therefore he thought it no sin that he should defend them by stratagem therefore he found by his spies which course the lamanites were to take therefore he divided his army and brought a part over into the valley and concealed them on the east and on the south of the hill ripla and the remainder he concealed in the west valley on the west of the river sidon and so down into the borders of the land manti and thus having placed his army according to his desire he was prepared to meet them and it came to pass that the lamanites came up on the north of the hill where a part of the army of moroni was concealed and as the lamanites had passed the hill ripla and came into the valley and began to cross the river sidon the army which was concealed on the south of the hill which was led by a man whose name was Lehi, and he led his army forth and encircled the Lamanites about on the east in their rear. And it came to pass that the Lamanites, when they saw the Nephites coming upon them in their rear, turned them about and began to contend with the army of Lehi. And the work of death commenced on both sides, but it was more dreadful on the part of the Lamanites, for their nakedness was exposed to the heavy blows of the Nephites with their swords and their scimitars, which brought death almost at every stroke while on the other hand there was now and then a man fell among the nephites by their swords and the loss of blood they being shielded from the more vital parts of the body or the more vital parts of the body being shielded from the strokes of the lamanites by their breastplates and their arm shields and their head plates and thus the nephites did carry on the work of death among the lamanites and it came to pass that the lamanites became frightened because of the great destruction among them even until they began to flee towards the river sidon and they were pursued by Lehi and his men, and they were driven by Lehi into the waters of Sidon, and they crossed the waters of Sidon. And Lehi retained his armies upon the bank of the river Sidon, that they should not cross. And it came to pass that Moroni and his army met the Lamanites in the valley, on the other side of the river Sidon, and began to fall upon them, and to slay them. And the Lamanites did flee again before them, towards the land of Manti, and they were met again by the armies of Moroni. Now in this case the Lamanites did fight exceedingly, yea, never had the Lamanites been known to fight with such exceedingly great strength and courage, no, not even from the beginning. And they were inspired by the Zoramites and the Amalekites, who were their chief captains and leaders, and by Zarahemna, who was their chief captain, or their chief leader and commander. Yea, they did fight like dragons, and many of the Nephites were slain by their hands. Yea, for they did smite in two many of their headplates, and they did pierce many of their breastplates, and they did smite off many of their arms, and thus the Lamanites did smite in their fierce anger. Nevertheless, the Nephites were inspired by a better cause, for they were not fighting for monarchy nor power, but they were fighting for their homes and their liberties, their wives and their children, and their all, yea, for their rights of worship and their church and they were doing that which they felt was the duty which they owed to their god for the lord had said unto them and also unto their fathers that inasmuch as ye are not guilty of the first offence neither the second ye shall not suffer yourselves to be slain by the hands of your enemies and again the lord has said that ye shall defend your families even unto bloodshed 
therefore for this cause were the nephites contending with the lamanites to defend themselves and their families and their lands their country and their rights and their religion and it came to pass that when the men of moroni saw the fierceness and the anger of the lamanites they were about to shrink and flee from them and moroni perceiving their intent sent forth and inspired their hearts with these thoughts yea the thoughts of their lands their liberty yea their freedom from bondage and it came to pass that they turned upon the lamanites and they cried with one voice unto the lord their god for their liberty and their freedom from bondage and they began to stand against the lamanites with power and in that selfsame hour that they cried unto the lord for their freedom the lamanites began to flee before them and they fled even to the waters of sidon now the lamanites were more numerous yea by more than double the number of the nephites nevertheless they were driven insomuch that they were gathered together in one body in the valley upon the bank of the river sidon therefore the armies of moroni encircled them about yea even on both sides of the river for behold on the east were the men of lehi therefore when zarahemna saw the men of lehi on the east of the river sidon and the armies of moroni on the west of the river sidon that they were encircled about by the nephites they were struck with terror now moroni when he saw their terror commanded his men that they should stop shedding their blood chapter forty four and it came to pass that they did stop and withdraw a pace from them and moroni said unto zarahemna behold zarahemna that we do not desire to be men of blood ye know that ye are in our hands yet we do not desire to slay you behold we have not come out to battle against you that we might shed your blood for power neither do we desire to bring any one to the yoke of bondage but this is the very cause for which ye have come against us yea and ye are angry with us because of our religion but now ye behold that the lord is with us and ye behold that he has delivered you into our hands and now i would that ye should understand that this is done unto us because of our religion and our faith in christ and now ye see that you cannot destroy this our faith now ye see that this is the true faith of god yea ye see that god will support and keep and preserve us so long as we are faithful unto him and unto our faith and our religion and never will the lord suffer that we shall be destroyed except we should fall into transgression and deny our faith and now zarahemna i command you in the name of that all-powerful god who has strengthened our arms that we have gained power over you by our faith by our religion and by our rites of worship and by our church and by the sacred support which we owe to our wives and our children by that liberty which binds us to our lands and our country yea and also by the maintenance of the sacred word of god to which we owe all our happiness and by all that is most dear unto us yea and this is not all i command you by all the desires which ye have for life that ye deliver up your weapons of war unto us and we will seek not your blood but we will spare your lives if ye will go your way and come not again into war against us now if ye do not do this behold ye are in our hands and i will command my men that they shall fall upon you and inflict the wounds of death in your bodies that ye may become extinct and then we will see who shall have power over this people yea we will see who shall be brought into bondage and now it came to pass that when zarahemna had heard these sayings he came forth and delivered up his sword and his scimitar and his bow into the hands of moroni and said unto him behold here are our weapons of war we will deliver them up unto you but we will not suffer ourselves to take an oath unto you which we know that we shall break and also our children but take our weapons of war and suffer that we may depart into the wilderness otherwise we will retain our swords and we will perish or conquer behold we are not of your faith and we do not believe that it is god that has delivered us into your hands but we believe that it is your cunning that has preserved you from our swords behold it is your breastplates and your shields that have preserved you and now when zarahemna had made an end of speaking these words moroni returned the sword and the weapons of war which he had received unto zarahemna saying behold we will end the conflict now i cannot recall the words which i have spoken therefore as the lord liveth ye shall not depart except ye depart with an oath that ye will not return again against us to war now as ye are in our hands we will spill your blood upon the ground or ye shall submit to the conditions which i have proposed 
and now when moroni had said these words zarahemna retained his sword and he was angry with moroni and he rushed forward that he might slay moroni but as he raised his sword behold one of moroni's soldiers smote it even to the earth and it broke by the hilt and he also smote zarahemna that he took off his scalp and it fell to the earth and zarahemna withdrew from before them into the midst of his soldiers and it came to pass that the soldier who stood by who smote off the scalp of zarahemna took up the scalp from off the ground by the hair and laid it upon the point of his sword and stretched it forth unto them saying unto them with a loud voice even as this scalp has fallen to the earth which is the scalp of your chief so shall ye fall to the earth except ye will deliver up your weapons of war and depart with a covenant of peace now there were many when they heard these words and saw the scalp which was on the sword that were struck with fear and many came forth and threw down their weapons of war at the feet of moroni and entered into a covenant of peace and as many as entered into a covenant they suffered to depart into the wilderness now it came to pass that zarahemna was exceedingly wroth and he did stir up the remainder of his soldiers to anger to contend more powerfully against the nephites and now moroni was angry because of the stubbornness of the lamanites therefore he commanded his people that they should fall upon them and slay them and it came to pass that they began to slay them yea and the lamanites did contend with their swords and their might but behold their naked skins and their bare heads were exposed to the sharp swords of the nephites yea behold they were pierced and smitten yea and did fall exceedingly fast before the swords of the nephites and they began to be swept down even as the soldier of moroni had prophesied now zarahemna when he saw that they were all about to be destroyed cried mightily unto moroni promising that he would covenant and also his people with him if they would spare the remainder of their lives that they never would come to war again against them and it came to pass that moroni caused that the work of death should cease again among the people and he took the weapons of war from the lamanites and after they had entered into a covenant with him of peace they were suffered to depart into the wilderness now the number of their dead was not numbered because of the greatness of the number yea and the number of the dead was exceedingly great both on the nephites and on the lamanites and it came to pass that they did cast their dead into the waters of sidon and they have gone forth and are buried in the depths of the sea and the armies of the nephites or of moroni returned and came to their houses and their lands and thus ended the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and thus ended the record of alma which was written upon the plates of nephi chapter forty five behold now it came to pass that the people of nephi were exceedingly rejoiced because the lord had again delivered them out of the hands of their enemies therefore they gave thanks unto the lord their god yea and they did fast much and pray much and they did worship god with exceedingly great joy and it came to pass in the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi that alma came unto his son helaman and said unto him believest thou the words which i spake unto thee concerning those records which have been kept and helaman said unto him yea i believe and alma said again believest thou in jesus christ who shall come and he said yea i believe all the words which thou hast spoken and alma said unto him again will ye keep my commandments and he said yea i will keep thy commandments with all my heart then alma said unto him blessed art thou and the lord shall prosper thee in this land but behold i have somewhat to prophesy unto thee but what i prophesy unto thee ye shall not make known yea what i prophesy unto thee shall not be made known even until the prophecy is fulfilled therefore write the words which i shall say and these are the words behold i perceive that this very people the nephites according to the spirit of revelation which is in me in four hundred years from the time that jesus christ shall manifest himself unto them shall dwindle in unbelief yea and then shall they see the wars and pestilences yea famines and bloodshed even until the people of nephi shall become extinct yea and this because they shall dwindle in unbelief and fall into the works of darkness and lasciviousness and all manner of iniquities yea i say unto you that because they shall sin against so great light and knowledge yea i say unto you that from that day even the fourth generation shall not pass away before this great iniquity shall come and when that great day cometh behold the time very soon cometh that those who are now or the seed of those who are now numbered among the people of nephi shall no more be numbered among the people of nephi but whosoever remaineth 
and is not destroyed in that great and dreadful day shall be numbered among the lamanites and shall become like unto them all save it be a few who shall be called the disciples of the lord and them shall the lamanites pursue even until they shall become extinct and now because of iniquity this prophecy shall be fulfilled and now it came to pass that after alma had said these things to helaman he blessed him and also his other sons and he also blessed the earth for the righteous's sake and he said thus saith the lord god cursed shall be the land yea this land unto every nation kindred tongue and people unto destruction which do wickedly when they are fully ripe and as i have said so shall it be for this is the cursing and the blessing of god upon the land for the lord cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance and now when alma had said these words he blessed the church yea all those who should stand fast in the faith from that time henceforth and when alma had done this he departed out of the land of zarahemla as if to go into the land of melek and it came to pass that he was never heard of more as to his death or burial we know not of behold this we know that he was a righteous man and the saying went abroad in the church that he was taken up by the spirit or buried by the hand of the lord even as moses but behold the scripture saith the lord took moses unto himself and we suppose that he has also received alma in the spirit unto himself therefore for this cause we know nothing concerning his death and burial and now it came to pass in the commencement of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi that helaman went forth among the people to declare the word unto them for behold because of their wars with the lamanites and the many little dissensions and disturbances which had been among the people it became expedient that the word of god should be declared among them yea and that a regulation should be made throughout the church therefore helaman and his brethren went forth to establish the church again in all the land yea in every city throughout all the land which was possessed by the people of nephi and it came to pass that they did appoint priests and teachers throughout all the land over all the churches and now it came to pass that after helaman and his brethren had appointed priests and teachers over the churches that there arose a dissension among them and they would not give heed to the words of helaman and his brethren but they grew proud being lifted up in their hearts because of their exceedingly great riches therefore they grew rich in their own eyes and would not give heed to their words to walk uprightly before god end of alma chapter forty two through forty five Recording by Sarah Luann Alma chapters 46 through 48 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma chapters 46 through 48. Alma chapter 46 and it came to pass that as many as would not hearken to the words of helaman and his brethren were gathered together against their brethren and now behold they were exceedingly wroth insomuch that they were determined to slay them now the leader of those who were wroth against their brethren was a large and a strong man and his name was amalickiah and amalickiah was desirous to be a king and those people who were wroth were also desirous that he should be their king and they were the greater part of them the lower judges of the land and they were seeking for power and they had been led by the flatteries of amalickiah that if they would support him and establish him to be their king that he would make them rulers over the people thus they were led away by amalickiah to dissensions notwithstanding the preaching of helaman and his brethren yea notwithstanding their exceedingly great care over the church for they were high priests over the church and there were many in the church who believed in the flattering words of amalickiah therefore they dissented even from the church and thus were the affairs of the people of nephi exceedingly precarious and dangerous notwithstanding their great victory which they had had over the lamanites and their great rejoicings which they had had because of their deliverance by the hand of the lord thus we see how quick the children of men do forget the lord their god yea how quick to do iniquity and to be led away by the evil one yea and we also see the great wickedness one very wicked man can cause to take place among the children of men 
Yea, we see that Amalickiah, because he was a man of cunning device, and a man of many flattering words, that he led away the hearts of many people to do wickedly, yea, and to seek to destroy the church of God, and to destroy the foundation of liberty which God had granted unto them, or which blessing God had sent upon the face of the land for the righteous' sake. And now it came to pass that when Moroni, who was the chief commander of the armies of the Nephites, had heard of these dissensions, he was angry with the Malachiah. And it came to pass that he rent his coat, and he took a piece thereof and wrote upon it, In memory of our God, our religion, and freedom, and our peace, our wives, and our children, and he fastened it upon the end of a pole. And he fastened on his headplate, and his breastplate, and his shields, and girded on his armor about his loins, and he took the pole which had on the end thereof his rent coat, and he called it the title of liberty, and he bowed himself to the earth, and he prayed mightily unto his God for the blessings of liberty to rest upon his brethren, so long as there should a band of Christians remain to possess the land. For thus were all the true believers of Christ who belonged to the church of God called by those who did not belong to the church. And those who did belong to the church were faithful. Yea, all those who were true believers in Christ took upon them gladly the name of Christ, or Christians, as they were called, because of their belief in Christ who should come. And therefore at this time Moroni prayed that the cause of the Christians and the freedom of the land might be favored. And it came to pass that when he had poured out his soul to God, he named all the land which was south of the land desolation. Yea, and in fine all the land, both on the north and on the south, a chosen land, and a land of liberty. And he said, Surely God shall not suffer that we who are despised, because we take upon us the name of Christ, shall be trodden down and destroyed, until we bring it upon us by our own transgressions. And when Moroni had said these words, he went forth among the people, waving the rent part of his garment in the air, that all might see the writing which he had written upon the rent part, and crying with a loud voice, saying, Behold, whosoever will maintain this title upon the land, let them come forth in the strength of the Lord, and enter into a covenant that they will maintain their rights and their religion, that the Lord God may bless them. And it came to pass that when Moroni had proclaimed these words, Behold, the people came running together with their armor girded about their loins, rending their garments in token, or as a covenant that they would not forsake the Lord their God. Or, in other words, if they should transgress the commandments of God, or fall into transgression, and be ashamed to take upon them the name of Christ, the Lord should rend them even as they had rent their garments. Now this was the covenant which they made. And they cast their garments at the feet of Moroni, saying, We covenant with our God that we shall be destroyed even as our brethren in the land northward, if we shall fall into transgression. Yea, he may cast us at the feet of our enemies, even as we have cast our garments at the feet to be trodden under foot, if we shall fall into transgression. Moroni said unto them, Behold, we are a remnant of the seed of Jacob. Yea, we are a remnant of the seed of Joseph, whose coat was rent by his brethren into many pieces. Yea, and now behold, let us remember to keep the commandments of God, or our garments shall be rent by our brethren, and we be cast into prison, or be sold, or be slain. Yea, let us preserve our liberty as a remnant of Joseph. Yea, let us remember the words of Jacob before his death. For behold, he saw that a part of the remnant of the coat of Joseph was preserved and had not decayed. And he said, Even as this remnant of garment of my son hath been preserved, so shall a remnant of the seed of my son be preserved by the hand of God, and be taken unto himself, while the remainder of the seed of Joseph shall perish, even as the remnant of his garment. Now behold, this giveth my soul sorrow, nevertheless my soul hath joy in my son, because of that part of his seed which shall be taken unto God. Now behold, this was the language of Jacob. And now who knoweth but that the remnant of the seed of Joseph, which shall perish as his garment, are those who have dissented from us? Yea, and even it shall be ourselves, if we do not stand fast in the faith of Christ. And now it came to pass that when Moroni had said these words, he went forth, 
and also sent forth in all the parts of the land where there were dissensions and gathered together all the people who were desirous to maintain their liberty to stand against amalickiah and those who had dissented who were called amalickiahites and it came to pass that when amalickiah saw that the people of moroni were more numerous than the amalickiahites and he also saw that his people were doubtful concerning the justice of the cause in which they had undertaken therefore fearing that he should not gain the point he took those of his people who would and departed into the land of nephi now moroni thought it was not expedient that the lamanites should have any more strength therefore he thought to cut off the people of amalickiah or to take them and bring them back and put amalickiah to death yea for he knew that he would stir up the lamanites to anger against them and cause them to come to battle against them and this he knew that amalickiah would do that he might obtain his purposes therefore moroni thought it was expedient that he should take his armies who had gathered themselves together and armed themselves and entered into a covenant to keep the peace and it came to pass that he took his army and marched out with his tents into the wilderness to cut off the course of amalickiah in the wilderness and it came to pass that he did according to his desires and marched forth into the wilderness and headed the armies of amalickiah and it came to pass that amalickiah fled with a small number of his men and the remainder were delivered up into the hands of moroni and were taken back into the land of zarahemla now moroni being a man who was appointed by the chief judges and the voice of the people therefore he had power according to his will with the armies of the nephites to establish and to exercise authority over them and it came to pass that whomsoever of the amalickiahites that would not enter into a covenant to support the cause of freedom that they might maintain a free government he caused to be put to death and there were but few who denied the covenant of freedom and it came to pass also that he caused the title of liberty to be hoisted upon every tower which was in all the land which was possessed by the nephites and thus moroni planted the standard of liberty among the nephites and they began to have peace again in the land and thus they did maintain peace in the land until nearly the end of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges and helaman and the high priests did also maintain order in the church yea even for the space of four years did they have much peace and rejoicing in the church and it came to pass that there were many who died firmly believing that their souls were redeemed by the lord jesus christ thus they went out of the world rejoicing and there were some who died with fevers which at some seasons of the year were very frequent in the land but not so much so with fevers because of the excellent qualities of the many plants and roots which god had prepared to remove the cause of diseases to which men were subject by the nature of the climate but there were many who died with old age and those who died in the faith of christ are happy in him as we must needs suppose alma chapter forty seven now we will return in our record to amalickiah and those who had fled with him into the wilderness for behold he had taken those who went with him and went up in the land of nephi among the lamanites and did stir up the lamanites to anger against the people of nephi insomuch that the king of the lamanites sent a proclamation throughout all his land among all his people that they should gather themselves together again to go to battle against the nephites and it came to pass that when the proclamation had gone forth among them they were exceedingly afraid yea they feared to displease the king and they also feared to go to battle against the nephites lest they should lose their lives and it came to pass that they would not or the more part of them would not obey the commandments of the king and now it came to pass that the king was wroth because of their disobedience therefore he gave amalickiah the command of that part of his army which was obedient unto his commands and commanded him that he should go forth and compel them to arms now behold this was the desire of amalickiah for he being a very subtle man to do evil therefore he laid the plans in his heart to dethrone the king of the lamanites and now he had got the command of those parts of the lamanites who were in favor of the king and he sought to gain the favor of those who were not obedient therefore he went forward to the place which was called oneida for thither had all the lamanites fled for they discovered the army coming and supposing that they were coming to destroy them therefore they fled to oneida to the place of arms 
and they had appointed a man to be a king and a leader over them, being fixed in their minds with a determined resolution that they would not be subjected to go against the Nephites. And it came to pass that they had gathered themselves together upon the top of the mount which was called Antipas, in preparation to battle. Now it was not Amalickiah's intention to give them battle according to the commandments of the king, but behold it was his intention to gain favor with the armies of the Lamanites, that he might place himself at their head, and dethrone the king, and take possession of the kingdom. And behold it came to pass that he caused his army to pitch their tents in the valley which was near the mount Antipas. And it came to pass that when it was night he sent a secret embassy into the mount Antipas, desiring that the leader of those who were upon the mount, whose name was Lehontai, that he should come down to the foot of the mount, for he desired to speak with him. And it came to pass that when Lehontai received the message, he durst not go down to the foot of the mount. And it came to pass that Amalickiah sent again the second time, desiring him to come down. And it came to pass that Lehontai would not, and he sent again the third time. And it came to pass that when Amalickiah found that he could not get Lehontai to come down off from the mount, he went up into the mount, nearly to Lehontai's camp, and he sent again the fourth time his message unto Lehontai, desiring that he would come down, and that he would bring his guards with him. And it came to pass that when Lehontai had come down with his guards to Amalickiah, that Amalickiah desired him to come down with his army in the night time, and surround those men in their camps over whom the king had given him command, and that he would deliver them up into Lehontai's hands, if he would make him, Amalickiah, a second leader over the whole army. And it came to pass that Lehontai came down with his men and surrounded the men of Amalickiah, so that before they awoke at the dawn of day they were surrounded by the armies of Lehontai. And it came to pass that when they saw that they were surrounded, they pled with Amalickiah, that he would suffer them to fall in with their brethren, that they might not be destroyed. Now this was the very thing which Amalickiah desired. And it came to pass that he delivered his men contrary to the commands of the king. Now this was the thing that Amalickiah desired, that he might accomplish his designs in dethroning the king. Now it was the custom among the Lamanites, if their chief leader was killed, to appoint the second leader to be their chief leader. And it came to pass that Amalickiah caused that one of his servants should administer poison by degrees to Lehontai, that he died. Now when Lehontai was dead, the Lamanites appointed Amalickiah to be their leader and their chief commander. And it came to pass that Amalickiah marched with his armies, for he had gained his desires, to the land of Nephi, to the city of Nephi, which was the chief city. And the king came out to meet him with his guards, for he supposed that Amalickiah had fulfilled his commands, and that Amalickiah had gathered together so great an army to go against the Nephites to battle. But behold, as the king came out to meet him, Amalickiah caused that his servants should go forth to meet the king, and they went and bowed themselves before the king, as if to reverence him because of his greatness. And it came to pass that the king put forth his hand to raise them, as was the custom with the Lamanites, as a token of peace, which custom they had taken from the Nephites. And it came to pass that when he had raised the first from the ground, behold, he stabbed the king to the heart, and he fell to the earth. Now the servants of the king fled, and the servants of Amalickiah raised a cry, saying, Behold, the servants of the king have stabbed him to the heart, and he has fallen, and they have fled. Behold, come and see. And it came to pass that Amalickiah commanded that his army should march forth and see what had happened to the king. And when they had come to the spot and found the king lying in his gore, Amalickiah pretended to be wroth, and said, Whosoever loved the king, let him go forth and pursue his servants, that they may be slain. And it came to pass that all they who loved the king, when they heard these words, came forth and pursued after the servants of the king. Now when the servants of the king saw an army pursuing after them, they were frightened again, and fled into the wilderness, and came over into the land of Zarahemla, and joined the people of Ammon. And the army which pursued after them returned, having pursued after them in vain. And thus Amalickiah by his fraud gained the hearts of the people. And it came to pass on the morrow he entered the city Nephi with his armies and took possession of the city. And now it came to pass that the queen, when she had heard that the king was slain, 
for Amalickiah had sent an embassy to the queen, informing her that the king had been slain by his servants, that he had pursued them with his army, but it was in vain, and they had made their escape. Therefore, when the queen had received this message, she sent unto Amalickiah, desiring him that he would spare the people of the city, and she also desired him that he should come in unto her, and she also desired him that he should bring witnesses with him to testify concerning the death of the king. And it came to pass that Amalickiah took the same servant who slew the king and all them who were with him, and went in unto the queen, unto the place where she sat, and they all testified unto her that the king was slain by his own servants. And they said also, They have fled. Does not this testify against them? And thus they satisfied the queen concerning the death of the king. And it came to pass that Amalickiah sought the favor of the queen, and took her unto him to wife, and thus by his fraud, and by the assistance of his cunning servants, he obtained the kingdom. Yea, he was acknowledged king throughout all the land among all the people of the Lamanites, who were composed of the Lamanites, and the Lemuelites, and the Ishmaelites, and all the dissenters of the Nephites from the reign of Nephi down to the present time. Now these dissenters, having the same instruction, then the same information of the Nephites, yea, having been instructed in the same knowledge of the Lord, nevertheless it is strange to relate, not long after their dissensions, they became more hardened and impenitent, and more wild, wicked and ferocious than the Lamanites, drinking in with the traditions of the Lamanites, giving way to indolence and all manner of lasciviousness, yea, entirely forgetting the Lord their God. Alma, chapter 48. And now it came to pass that as soon as Amalickiah had obtained the kingdom, he began to inspire the hearts of the Lamanites against the people of Nephi. Yea, he did appoint men to speak unto the Lamanites from their towers against the Nephites. And thus he did inspire their hearts against the Nephites, insomuch that in the latter end of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges, he having accomplished his designs thus far, Yea, having been made king over the Lamanites, he sought also to reign over all the land. Yea, and all the people who were in the land, the Nephites as well as the Lamanites. Therefore he had accomplished his design, for he had hardened the hearts of the Lamanites, and blinded their minds, and stirred them up to anger, insomuch that he had gathered together a numerous host to go to battle against the Nephites. For he was determined, because of the greatness of the number of his people, to overpower the Nephites and to bring them into bondage. And thus he did appoint chief captains of the Zoramites, they being the most acquainted with the strength of the Nephites and their places of resort, and the weakest parts of their cities. Therefore he appointed them to be chief captains over his armies. And it came to pass that they took their camp, and moved forth toward the land of Zarahemla in the wilderness. Now it came to pass that while Amalickiah had thus been obtaining power, by fraud and deceit, Moroni, on the other hand, had been preparing the minds of the people to be faithful unto the Lord their God. Yea, he had been strengthening the armies of the Nephites, and erecting small forts or places of resort, throwing up banks of earth round about to enclose his armies, and also building walls of stone to encircle them about, round about their cities and the borders of their lands, yea, all round about the land. And in their weakest fortifications he did place the greater number of men, and thus he did fortify and strengthen the land which was possessed by the Nephites. And thus he was preparing to support their liberty, their lands, their wives, and their children, and their peace, that they might live unto the Lord their God, and that they might maintain that which was called by their enemies the cause of Christians. And Moroni was a strong and a mighty man, he was a man of a perfect understanding, yea, a man that did not delight in bloodshed, a man whose soul did joy in the liberty and the freedom of his country and his brethren from bondage and slavery, yea, a man whose heart did swell with thanksgiving to his God for the many privileges and blessings which he bestowed upon his people, a man who did labor exceedingly for the welfare and safety of his people, yea, and he was a man who was firm in the faith of Christ and he had sworn with an oath to defend his people, his rights, and his country, and his religion even to the loss of his blood. Now the Nephites were taught to defend themselves against their enemies, even to the shedding of blood if it were necessary. Yea, and they were also taught never to give an offense. Yea, and never to raise the sword except it were against an enemy, 
except it were to preserve their lives. And this was their faith, that by so doing God would prosper them in the land. Or in other words, if they were faithful in keeping the commandments of God, that he would prosper them in the land. Yea, warn them to flee, or to prepare for war, according to their danger. And also that God would make it known unto them whither they should go to defend themselves against their enemies. And by so doing the Lord would deliver them. And this was the faith of Moroni, and his heart did glory in it not in the shedding of blood, but in doing good, in preserving his people, yea, in keeping the commandments of God, yea, and resisting iniquity. Yea, verily, verily, I say unto you, if all men had been and were and ever would be like unto Moroni, behold, the very powers of hell would have been shaken forever. Yea, the devil would never have power over the hearts of the children of men. Behold, he was a man like unto Ammon, the son of Mosiah, yea, and even the other sons of Mosiah, yea, and also Alma and his sons, for they were all men of God. Now behold, Helaman and his brethren were no less serviceable unto the people than was Moroni, for they did preach the word of God, and they did baptize unto repentance all men whosoever would hearken unto their words. And thus they went forth, and the people did humble themselves because of their words, insomuch that they were highly favored of the Lord. And thus they were free from wars and contentions among themselves, yea, even for the space of four years. But as I have said, in the latter end of the nineteenth year, yea, notwithstanding their peace amongst themselves, they were compelled reluctantly to contend with their brethren the Lamanites. Yea, and in fine, their wars never did cease for the space of many years with the Lamanites, notwithstanding their much reluctance. Now they were sorry to take up arms against the Lamanites because they did not delight in the shedding of blood. Yea, and this was not all. They were sorry to be the means of sending so many of their brethren out of this world into an eternal world, unprepared to meet their God. Nevertheless, they could not suffer to lay down their lives, that their wives and their children should be massacred by the barbarous cruelty of those who were once their brethren. Yea, and had dissented from their church, and had left them and had gone to destroy them by joining the Lamanites. Yea, they could not bear that their brethren should rejoice over the blood of the Nephites, so long as there were any who should keep the commandments of God. For the promise of the Lord was, if they should keep his commandments, they would prosper in the land. End of Alma, chapters 46 through 48. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 49 through 51 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 49 through 51. Alma, chapter 49. And now it came to pass, in the eleventh month of the nineteenth year, on the tenth day of the month, the armies of the Lamanites were seen approaching towards the land of Ammonihah. And behold, the city had been rebuilt, and Moroni had stationed an army by the borders of the city, and they had cast up dirt round about to shield them from the arrows and the stones of the Lamanites. For behold, they fought with stones and arrows. Behold, I said, that the city of Ammonihah had been rebuilt. I say unto you, yea, that it was in part rebuilt, and because the Lamanites had destroyed it once because of the iniquity of the people, they supposed that it would again become an easy prey for them. But behold, how great was their disappointment! For behold, the Nephites had dug up a ridge of earth round about them, which was so high that the Lamanites could not cast their stones and their arrows at them, that they might take effect. Neither could they come upon them, save it was, by their place of entrance. Now at this time the chief captains of the Lamanites were astonished exceedingly because of the wisdom of the Nephites in preparing their places of security. Now the leaders of the Lamanites had supposed, because of the greatness of their numbers, yea, they supposed that they should be privileged to come upon them as they had hitherto done, Yea, and they had also prepared themselves with shields, and with breastplates, and they had also prepared themselves with garments of skins, yea, very thick garments, to cover their nakedness. 
and being thus prepared they supposed that they should easily overpower and subject their brethren to the yoke of bondage or slay and massacre them according to their pleasure but behold to their uttermost astonishment they were prepared for them in a manner which never had been known among the children of lehi now they were prepared for the lamanites to battle after the manner of the instructions of moroni and it came to pass that the lamanites or the amalekiahites were exceedingly astonished at their manner of preparation for war now if king amalekiah had come down out of the land of nephi at the head of his army perhaps he would have caused the lamanites to have attacked the nephites at the city of ammonihah for behold he did care not for the blood of his people but behold amalickiah did not come down himself to battle and behold his chief captains durst not attack the nephites at the city of ammonihah for moroni had altered the management of affairs among the nephites insomuch that the lamanites were disappointed in their places of retreat and they could not come upon them therefore they retreated into the wilderness and took their camp and marched towards the land of noah supposing that to be the next best place for them to come against the nephites for they knew not that moroni had fortified or had built forts of security for every city in all the land round about therefore they marched forward to the land of noah with a firm determination yea their chief captains came forward and took an oath that they would destroy the people of that city but behold to their astonishment the city of noah which had hitherto been a weak place had now by the means of moroni become strong yea even to exceed the strength of the city ammonihah and now behold this was wisdom in moroni for he had supposed that they would be frightened at the city ammonihah and as the city of noah had hitherto been the weakest part of the land therefore they would march thither to battle and thus it was according to his desires and behold moroni had appointed lehi to be chief captain over the men of that city and it was that same lehi who fought with the lamanites in the valley on the east of the river sidon and now behold it came to pass that when the lamanites had found that lehi commanded the city they were again disappointed for they feared lehi exceedingly nevertheless their chief captains had sworn with an oath to attack the city therefore they brought up their armies now behold the lamanites could not get into their forts of security by any other way save by the entrance because of the highness of the bank which had been thrown up and the depth of the ditch which had been dug round about save it were by the entrance and thus were the nephites prepared to destroy all such as should attempt to climb up to enter the fort by any other way by casting over stones and arrows at them thus they were prepared yea a body of their strongest men with their swords and their slings to smite down all who should attempt to come into their place of security by the place of entrance and thus were they prepared to defend themselves against the lamanites and it came to pass that the captains of the lamanites brought up their armies before the place of entrance and began to contend with the nephites to get into their place of security but behold they were driven back from time to time insomuch that they were slain with an immense slaughter and when they found that they could not obtain power over the nephites by the pass they began to dig down their banks of earth that they might obtain a pass to their armies that they might have an equal chance to fight but behold in these attempts they were swept off by the stones and arrows which were thrown at them and instead of filling up their ditches by pulling down the banks of earth they were filled up in a measure with their dead and wounded bodies thus the nephites had all power over their enemies and thus the lamanites did attempt to destroy the nephites until their chief captains were all slain yea and more than a thousand of the lamanites were slain while on the other hand there was not a single soul of the nephites which was slain there were about fifty who were wounded who had been exposed to the arrows of the lamanites through the pass but they were shielded by their shields and their breastplates and their headplates insomuch that their wounds were upon their legs many of which were very severe and it came to pass that when the lamanites saw that their chief captains were all slain they fled into the wilderness and it came to pass that they returned to the land of nephi to inform their king amalickiah who was a nephite by birth concerning their great loss and it came to pass that he was exceedingly angry with his people because he had not obtained his desire over the nephites he had not subjected them to the yoke of bondage 
yea he was exceedingly wroth and he did curse god and also moroni swearing with an oath that he would drink his blood and this because moroni had kept the commandments of god in preparing for the safety of his people and it came to pass that on the other hand the people of nephi did thank the lord their god because of his matchless power in delivering them from the hands of their enemies and thus ended the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi yea and there was continual peace among them and exceedingly great prosperity in the church because of their heed and diligence which they gave unto the word of god which was declared unto them by helaman and shiblon and corianton and ammon and his brethren yea and by all those who had been ordained by the holy order of god being baptized unto repentance and sent forth to preach among the people alma chapter fifty and now it came to pass that moroni did not stop making preparations for war or to defend his people against the lamanites for he caused that his armies should commence in the commencement of the twentieth year of the reign of the judges that they should commence in digging up heaps of earth round about all the cities throughout all the land which was possessed by the nephites and upon the top of these ridges of earth he caused that there should be timbers yea works of timbers built up to the height of a man round about the cities and he caused that upon those works of timbers there should be a frame of pickets built upon the timbers round about and they were strong and high and he caused towers to be erected that overlooked those works of pickets and he caused places of security to be built upon those towers that the stones and the arrows of the lamanites could not hurt them and they were prepared that they could cast stones from the top thereof according to their pleasure and their strength and slay him who should attempt to approach near the walls of the city thus moroni did prepare strongholds against the coming of their enemies round about every city in all the land and it came to pass that moroni caused that his army should go forth into the east wilderness yea and they went forth and drove all the lamanites who were in the east wilderness into their own lands which were south of the lands of zarahemla and the land of nephi did run in a straight course from the east sea to the west and it came to pass that when moroni had driven all the lamanites out of the east wilderness which was north of the lands of their own possessions he caused that the inhabitants who were in the land of zarahemla and in the land round about should go forth into the east wilderness even to the borders by the seashore and possess the land and he also placed armies on the south in the borders of their possessions and caused them to erect fortifications that they might secure their armies and their people from the hands of their enemies and thus he cut off all the strongholds of the lamanites in the east wilderness yea and also on the west fortifying the line between the nephites and the lamanites between the land of zarahemla and the land of nephi from the west sea running by the head of the river sidon the nephites possessing all the land northward yea even all the land which was northward of the land bountiful according to their pleasure thus moroni with his armies which did increase daily because of the assurance of protection which his works did bring forth unto them did seek to cut off the strength and the power of the lamanites from off the lands of their possessions that they should have no power upon the lands of their possession and it came to pass that the nephites began the foundation of a city and they called the name of the city moroni and it was by the east sea and it was on the south by the line of the possessions of the lamanites and they also began a foundation for a city between the city of moroni and the city of aaron joining the borders of aaron and moroni and they called the name of the city or the land nephihah and they also began in that same year to build many cities on the north one in a particular manner which they called lehi which was in the north by the borders of the seashore and thus ended the twentieth year and in these prosperous circumstances were the people of nephi in the commencement of the twenty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and they did prosper exceedingly and they became exceedingly rich yea and they did multiply and wax strong in the land and thus we see how merciful and just are all the dealings of the lord to the fulfilling of all his words unto the children of men yea we can behold that his words are verified even at this time which he spake unto lehi saying blessed art thou and thy children and they shall be blessed inasmuch as they shall keep my commandments they shall prosper in the land but remember inasmuch as they will not keep my commandments 
they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. And we see that these promises have been verified to the people of Nephi, for it has been their quarrelings and their contentions, yea, their murderings and their plunderings, their idolatry, their whoredoms and their abominations which were among themselves, which brought upon them their wars and their destructions. And those who were faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord were delivered at all times, whilst thousands of their wicked brethren have been consigned to bondage, or to perish by the sword, or to dwindle in unbelief and mingle with the Lamanites. But behold, there never was a happier time among the people of Nephi since the days of Nephi than in the days of Moroni, yea, even at this time, in the twenty and first year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that the twenty and second year of the reign of the judges also ended in peace, yea, and also the twenty and third year. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the twenty and fourth year of the reign of the judges, there would also have been peace among the people of Nephi, had it not been for a contention which took place among them concerning the land of Lehi, and the land of Morianton, which joined upon the borders of Lehi, both of which were on the borders by the seashore. For behold, the people who possessed the land of Morianton did claim a part of the land of Lehi. Therefore there began to be a warm contention between them, insomuch that the people of Morianton took up arms against their brethren, and they were determined by the sword to slay them. But behold, the people who possessed the land of Lehi fled to the camp of Moroni, and appealed unto him for assistance, for behold, they were not in the wrong. And it came to pass that when the people of Morianton, who were led by a man whose name was Morianton, found that the people of Lehi had fled to the camp of Moroni, they were exceedingly fearful, lest the army of Moroni should come upon them and destroy them. Therefore Morianton put it into their hearts, that they should flee to the land which was northward, which was covered with large bodies of water, and take possession of the land which was northward. And behold, they would have carried this plan into effect which would have been a cause to have been lamented. But behold, Morianton, being a man of much passion, therefore he was angry with one of his maid servants, and he fell upon her, and beat her much. And it came to pass that she fled, and came over to the camp of Moroni, and told Moroni all things concerning the matter, and also concerning their intentions to flee into the land northward. Now behold the people who were in the land bountiful, or rather Moroni, feared that they would hearken to the words of Morianton, and unite with his people, and thus he would obtain possession of those parts of the land which would lay a foundation for serious consequences among the people of Nephi, yea, which consequences would lead to the overthrow of their liberty. Therefore Moroni sent an army with their camp to head the people of Morianton, to stop their flight into the land northward, and it came to pass that they did not head them until they had come to the borders of the land desolation. And there they did head them, by the narrow pass which led by the sea into the land northward, yea, by the sea on the west and on the east. And it came to pass that the army which was sent by Moroni, which was led by a man whose name was Teancum, did meet the people of Morianton. And so stubborn were the people of Morianton, being inspired by his wickedness and his flattering words, that a battle commenced between them, in the which Teancum did slay Morianton and defeat his army, and took them prisoners, and returned to the camp of Moroni. And thus ended the twenty and fourth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus were the people of Morianton brought back, and upon their covenanting to keep the peace, they were restored to the land of Morianton, and a union took place between them and the people of Lehi and they were also restored to their lands. And it came to pass that in the same year that the people of Nephi had peace restored unto them, that Nephiha, the second chief judge, died, having filled the judgment seat with perfect uprightness before God. Nevertheless, he had refused Alma to take possession of those records and those things which were esteemed by Alma and his fathers to be most sacred. Therefore Alma had conferred them upon his son Helaman. Behold, it came to pass that the son of Nephiha was appointed to fill the judgment seat in the stead of his father. Yea, he was appointed chief judge and governor over the people, with an oath and sacred ordinance to judge righteously and to keep the peace and the freedom of the people, and to grant unto them their sacred privileges to worship the Lord their God, 
yea, to support and maintain the cause of God all his days, and to bring the wicked to justice according to their crime. Now behold, his name was Pehoran, and Pehoran did fill the seat of his father, and did commence his reign in the end of the twenty and fourth year over the people of Nephi. Alma chapter 51 And now it came to pass in the commencement of the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, they having established peace between the people of Lehi and the people of Morianton concerning their laws, and having commenced the twenty and fifth year in peace, nevertheless they did not long maintain an entire peace in the land, for there began to be a contention among the people concerning the chief judge Pahoran. For behold, there were a part of the people who desired that a few particular points of the law should be altered. But behold, Pahoran would not alter nor suffer the law to be altered. Therefore he did not hearken to those who had sent in their voices with their petitions concerning the altering of the law. Therefore those who were desirous that the law should be altered were angry with him, and desired that he should no longer be chief judge over the land. Therefore there arose a warm dispute concerning the matter, but not unto bloodshed. And it came to pass that those who were desirous that Pehoran should be dethroned from the judgment seat were called king men, for they were desirous that the law should be altered in a manner to overthrow the free government and to establish a king over the land. And those who were desirous that Pehoran should remain chief judge over the land took upon them the name of freemen, and thus was the division among them for the freemen had sworn or covenanted to maintain their rights and the privileges of their religion by a free government. And it came to pass that this matter of their contention was settled by the voice of the people. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came in favor of the freemen. And Pehoran retained the judgment seat, which caused much rejoicing among the brethren of Pehoran, and also many of the people of liberty, who also put the king men to silence that they durst not oppose, but were obliged to maintain the cause of freedom. Now those who were in favor of kings were those of high birth, and they sought to be kings, and they were supported by those who sought power and authority over the people. But behold, this was a critical time for such contentions to be among the people of Nephi. For behold, Amalickiah had again stirred up the hearts of the people of the Lamanites against the people of the Nephites and he was gathering together soldiers from all parts of his land, and arming them, and preparing for war with all diligence, for he had sworn to drink the blood of Moroni. But behold, we shall see that his promise which he made was rash. Nevertheless, he did prepare himself and his armies to come to battle against the Nephites. Now his armies were not so great as they had hitherto been, because of the many thousands who had been slain by the hand of the Nephites. But notwithstanding their great loss, Amalickiah had gathered together a wonderfully great army, insomuch that he feared not to come down to the land of Zarahemla. Yea, even Amalickiah did himself come down at the head of the Lamanites. And it was in the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges, and it was at the same time that they had begun to settle the affairs of their contentions concerning the chief judge Pehoran. And it came to pass that when the men who were called king men had heard that the Lamanites were coming down to battle against them, they were glad in their hearts, and they refused to take up arms, for they were so wroth with the chief judge and also with the people of liberty that they would not take up arms to defend their country. And it came to pass that when Moroni saw this, and also saw that the Lamanites were coming into the borders of the land, he was exceedingly wroth because of the stubbornness of those people whom he had labored with so much diligence to preserve. Yea, he was exceedingly wroth, his soul was filled with anger against them. And it came to pass that he sent a petition with the voice of the people unto the governor of the land, desiring that he should read it, and give him, Moroni, power to compel those dissenters to defend their country or to put them to death. For it was his first care to put an end to such contentions and dissensions among the people. For behold, this had been hitherto a cause of all their destruction, and it came to pass that it was granted according to the voice of the people. And it came to pass that Moroni commanded that his army should go against those king men, to pull down their pride and their nobility, and to level them with the earth, or they should take up arms and support the cause of liberty. 
and it came to pass that the armies did march forth against them and they did pull down their pride and their nobility insomuch that as they did lift their weapons of war to fight against the men of moroni they were hewn down and leveled to the earth and it came to pass that there were four thousand of those dissenters who were hewn down by the sword and those of their leaders who were not slain in battle were taken and cast into prison for there was no time for their trials at this period and the remainder of those dissenters rather than be smitten down to the earth by the sword yielded to the standard of liberty and were compelled to hoist the title of liberty upon their towers and in their cities and to take up arms in defense of their country and thus moroni put an end to those king men that there were not any known by the appellation of king men and thus he put an end to the stubbornness and the pride of those people who professed the blood of nobility but they were brought down to humble themselves like unto their brethren and to fight valiantly for their freedom from bondage behold it came to pass that while moroni was thus breaking down the wars and contentions among his own people and subjecting them to peace and civilization and making regulations to prepare for war against the lamanites behold the lamanites had come into the land of moroni which was in the borders by the seashore and it came to pass that the nephites were not sufficiently strong in the city of moroni therefore amalickiah did drive them slaying many and it came to pass that amalickiah took possession of the city yea possession of all their fortifications and those who fled out of the city of moroni came to the city of nephihah and also the people of the city of lehi gathered themselves together and made preparations and were ready to receive the lamanites to battle but it came to pass that amalickiah would not suffer the lamanites to go against the city of nephihah to battle but kept them down by the seashore leaving men in every city to maintain and defend it and thus he went on taking possession of many cities the city of nephihah and the city of lehi and the city of morianton and the city of omner and the city of gid and the city of mulek all of which were on the east borders by the seashore and thus had the lamanites obtained by the cunning of amalickiah so many cities by their numberless hosts all of which were strongly fortified after the manner of the fortifications of moroni all of which afforded strongholds for the lamanites and it came to pass that they marched to the borders of the land bountiful driving the nephites before them and slaying many but it came to pass that they were met by teancum who had slain morianton and had headed his people in his flight and it came to pass that he headed amalickiah also as he was marching forth with his numerous army that he might take possession of the land bountiful and also the land northward but behold he met with a disappointment by being repulsed by teancum and his men for they were great warriors for every man of teancum did exceed the lamanites in their strength and in their skill of war insomuch that they did gain advantage over the lamanites and it came to pass that they did harass them insomuch that they did slay them even until it was dark and it came to pass that teancum and his men did pitch their tents in the borders of the land bountiful and amalickiah did pitch his tents in the borders on the beach by the seashore and after this manner were they driven and it came to pass that when the night had come teancum and his servant stole forth and went out by night and went into the camp of amalickiah and behold sleep had overpowered them because of their much fatigue which was caused by the labors and heat of the day and it came to pass that teancum stole privily into the tent of the king and put a javelin to his heart and he did cause the death of the king immediately that he did not awake his servants and he returned again privily to his own camp and behold his men were asleep and he awoke them and told them all the things which he had done and he caused that his army should stand in readiness lest the lamanites had awakened and should come upon them and thus ended the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and thus endeth the days of amalickiah End of Alma chapters 49 through 51. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma chapters 52 through 55 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. 
For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 52 through 55. Alma, chapter 52. And now it came to pass, in the twenty and sixth year of the reign of the judges, over the people of Nephi, behold, when the Lamanites awoke on the first morning of the first month, behold, they found Amalickiah was dead in his own tent, and they also saw that Teancum was ready to give them battle on that day. And now when the Lamanites saw this, they were affrighted, and they abandoned their design, and marching into the land northward, and retreated with all their army into the city of Mulek, and sought protection in their fortifications. And it came to pass that the brother of Amalickiah was appointed king over the people, and his name was Amaron. Thus King Amaron, the brother of King Amalickiah, was appointed to reign in his stead. And it came to pass that he did command that his people should maintain those cities which they had taken by the shedding of blood, for they had not taken any cities, save they had lost much blood. And now Teancum saw that the Lamanites were determined to maintain those cities which they had taken, and those parts of the land which they had obtained possession of. And also seeing the enormity of their number, Teancum thought it was not expedient that he should attempt to attack them in their forts. But he kept his men round about, as if making preparations for war. Yea, and truly, he was preparing to defend himself against them, by casting up walls round about and preparing places of resort. And it came to pass that he kept thus preparing for war until Moroni had sent a large number of men to strengthen his army. And Moroni also sent orders unto him that he should retain all the prisoners who fell into his hands. For as the Lamanites had taken many prisoners, that he should retain all the prisoners of the Lamanites as a ransom for those whom the Lamanites had taken. And he also sent orders unto him that he should fortify the land bountiful, and secure the narrow pass which led into the land northward, lest the Lamanites should obtain that point, and should have power to harass them on every side. And Moroni also sent unto him, desiring him that he would be faithful in maintaining that quarter of the land, and that he would seek every opportunity to scourge the Lamanites in that quarter as much as was in his power, that perhaps he might take again by stratagem, or some other way those cities which had been taken out of their hands, and that he also would fortify and strengthen the cities round about which had not fallen into the hands of the Lamanites. And he also said unto him, I would come unto you, but behold the Lamanites are upon us in the borders of the land by the west sea, and behold I go against them, therefore I cannot come unto you. Now the king, Amaron, had departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and had made known unto the queen concerning the death of his brother, and had gathered together a large number of men, and had marched forth against the Nephites on the borders by the West Sea. And thus he was endeavoring to harass the Nephites, and to draw away a part of their forces to that part of the land, while he had commanded those whom he had left to possess the cities which he had taken, that they should also harass the Nephites on the borders by the East Sea, and should take possession of their lands as much as was in their power according to the power of their armies. And thus were the Nephites in those dangerous circumstances in the ending of the twenty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. But behold, it came to pass in the twenty and seventh year of the reign of the judges that Teancum, by the command of Moroni, who had established armies to protect the south and the west borders of the land, and had begun his march towards the land bountiful, that he might assist Teancum with his men in retaking the cities which they had lost. And it came to pass that Teancum had received orders to make an attack upon the city of Mulek, and retake it, if it were possible. And it came to pass that Teancum made preparations to make an attack upon the city of Mulek, and march forth with his army against the Lamanites. But he saw that it was impossible that he could overpower them while they were in their fortifications. Therefore he abandoned his designs, and returned again to the city bountiful, to wait for the coming of Moroni, that he might receive strength to his army. And it came to pass that Moroni did arrive with his army at the land bountiful, in the latter end of the twenty and seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. 
and in the commencement of the twenty and eighth year moroni and teancum and many of the chief captains held a council of war what they should do to cause the lamanites to come out against them to battle or that they might by some means flatter them out of their strongholds that they might gain advantage over them and take again the city of mulek and it came to pass they sent embassies to the army of the lamanites which protected the city of mulek to their leader whose name was jacob desiring him that he would come out with his armies to meet them upon the plains between the two cities but behold jacob who was a zoramite would not come out with his army to meet them upon the plains and it came to pass that moroni having no hopes of meeting them upon fair grounds therefore he resolved upon a plan that he might decoy the lamanites out of their strongholds therefore he caused that teancum should take a small number of men and march down near the seashore and moroni and his army by night marched in the wilderness on the west of the city mulek and thus on the morrow when the guards of the lamanites had discovered teancum they ran and told it unto jacob their leader and it came to pass that the armies of the lamanites did march forth against teancum supposing by their numbers to overpower teancum because of the smallness of his numbers and as teancum saw the armies of the lamanites coming out against him he began to retreat down by the seashore northward and it came to pass that when the lamanites saw that he began to flee they took courage and pursued them with vigor and while teancum was thus leading away the lamanites who were pursuing them in vain behold moroni commanded that a part of his army who were with him should march forth into the city and take possession of it and thus they did and slew all those who had been left to protect the city yea all those who would not yield up their weapons of war and thus moroni had obtained possession of the city mulek with a part of his army while he marched with the remainder to meet the lamanites when they should return from the pursuit of teancum and it came to pass that the lamanites did pursue teancum until they came near the city bountiful and then they were met by lehi and a small army which had been left to protect the city bountiful and now behold when the chief captains of the lamanites had beheld lehi with his army coming against them they fled in much confusion lest perhaps they should not obtain the city mulek before lehi should overtake them for they were wearied because of their march and the men of lehi were fresh now the lamanites did not know that moroni had been in their rear with his army and all they feared was lehi and his men now lehi was not desirous to overtake them till they should meet moroni and his army and it came to pass that before the lamanites had retreated far they were surrounded by the nephites by the men of moroni on one hand and the men of lehi on the other all of whom were fresh and full of strength but the lamanites were wearied because of their long march and moroni commanded his men that they should fall upon them until they had given up their weapons of war and it came to pass that jacob being their leader being also a zoramite and having an unconquerable spirit he led the lamanites forth to battle with exceeding fury against moroni moroni being in their course of march therefore jacob was determined to slay them and cut his way through to the city of mulek but behold moroni and his men were more powerful therefore they did not give way before the lamanites and it came to pass that they fought on both hands with exceeding fury and there were many slain on both sides yea and moroni was wounded and jacob was killed and lehi pressed upon their rear with such fury with his strong men that the lamanites in the rear delivered up their weapons of war and the remainder of them being much confused knew not whither to go or to strike now moroni seeing their confusion he said unto them if you will bring forth your weapons of war and deliver them up behold we will forbear shedding your blood and it came to pass that when the lamanites had heard these words their chief captains all those who were not slain came forth and threw down their weapons of war at the feet of moroni and also commanded their men that they should do the same but behold there were many who would not and those who would not deliver up their swords were taken and bound and their weapons of war were taken from them and they were compelled to march with their brethren forth into the land bountiful and now the number of prisoners who were taken exceeded more than the number of those who had been slain 
yea, more than those who had been slain on both sides. Alma chapter 53 And it came to pass that they did set guards over the prisoners of the Lamanites, and did compel them to go forth and bury their dead, yea, and also the dead of the Nephites who were slain. And Moroni placed men over them to guard them while they should perform their labors. And Moroni went to the city of Mulek with Lehi, and took command of the city, and gave it unto Lehi. Now behold, this Lehi was a man who had been with Moroni in the war part of all his battles, and he was a man like unto Moroni, and they rejoiced in each other's safety. Yea, they were beloved by each other, and also beloved by all the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that after the Lamanites had finished burying their dead and also the dead of the Nephites, they were marched back into the land of Bountiful, and Teancum, by the orders of Moroni, caused that they should commence laboring and digging a ditch round about the land, or the city bountiful. And he caused that they should build a breastwork of timbers upon the inner bank of the ditch, and they cast up dirt out of the ditch against the breastwork of timbers. And thus they did cause the Lamanites to labor until they had encircled the city of bountiful round about with a strong wall of timbers and earth to an exceeding height. And this city became an exceeding stronghold ever after. And in this city they did guard the prisoners of the Lamanites, yea, even within a wall which they had caused them to build with their own hands. And now Moroni was compelled to cause the Lamanites to labor, because it was easy to guard them while at their labor. And he desired all his forces when he should make an attack upon the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni had thus gained a victory over one of the greatest of the armies of the Lamanites and had obtained possession of the city of Mulek, which was one of the strongest holds of the Lamanites in the land of Nephi. And thus he had also built a stronghold to retain his prisoners. And it came to pass that he did no more attempt a battle with the Lamanites in that year, but he did employ his men in preparing for war, yea, and in making fortifications to guard against the Lamanites, yea, and also delivering their women, and their children from famine and affliction, and providing food for their armies. And now it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites, on the west sea south, while in the absence of Moroni, on account of some intrigue amongst the Nephites, which caused dissensions amongst them, had gained some ground over the Nephites, yea, insomuch that they had obtained possession of a number of their cities in that part of the land. And thus, because of iniquity amongst themselves, Yea, because of dissensions and intrigue among themselves, they were placed in the most dangerous circumstances. And now behold, I have somewhat to say concerning the people of Ammon, who in the beginning were Lamanites, but by Ammon and his brethren, or rather, by the power and word of God, they had been converted unto the Lord, and they had been brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and had ever since been protected by the Nephites. And because of their oath, they had been kept from taking up arms against their brethren. For they had taken an oath that they never would shed blood more, and according to their oath they would have perished. Yea, they would have suffered themselves to have fallen into the hands of their brethren, had it not been for the pity and the exceeding love which Ammon and his brethren had had for them. And for this cause they were brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and they ever had been protected by the Nephites. But it came to pass that when they saw the danger, and the many afflictions and tribulations which the Nephites bore for them, they were moved with compassion, and were desirous to take up arms in the defense of their country. But behold, as they were about to take their weapons of war, they were overpowered by the persuasions of Helaman and his brethren, for they were about to break the oath which they had made, and Helaman feared, lest by so doing they should lose their souls. Therefore all those who had entered into this covenant were compelled to behold their brethren wade through their afflictions in their dangerous circumstances at this time. But behold, it came to pass, they had many sons who had not entered into a covenant, that they would not take their weapons of war to defend themselves against their enemies. Therefore they did assemble themselves together at this time, as many as were able to take up arms and they called themselves Nephites. And they entered into a covenant to fight for the liberty of the Nephites, 
yea, to protect the land unto the laying down of their lives. Yea, even they covenanted that they never would give up their liberty, but they would fight in all cases to protect the Nephites and themselves from bondage. Now behold, there were two thousand of those young men who entered into this covenant, and took their weapons of war to defend their country. And now behold, as they never had hitherto been a disadvantage to the Nephites, they became now at this period of time also a great support. For they took their weapons of war, and they would that Helaman should be their leader. And they were all young men, and they were exceedingly valiant for courage, and also for strength and activity. But behold, this was not all. They were men who were true at all times in whatsoever thing they were entrusted. Yea, they were men of truth and soberness, for they had been taught to keep the commandments of God and to walk uprightly before him. And now it came to pass that Helaman did march at the head of his two thousand stripling soldiers to the support of the people in the borders of the land on the south by the west sea. And thus ended the twenty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Alma chapter 54 And now it came to pass, in the commencement of the twenty and ninth year of the judges, that Amaron sent unto Moroni, desiring that he would exchange prisoners. And it came to pass that Moroni felt to rejoice exceedingly at this request, for he desired the provisions which were imparted for the support of the Lamanite prisoners for the support of his own people, and he also desired his own people for the strengthening of his army. Now the Lamanites had taken many women and children, and there was not a woman nor a child among all the prisoners of Moroni or the prisoners whom Moroni had taken. Therefore Moroni resolved upon a stratagem to obtain as many prisoners of the Nephites from the Lamanites as it were possible. Therefore he wrote an epistle, and sent it by the servant of Amaron, the same who had brought an epistle to Moroni. Now these are the words which he wrote unto Amaron, saying, Behold, Amaron, I have written unto you somewhat concerning this war which ye have waged against my people, or rather which thy brother hath waged against them, and which ye are still determined to carry on after his death. Behold, I would tell you somewhat concerning the justice of God, and the sword of his almighty wrath which doth hang over you except ye repent, and withdraw your armies into your own lands, or the lands of your possessions, which is the land of Nephi. Yea, I would tell you these things if ye were capable of hearkening unto them. Yea, I would tell you concerning that awful hell that awaits to receive such murderers as thou and thy brother have been, except ye repent and withdraw your murderous purposes and return with your armies to your own lands. But as ye have once rejected these things, and have fought against the people of the Lord, even so I may expect you will do it again. And now, behold, we are prepared to receive you. Yea, and except you withdraw your purposes, behold, ye will pull down the wrath of that God whom you have rejected upon you, even to your utter destruction. But, as the Lord liveth, our armies shall come upon you, except ye withdraw, and ye shall soon be visited with death, for we will retain our cities and our lands. Yea, and we will maintain our religion and the cause of our God. But behold, it supposeth me that I talk to you concerning these things in vain. Or it supposeth me that thou art a child of hell. Therefore I will close my epistle by telling you that I will not exchange prisoners, save it be on conditions that ye will deliver up a man and his wife and his children for one prisoner. If this be the case, that ye will do it, I will exchange. And behold, if you do not this, I will come against you with my armies. Yea, even I will arm my women and my children. And I will come against you, and I will follow you even into your own land, which is the land of our first inheritance. Yea, and it shall be blood for blood, yea, life for life. And I will give you battle, even until you are destroyed from off the face of the earth. Behold, I am in my anger, and also my people. Ye have sought to murder us, and we have only sought to defend ourselves. But behold, if ye seek to destroy us more, we will seek to destroy you. Yea, and we will seek our land, the land of our first inheritance. Now I close my epistle. I am Moroni. I am a leader of the people of the Nephites. Now it came to pass that Amaron, when he had received this epistle, was angry, 
and he wrote another epistle unto Moroni. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, I am Amaron, the king of the Lamanites. I am the brother of Amalickiah, whom ye have murdered. Behold, I will avenge his blood upon you. Yea, and I will come upon you with my armies, for I fear not your threatenings. For behold, your fathers did wrong their brethren, insomuch that they did rob them of their right to the government when it rightfully belonged unto them. And now, behold, if ye will lay down your arms, and subject yourselves to be governed by those to whom the government doth rightly belong, then will I cause that my people shall lay down their weapons, and shall be at war no more. Behold, ye have breathed out many threatenings against me and my people. But behold, we fear not your threatenings. Nevertheless, I will grant to exchange prisoners according to your request, gladly, and that I may preserve my food for my men of war. And we will wage a war which shall be eternal, either to the subjecting the Nephites to our authority, or to their eternal extinction. And as concerning that God whom ye say we have rejected, behold, we know not such a being, neither do ye. But if it so be that there is such a thing, we know not but that he hath made us as well as you. And if it so be that there is a devil and a hell, behold, will he not send you there to dwell with my brother whom ye have murdered, whom ye have hinted that he hath gone to such a place? But behold, these things matter not. I am Amaron, and a descendant of Zoram, whom your fathers pressed and brought out of Jerusalem. And behold, now I am a bold Lamanite. Behold, this war hath been waged to avenge their wrongs, and to maintain and to obtain their rights to the government. And I close my epistle to Moroni. Alma, chapter 55 Now it came to pass that when Moroni had received this epistle he was more angry, because he knew that Amaron had a perfect knowledge of his fraud. Yea, and he knew that Amaron knew that it was not a just cause that had caused him to wage a war against the people of Nephi. And he said, Behold, I will not exchange prisoners with Amaron, save he will withdraw his purpose, as I have stated in my epistle. For I will not grant unto him that he shall have any more power than what he hath got. Behold, I know the place where the Lamanites do guard my people, whom they have taken prisoners, and as Amaron would not grant unto me mine epistle, behold, I will give unto him according to my words. Yea, I will seek death among them, until they shall sue for peace. And now it came to pass that when Moroni had said these words, he caused that a search should be made among his men, that perhaps he might find a man who was a descendant of Laman among them. And it came to pass that they found one, whose name was Laman. And he was one of the servants of the king who was murdered by Amalickiah. Now Moroni caused that Laman and a small number of his men should go forth unto the guards who were over the Nephites. Now the Nephites were guarded in the city of Gid, Therefore Moroni appointed Laman, and caused that a small number of men should go with him. And when it was evening, Laman went to the guards who were over the Nephites, and, behold, they saw him coming, and they hailed him. But he saith unto them, Fear not, behold, I am a Lamanite. Behold, we have escaped from the Nephites, and they sleep. And, behold, we have taken of their wine and brought with us. Now when the Lamanites heard these words, they received him with joy, and they said unto him, Give us of your wine, that we may drink. We are glad that ye have thus taken wine with you, for we are weary. But Laman said unto them, Let us keep our wine till we go against the Nephites to battle. But this saying only made them more desirous to drink of the wine. For, said they, We are weary, therefore let us take of the wine, and by and by we shall receive wine for our rations, which will strengthen us to go against the Nephites. And Laman said unto them, you may do according to your desires. And it came to pass that they did take of the wine freely, and it was pleasant to their taste, therefore they took of it more freely, and it was strong, having been prepared in its strength. And it came to pass they did drink, and were merry, and by and by they were all drunken. And now when Laman and his men saw that they were all drunken, and were in a deep sleep, they returned to Moroni and told him all the things that had happened. And now this was according to the design of Moroni, and Moroni had prepared his men with weapons of war, and he went to the city Gid, while the Lamanites were in a deep sleep and drunken, and cast in weapons of war unto the prisoners, insomuch that they were all armed, 
yea, even to their women, and all those of their children, as many as were able to use a weapon of war, when Moroni had armed all those prisoners, and all those things were done in a profound silence. But had they awakened the Lamanites, behold, they were drunken, and the Nephites could have slain them. But behold, this was not the desire of Moroni. He did not delight in murder or bloodshed, but he delighted in the saving of his people from destruction, and for this cause he might not bring upon him injustice. He would not fall upon the Lamanites and destroy them in their drunkenness. But he had obtained his desires, for he had armed those prisoners of the Nephites who were within the wall of the city, and had given them power to gain possession of those parts which were within the walls. And then he caused the men who were with him to withdraw a pace from them, and surround the armies of the Lamanites. Now behold, this was done in the night time, so that when the Lamanites awoke in the morning, they beheld that they were surrounded by the Nephites without, and that their prisoners were armed within. And thus they saw that the Nephites had power over them, and in these circumstances they found that it was not expedient that they should fight with the Nephites. Therefore their chief captains demanded their weapons of war, and they brought them forth and cast them at the feet of the Nephites, pleading for mercy. Now behold, this was the desire of Moroni. He took them prisoners of war, and took possession of the city, and caused that all the prisoners should be liberated who were Nephites. And they did join the army of Moroni, and were a great strength to his army. And it came to pass that he did cause the Lamanites, whom he had taken prisoners, that they should commence a labor in strengthening the fortifications round about the city Gid. And it came to pass that when he had fortified the city Gid according to his desires, he caused that his prisoners should be taken to the city Bountiful, and he also guarded that city with an exceedingly strong force. And it came to pass that they did, notwithstanding all the intrigues of the Lamanites, keep and protect all the prisoners whom they had taken, and also maintain all the ground and the advantage which they had retaken. And it came to pass that the Nephites began again to be victorious and to reclaim their rights and their privileges. Many time did the Lamanites attempt to encircle them about by night, but in these attempts they did lose many prisoners. And many times did they attempt to administer of their wine to the Nephites, that they might destroy them with poison or with drunkenness. But behold, the Nephites were not slow to remember the Lord their God in this their time of affliction. They could not be taken in their snares. Yea, they would not partake of their wine, save they had first given to some of the Lamanite prisoners. And they were thus cautious that no poison should be administered among them. For if their wine would poison a Lamanite, it would also poison a Nephite. And thus they did try all their liquors. And now it came to pass that it was expedient for Moroni to make preparations to attack the city Morianton, for behold, the Lamanites had, by their labors, fortified the city Morianton until it had become an exceeding stronghold, and they were continually bringing new forces into that city, and also new supplies of provisions. And thus ended the twenty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. End of Alma, chapters 52 through 55, recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hesmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 56 through 58 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma chapters 56 through 58. Alma chapter 56. And now it came to pass in the commencement of the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges, on the second day in the first month, Moroni received an epistle from Helaman, stating the affairs of the people in that quarter of the land. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, My dearly beloved brother Moroni, as well in the Lord as in the tribulations of our warfare, Behold, my beloved brother, I have somewhat to tell you concerning our warfare in this part of the land. Behold, two thousand of the sons of those men whom Ammon brought down out of the land of Nephi. Now ye have known that these were descendants of Laman, who was the eldest son of our father Lehi. Now I need not rehearse unto you concerning their traditions or their unbelief, 
for thou knowest concerning all these things. Therefore it sufficeth me that I tell you that two thousand of these young men have taken their weapons of war, and would that I should be their leader, and we have come forth to defend our country. And now ye also know concerning the covenant which their fathers made, that they would not take up their weapons of war against their brethren to shed blood. But in the twenty and sixth year, when they saw our afflictions, and our tribulations for them, they were about to break the covenant which they had made, and take up their weapons of war in our defense. But I would not suffer them that they should break this covenant which they had made, supposing that God would strengthen us, insomuch that we should not suffer more because of the fulfilling the oath which they had taken. But, behold, here is one thing in which we may have great joy, for, behold, in the twenty and sixth year I, Helaman, did march at the head of these two thousand young men to the city of Judea to assist Antipas, whom ye had appointed a leader over the people of that part of the land. And I did join my two thousand sons, for they are worthy to be called sons, to the army of Antipas, in which strength Antipas did rejoice exceedingly. For, behold, his army had been reduced by the Lamanites, because their forces had slain a vast number of our men, for which cause we have to mourn. Nevertheless, we may console ourselves in this point, that they have died in the cause of their country and of their God, yea, and they are happy. And the Lamanites had also retained many prisoners, all of whom are chief captains, for none other have they spared alive. And we suppose that they are now at this time in the land of Nephi. It is so if they are not slain. And now these are the cities of which the Lamanites have obtained possession by the shedding of the blood of so many of our valiant men, the land of Manti, or the city of Manti, and the city of Zizrum, and the city of Cumani, and the city of Antipara. And these are the cities which they possessed when I arrived at the city of Judea, and I found Antipas and his men toiling with their might to fortify the city. Yea, and they were depressed in body as well as in spirit. For they had fought valiantly by day, and toiled by night to maintain their cities, and thus they had suffered great afflictions of every kind. And now they were determined to conquer in this place or die. Therefore you may well suppose that this little force which I brought with me, yea, those sons of mine, gave them great hopes and much joy. And now it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that Antipas had received greater strength to his army, they were compelled by the orders of Ammaron to not come against the city of Judea, or against us to battle. And thus were we favored of the Lord, for had they come upon us in this our weakness, they might have perhaps destroyed our little army. But thus were we preserved. They were commanded by Ammaron to maintain those cities which they had taken, and thus ended the twenty and sixth year. And in the commencement of the twenty and seventh year we had prepared our city and ourselves for defense. Now we were desirous that the Lamanites should come upon us, for we were not desirous to make an attack upon them and their strongholds. And it came to pass that we kept spies out round about, to watch the movements of the Lamanites, that they might not pass us by night nor by day to make an attack upon our other cities, which were on the northward. For we knew in those cities they were not sufficiently strong to meet them. Therefore we were desirous, if they should pass by us, to fall upon them in their rear, and thus bring them up in the rear at the same time they were met in the front. We supposed that we could overpower them, but, behold, we were disappointed in this our desire. They durst not pass by us with their whole army, neither durst they with a part, lest they should not be sufficiently strong, and they should fall. Neither durst they march down against the city of Zarahemla, neither durst they cross the head of Sidon over to the city of Nephiha. And thus, with their forces, they were determined to maintain those cities which they had taken. And now it came to pass, in the second month of this year, there was brought unto us many provisions from the fathers of those my two thousand sons. And also there were sent two thousand men unto us from the land of Zarahemla. And thus we were prepared with ten thousand men and provisions for them, and also for their wives and their children. And the Lamanites, thus seeing our forces increase daily, and provisions arrive for our support, they began to be fearful, and began to sally forth, if it were possible, to put an end to our receiving provisions and strength. Now when we saw that the Lamanites began to grow uneasy on this wise, we were desirous to bring a stratagem into effect upon them. 
Therefore Antipas ordered that I should march forth with my little sons to a neighboring city as if we were carrying provisions to a neighboring city. And we were to march near the city of Antipara, as if we were going to the city beyond in the borders by the seashore. And it came to pass that we did march forth as if with our provisions to go to that city. And it came to pass that Antipas did march forth with a part of his army, leaving the remainder to maintain the city. But he did not march forth until I had gone forth with my little army and came near the city Antipara. And now in the city Antipara were stationed the strongest army of the Lamanites, yea, the most numerous. And it came to pass that when they had been informed by their spies, they came forth with their army and marched against us. And it came to pass that we did flee before them northward, and thus we did lead away the most powerful army of the Lamanites, yea, even to a considerable distance, insomuch that when they saw the army of Antipas pursuing them with their might, they did not turn to the right nor to the left, but pursued their march in a straight course after us. And, as we suppose, it was their intent to slay us before Antipas could overtake them, in this that they might not be surrounded by our people. And now Antipas, beholding our danger, did speed the march of his army, but behold it was night, therefore they did not overtake us, neither did Antipas overtake them, therefore we did camp for the night. And it came to pass that before the dawn of the morning, behold, the Lamanites were pursuing us. Now we were not sufficiently strong to contend with them, yea, I would not suffer that my little sons should fall into their hands. Therefore we did continue our march, and we took our march into the wilderness. Now they durst not turn to the right nor to the left, lest they should be surrounded, neither would I turn to the right nor to the left, lest they should overtake me and we could not stand against them but be slain, and they would make their escape. And thus we did flee all that day into the wilderness, even until it was dark. And it came to pass that again when the light of the morning came we saw the Lamanites upon us, and we did flee before them. But it came to pass that they did not pursue us far before they halted, and it was in the morning of the third day of the seventh month. And now whether they were overtaken by Antipas we knew not. But I said unto my men, Behold, we know not, but they have halted for the purpose that we should come against them, that they might catch us in their snare. Therefore what say ye, my sons? Will ye go against them to battle? And now I say unto you, my beloved brother Moroni, that never had I seen so great courage, nay, not amongst all the Nephites, for as I have ever called them my sons, for they were all of them very young, even so they said unto me, Father, behold, our God is with us, and he will not suffer that we should fall. Then let us go forth. We would not slay our brethren if they would let us alone. Therefore let us go, lest they should overpower the army of Antipas. Now they never had fought, yet they did not fear death, and they did think more upon the liberty of their fathers than they did upon their lives, Yea, they had been taught by their mothers that if they did not doubt, God would deliver them. And they rehearsed unto me the words of their mothers, saying, We do not doubt our mothers knew it. And it came to pass that I did return with my two thousand against these Lamanites who had pursued us. And now behold, the armies of Antipas had overtaken them, and a terrible battle had commenced. The army of Antipas, being weary because of their long march in so short a space of time, were about to fall into the hands of the Lamanites. And had I not returned with my two thousand, they would have obtained their purpose. For Antipas had fallen by the sword, and many of his leaders, because of their weariness, which was occasioned by the speed of their march. Therefore the men of Antipas, being confused because of the fall of their leaders, began to give way before the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the Lamanites took courage and began to pursue them, and thus were the Lamanites pursuing them with great vigor when Helaman came upon their rear with his two thousand and began to slay them exceedingly, insomuch that the whole army of the Lamanites halted and turned upon Helaman. Now when the people of Antipas saw that the Lamanites had turned them about, they gathered together their men and came again upon the rear of the Lamanites. And now it came to pass that we, the people of Nephi, the people of Antipas, and I with my two thousand, did surround the Lamanites, and did slay them, 
yea, insomuch that they were compelled to deliver up their weapons of war, and also themselves as prisoners of war. And now it came to pass that when they had surrendered themselves up unto us, behold, I numbered those young men who had fought with me, fearing lest there were many of them slain. But, behold, to my great joy, there was not one soul of them fallen to the earth. Yea, and they had fought, as if with the strength of God. Yea, never were men known to have fought with such miraculous strength, and with such mighty power did they fall upon the Lamanites that they did frighten them. And for this cause did the Lamanites deliver themselves up as prisoners of war. And as we had no place for our prisoners, that we could guard them to keep them from the armies of the Lamanites, therefore we sent them to the land of Zarahemla, and a part of those men who were not slain of Antipas with them. And the remainder I took, and joined them to my stripling Ammonites, and took our march back to the city of Judea. Alma chapter 57 And now it came to pass that I received an epistle from Ammon the king, stating that if I would deliver up those prisoners of war whom we had taken, that he would deliver up the city of Antipara unto us. But I sent an epistle unto the king, that we were sure our forces were sufficient to take the city of Antipara by our force, and by delivering up the prisoners for that city we should suppose ourselves unwise, and that we would only deliver up our prisoners on exchange. And Amaron refused mine epistle, for he would not exchange prisoners. Therefore we began to make preparations to go against the city of Antipara. But the people of Antipara did leave the city, and fled to their other cities, which they had possession of, to fortify them, and thus the city of Antipara fell into our hands. And thus ended the twenty and eighth year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the twenty and ninth year we received a supply of provisions, and also an addition to our army from the land of Zarahemla, and from the land round about, to the number of six thousand men, besides sixty of the sons of the Ammonites, who had come to join their brethren, my little band of two thousand. And now, behold, we were strong. Yea, and we had also plenty of provisions brought unto us, and it came to pass that it was our desire to wage a battle with the army which was placed to protect the city Cumani. And now, behold, I will show unto you that we soon accomplished our desire. Yea, with our strong force, or with a part of our strong force, we did surround by night the city Cumani a little before they were to receive a supply of provisions. And it came to pass that we did camp round about the city for many nights, but we did sleep upon our swords, and keep guards, that the Lamanites could not come upon us by night and slay us, which they attempted many times. But, as many times as they attempted this, their blood was spilt. At length their provisions did arrive, and they were about to enter the city by night. And we, instead of being Lamanites, were Nephites. Therefore we did take them and their provisions. And notwithstanding the Lamanites being cut off from their support after this manner, they were still determined to maintain the city. Therefore it became expedient that we should take those provisions and send them to Judea, and our prisoners to the land of Zarahemla. And it came to pass that not many days had passed away before the Lamanites began to lose all hopes of succor. Therefore they yielded up the city unto our hands, and thus we had accomplished our designs in obtaining the city Cumani. But it came to pass that our prisoners were so numerous that notwithstanding the enormity of our numbers, we were obliged to employ all our force to keep them, or to put them to death. For, behold, they would break out in great numbers, and would fight with stones and with clubs, or whatsoever thing they could get into their hands, insomuch that we did slay upwards of two thousand of them after they had surrendered themselves prisoners of war. Therefore it became expedient for us that we should put an end to their lives, or guard them, sword in hand, down to the land of Zarahemla. And also our provisions were not any more than sufficient for our own people notwithstanding that which we had taken from the Lamanites. And now in those critical circumstances it became a very serious matter to determine concerning these prisoners of war. Nevertheless, we did resolve to send them down to the land of Zarahemla. Therefore we selected a part of our men and gave them charge over our prisoners to go down to the land of Zarahemla. But it came to pass that on the morrow they did return. And now, behold, we did not inquire of them concerning the prisoners, for, behold, the Lamanites were upon us, and they returned in season to save us from falling into their hands. For, behold, Amaron had sent to their support a new supply of provisions, and also a numerous army of men. 
and it came to pass that those men whom we sent with the prisoners did arrive in season to check them, as they were about to overpower us. But behold, my little band of two thousand and sixty fought most desperately. Yea, they were firm before the Lamanites, and did administer death unto all those who opposed them. And as the remainder of our army were about to give way before the Lamanites, behold, those two thousand and sixty were firm and undaunted. Yea, and they did obey and observe to perform every word of command with exactness. Yea, and even according to their faith it was done unto them. And I did remember the words which they said unto me that their mothers had taught them. And now behold, it was these my sons and those men who had been selected to convey the prisoners to whom we owe this great victory. For it was they who did beat the Lamanites. Therefore they were driven back to the city of Manti. And we retained our city Cumani, and were not all destroyed by the sword. Nevertheless we had suffered great loss. And it came to pass that after the Lamanites had fled, I immediately gave orders that my men who had been wounded should be taken from among the dead and caused that their wounds should be dressed. And it came to pass that there were two hundred, out of my two thousand and sixty who had fainted because of the loss of blood. Nevertheless, according to the goodness of God, and to our great astonishment, and also the joy of our whole army, there was not one soul of them who did perish. Yea, and neither was there one soul among them who had not received many wounds. And now their preservation was astonishing to our whole army, yea, that they should be spared, while there was a thousand of our brethren who were slain. And we do justly ascribe it to the miraculous power of God, because of their exceeding faith in that which they had been taught to believe, that there was a just God, and whosoever did not doubt that they should be preserved by his marvelous power. Now this was the faith of these of whom I have spoken. They are young, and their minds are firm, and they do put their trust in God continually. And now it came to pass that after we had thus taken care of our wounded men, and had buried our dead, and also the dead of the Lamanites, who were many, Behold, we did inquire of Gid concerning the prisoners whom they had started to go down to the land of Zarahemla with. Now Gid was the chief captain over the band who was appointed to guard them down to the land. And now these are the words which Gid said unto me. Behold, we did start to go down to the land of Zarahemla with our prisoners. And it came to pass that we did meet the spies of our armies, who had been sent out to watch the camp of the Lamanites. And they cried unto us, saying, Behold, the armies of the Lamanites are marching towards the city of Cumani, and behold, they will fall upon them, yea, and will destroy our people. And it came to pass that our prisoners did hear their cries, which caused them to take courage, and they did rise up in rebellion against us. And it came to pass, because of their rebellion, we did cause that our swords should come upon them. And it came to pass that they did in a body run upon our swords, in the which the greater number of them were slain, and the remainder of them broke through and fled from us. And behold, when they had fled, and we could not overtake them, we took our march with speed towards the city Cumani. And behold, we did arrive in time, that we might assist our brethren in preserving the city. And behold, we are again delivered out of the hands of our enemies. And blessed is the name of our God. For behold, it is he that has delivered us, yea, that has done this great thing for us. Now it came to pass that when I, Helaman, had heard these words of Gid, I was filled with exceeding joy, because of the goodness of God in preserving us, that we might not all perish. Yea, and I trust that the souls of them who have been slain have entered into the rest of their God. Alma, chapter 58 And behold, now it came to pass that our next object was to obtain the city of Manti. But behold, there was no way that we could lead them out of the city by our small bands. For behold, they remembered that which we had hitherto done. Therefore we could not decoy them away from their strongholds. And they were so much more numerous than was our army, that we durst not go forth and attack them in their strongholds. Yea, and it became expedient that we should employ our men to the maintaining those parts of the land which we had regained of our possessions. Therefore it became expedient that we should wait, that we might receive more strength from the land of Zarahemla, and also a new supply of provisions. And it came to pass that I thus did send an embassy to the governor of our land, to acquaint him concerning the affairs of our people. And it came to pass that we did wait to receive provisions and strength from the land of Zarahemla. But behold, this did profit us but little, for the Lamanites were also receiving great strength from day to day, and also many provisions, 
and thus were our circumstances at this period of time. And the Lamanites were sallying forth against us from time to time, resolving by stratagem to destroy us. Nevertheless, we could not come out to battle with them because of their retreats and their strongholds. And it came to pass that we did wait in these difficult circumstances for the space of many months, even until we were about to perish for the want of food. But it came to pass that we did receive food, which was guarded to us by an army of two thousand men to our assistance. And this is all the assistance which we did receive to defend ourselves and our country from falling into the hands of our enemies, yea, to contend with an enemy which was innumerable. And now the cause of these our embarrassments, or the cause why they did not send more strength unto us, we knew not. Therefore we were grieved, and also filled with fear, lest by any means the judgments of God should come upon our land, to our overthrow and utter destruction. Therefore we did pour out our souls in prayer to God, that he would strengthen us and deliver us out of the hands of our enemies, yea, and also give us strength, that we might retain our cities, and our lands and our possessions, for the support of our people. Yea, and it came to pass that the Lord our God did visit us with assurances that he would deliver us, yea, insomuch that he did speak peace to our souls, and did grant unto us great faith, and did cause us that we should hope for our deliverance in him. And we did take courage with our small force which we had received, and were fixed with a determination to conquer our enemies, and to maintain our lands, and our possessions, and our wives, and our children, and the cause of our liberty. And thus we did go forth, with all our might against the Lamanites who were in the city of Manti, and we did pitch our tents by the wilderness side which was near to the city. And it came to pass that on the morrow that when the Lamanites saw that we were in the borders by the wilderness which was near the city, that they sent out their spies round about us, that they might discover the number and the strength of our army. And it came to pass that when they saw that we were not strong according to our numbers, and fearing that we should cut them off from their support, except they should come out to battle against us and kill us, and also supposing that they could easily destroy us with their numerous hosts. Therefore they began to make preparations to come out against us to battle. And when we saw that they were making preparations to come out against us, behold, I caused that Gid, with a small number of men, should secrete himself in the wilderness, and also that Tiamner and a small number of men should secrete themselves also in the wilderness. Now Gid and his men were on the right, and the others on the left. And when they had thus secreted themselves, behold, I remained with the remainder of my army, in that same place where we had first pitched our tents against the time that the Lamanites should come out to battle. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did come out with their numerous army against us, and when they had come and were about to fall upon us with the sword, I caused that my men, those who were with me, should retreat into the wilderness. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did follow after us with great speed, for they were exceedingly desirous to overtake us that they might slay us. Therefore they did follow us into the wilderness, and we did pass by in the midst of Gid and Tiamner, insomuch that they were not discovered by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had passed by, or when the army had passed by, Gid and Tiamner did rise up from their secret places, and did cut off the spies of the Lamanites, that they should not return to the city. And it came to pass that when they had cut them off, they ran to the city and fell upon the guards who were left to guard the city, insomuch that they did destroy them and did take possession of the city. Now this was done because the Lamanites did suffer their whole army, save a few guards only, to be led away into the wilderness. And it came to pass that Gid and Tiamner by this means had obtained possession of their strongholds. And it came to pass that we took our course after having traveled much in the wilderness towards the land of Zarahemla. And when the Lamanites saw that they were marching towards the land of Zarahemla, they were exceedingly afraid, lest there was a plan laid to lead them on to destruction. Therefore they began to retreat back into the wilderness again, yea, even back by the same way which they had come. And behold, it was night, and they did pitch their tents, for the chief captains of the Lamanites had supposed that the Nephites were weary because of their march, and supposing that they had driven their whole army, therefore they took no thought concerning the city of Manti. Now it came to pass that when it was night I caused that my men should not sleep, but that they should march forward by another way towards the land of Manti. And because of this our march in the night time, behold, on the morrow we were beyond the Lamanites, insomuch that we did arrive before them at the city of Manti. 
and thus it came to pass that by this stratagem we did take possession of the city of manti without the shedding of blood and it came to pass that when the armies of the lamanites did arrive near the city and saw that we were prepared to meet them they were astonished exceedingly and struck with great fear insomuch that they did flee into the wilderness yea and it came to pass that the armies of the lamanites did flee out of all this quarter of the land but behold they have carried with them many women and children out of the land and those cities which had been taken by the lamanites all of them are at this period of time in our possession and our fathers and our women and our children are returning to their homes all save it be those who have been taken prisoners and carried off by the lamanites but behold our armies are small to maintain so great a number of cities and so great possessions but behold we trust in our god who has given us victory over those lands insomuch that we have obtained those cities and those lands which were our own now we do not know the cause that the government does not grant us more strength neither do those men who came up unto us know why we have not received greater strength behold we do not know but what ye are unsuccessful and ye have drawn away the forces into that quarter of the land if so we do not desire to murmur and if it is not so behold we fear that there is some faction in the government that they do not send more men to our assistance for we know that they are more numerous than that which they have sent but behold it mattereth not we trust god will deliver us notwithstanding the weakness of our armies yea and deliver us out of the hands of our enemies behold this is the twenty and ninth year in the latter end and we are in the possession of our lands and the lamanites have fled to the land of nephi and those sons of the people of ammon of whom i have so highly spoken are with me in the city of manti and the lord had supported them yea and kept them from falling by the sword insomuch that even one soul has not been slain but behold they have received many wounds nevertheless they stand fast in that liberty wherewith god has made them free and they are strict to remember the lord their god from day to day yea they do observe to keep his statutes and his judgments and his commandments continually and their faith is strong in the prophecies concerning that which is to come and now my beloved brother moroni may the lord our god who has redeemed us and made us free keep you continually in his presence yea and may he favor this people even that ye may have success in obtaining the possession of all that which the lamanites have taken from us which was for our support and now behold i close mine epistle i am helaman the son of alma end of alma chapters fifty six through fifty eight recording by jared hess in mapleton utah please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com alma chapters fifty nine through sixty three of the book of mormon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by jared hess the book of mormon translated by joseph smith alma chapters fifty nine through sixty three alma chapter fifty nine now it came to pass in the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi after moroni had received and had read helaman's epistle he was exceedingly rejoiced because of the welfare yea the exceeding success which helaman had had in obtaining those lands which were lost yea and he did make it known unto all his people in all the land round about in that part where he was that they might rejoice also and it came to pass that he immediately sent an epistle to pahoran desiring that he should cause men to be gathered together to strengthen helaman or the armies of helaman insomuch that he might with ease maintain that part of the land which he had been so miraculously prospered in regaining and it came to pass when moroni had sent this epistle to the land of zarahemla he began again to lay a plan that he might obtain the remainder of those possessions and cities which the lamanites had taken from them and it came to pass that while moroni was thus making preparations to go against the lamanites to battle behold the people of nephihah who were gathered together from the city of moroni and the city of lehi and the city of morianton were attacked by the lamanites yea even those who had been compelled to flee from the land of manti and from the land round about had come over and joined the lamanites in this part of the land 
and thus being exceedingly numerous, yea, and receiving strength from day to day, by the command of Ammaron, they came forth against the people of Nephihah, and they did begin to slay them with an exceedingly great slaughter. And their armies were so numerous that the remainder of the people of Nephihah were obliged to flee before them, and they came even and joined the army of Moroni. And now, as Moroni had supposed that there should be men sent to the city Nephihah, to the assistance of the people to maintain that city, and knowing that it was easier to keep the city from falling into the hands of the Lamanites than to retake it from them, he supposed that they would easily maintain that city. Therefore he retained all his force to maintain those places which he had recovered. And now when Moroni saw that the city of Nephihah was lost, he was exceedingly sorrowful, and began to doubt because of the wickedness of the people whether they should not fall into the hands of their brethren. Now this was the case with all his chief captains. They doubted and marveled also because of the wickedness of the people, and this because of the success of the Lamanites over them. And it came to pass that Moroni was angry with the government because of their indifference concerning the freedom of their country. Alma chapter 60 And it came to pass that he wrote again to the governor of the land, who was Pahoran. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, Behold, I direct mine epistle to Pahoran in the city of Zarahemla, who is the chief judge and the governor over the land, and also to all those who have been chosen by this people to govern and manage the affairs of this war. For behold, I have somewhat to say unto you by way of condemnation. For behold, ye yourselves know that ye have been appointed to gather together men, and arm them with swords, and with scimitars, and all manner of weapons of war of every kind and send forth against the Lamanites in whatsoever parts they should come into our land. And now behold, I say unto you that myself and also my men, and also Helaman and his men, have suffered exceedingly great sufferings, yea, even hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and all manner of afflictions of every kind. But behold, were this all we had suffered, we would not murmur nor complain. But behold, great has been the slaughter among our people, Yea, thousands have fallen by the sword, while it might have otherwise been if ye had rendered unto our armies sufficient strength and succor for them. Yea, great has been your neglect towards us. And now, behold, we desire to know the cause of this exceedingly great neglect. Yea, we desire to know the cause of your thoughtless state. Can you think to sit upon your thrones in a state of thoughtless stupor, while your enemies are spreading the work of death around you? yea, while they are murdering thousands of your brethren, yea, even they who have looked up to you for protection, yea, have placed you in a situation that ye might have succored them, yea, ye might have sent armies unto them to have strengthened them and have saved thousands of them from falling by the sword, but behold, this is not all. Ye have withheld your provisions from them, insomuch that many have fought and bled out their lives because of their great desires which they had for the welfare of this people. Yea, and this they have done when they were about to perish with hunger, because of your exceedingly great neglect towards them. And now, my beloved brethren, for ye ought to be beloved, yea, and ye ought to have stirred yourselves more diligently for the welfare and the freedom of this people, but behold, ye have neglected them insomuch that the blood of thousands shall come upon your heads for vengeance, yea, for known unto God were all their cries and all their sufferings. Behold, could ye suppose that ye could sit upon your thrones, and because of the exceeding goodness of God ye could do nothing, and he would deliver you? Behold, if ye have supposed this, ye have supposed in vain. Do ye suppose that because so many of your brethren have been killed, it is because of their wickedness? I say unto you, if ye have supposed this, ye have supposed in vain. For I say unto you, there are many who have fallen by the sword, and behold, it is to your condemnation. For the Lord suffereth the righteous to be slain, that his justice and judgment may come upon the wicked. Therefore ye need not suppose that the righteous are lost because they are slain. But behold, they do enter into the rest of the Lord their God. And now behold, I say unto you, I fear exceedingly that the judgments of God will come upon this people because of their exceeding slothfulness, yea, even the slothfulness of our government, and their exceedingly great neglect towards their brethren, yea, towards those who have been slain. For were it not for the wickedness which first commenced at our head, 
we could have withstood our enemies that they could have gained no power over us yea had it not been for the war which broke out among ourselves yea were it not for these king men who caused so much bloodshed among ourselves yea at the time we were contending among ourselves if we had united our strength as we hitherto have done yea had it not been for the desire of power and authority which those king men had over us had they been true to the cause of our freedom and united with us and gone forth against our enemies instead of taking up their swords against us which was the cause of so much bloodshed among ourselves yea if we had gone forth against them in the strength of the lord we should have dispersed our enemies for it would have been done according to the fulfilling of his word but behold now the lamanites are coming upon us taking possession of our lands and they are murdering our people with the sword yea our women and our children and also carrying them away captive causing them that they should suffer all manner of afflictions and this because of the great wickedness of those who are seeking for power and authority yea even those king men but why should i say much concerning this matter for we know not but what ye yourselves are seeking for authority we know not but what ye are also traitors to your country or is it that ye have neglected us because ye are in the heart of our country and ye are surrounded by security that ye do not cause food to be sent unto us and also men to strengthen our armies have ye forgotten the commandments of the lord your god yea have ye forgotten the captivity of our fathers have ye forgotten the many times we have been delivered out of the hands of our enemies or do ye suppose that the lord will still deliver us while we sit upon our thrones and do not make use of the means which the lord has provided for us yea will ye sit in idleness while ye are surrounded with thousands of those yea and tens of thousands who do also sit in idleness while there are thousands round about in the borders of the land who are falling by the sword yea wounded and bleeding do ye suppose that god will look upon you as guiltless while ye sit still and behold these things behold i say unto you nay now i would that ye should remember that god has said that the inward vessel shall be cleansed first and then shall the outer vessel be cleansed also and now except ye do repent of that which ye have done and begin to be up and doing and send forth food and men unto us and also unto helaman that he may support those parts of our country which he has regained and that we may also recover the remainder of our possessions in these parts behold it will be expedient that we contend no more with the lamanites until we have first cleansed our inward vessel yea even the great head of our government and except ye grant mine epistle and come out and show unto me a true spirit of freedom and strive to strengthen and fortify our armies and grant unto them food for their support behold i will leave a part of my freemen to maintain this part of our land and i will leave the strength and the blessings of god upon them that none other power can operate against them and this because of their exceeding faith and their patience in their tribulations and i will come unto you and if there be any among you that has a desire for freedom yea if there be even a spark of freedom remaining behold i will stir up insurrections among you even until those who have desires to usurp power and authority shall become extinct yea behold i do not fear your power nor your authority but it is my god whom i fear and it is according to his commandments that i do take my sword to defend the cause of my country and it is because of your iniquity that we have suffered so much loss behold it is time yea the time is now at hand that except ye do bestir yourselves in the defence of your country and your little ones the sword of justice doth hang over you yea and it shall fall upon you and visit you even to your utter destruction behold i wait for assistance from you and except ye do administer unto our relief behold i come unto you even in the land of zarahemla and smite you with the sword insomuch that ye can have no more power to impede the progress of this people in the cause of our freedom for behold the lord will not suffer that ye shall live and wax strong in your iniquities to destroy his righteous people behold can you suppose that the lord will spare you and come out in judgment against the lamanites when it is the tradition of their fathers that has caused their hatred yea and it has been redoubled by those who have dissented from us while your iniquity is for the cause of your love of glory and the vain things of the world ye know that ye do transgress the laws of god and ye do know that ye do trample them under your feet 
Behold, the Lord saith unto me, If those whom ye have appointed your governors do not repent of their sins and iniquities, ye shall go up to battle against them. And now, behold, I, Moroni, am constrained according to the covenant which I have made to keep the commandments of my God. Therefore I would that ye should adhere to the word of God, and send speedily unto me of your provisions and of your men, and also to Helaman. And behold, if ye will not do this, I will come unto you speedily, for behold, God will not suffer that we should perish with hunger. Therefore he will give unto us of your food, even if it must be by the sword. Now see that ye fulfill the word of God. Behold, I am Moroni, your chief captain. I seek not for power, but to pull it down. I seek not for honor of the world, but for the glory of my God, and the freedom and welfare of my country. And thus I close mine epistle. Alma, chapter 61 Behold, now it came to pass, that soon after Moroni had sent his epistle unto the chief governor, he received an epistle from Pahoran, the chief governor. And these are the words which he received. I, Pahoran, who am the chief governor of this land, do send these words unto Moroni, the chief captain over the army. Behold, I say unto you, Moroni, that I do not joy in your great afflictions. Yea, it grieves my soul. But behold, there are those who do joy in your afflictions, yea, insomuch that they have risen up in rebellion against me, and also those of my people who are freemen. Yea, and those who have risen up are exceedingly numerous. And it is those who have sought to take away the judgment seat from me that have been the cause of this great iniquity. For they have used great flattery, and they have led away the hearts of many people, which will be the cause of sore afflictions among us. They have withheld our provisions, and have daunted our freemen that they have not come unto you. And behold, they have driven me out before them, and I have fled to the land of Gideon, with as many men as it were possible that I could get. And behold, I have sent a proclamation throughout this part of the land, and behold, they are flocking to us daily, to their arms, in the defense of their country, and their freedom, and to avenge our wrongs. And they have come unto us, insomuch that those who have risen up in rebellion against us are set at defiance, yea, insomuch that they do fear us, and durst not come out against us to battle. They have got possession of the land, or the city of Zarahemla. They have appointed a king over them, and he hath written unto the king of the Lamanites, in the which he hath joined an alliance with him, in the which alliance he hath agreed to maintain the city of Zarahemla, which maintenance he supposes will enable the Lamanites to conquer the remainder of the land. And he shall be placed king over this people when they shall be conquered under the Lamanites. And now in your epistle you have censured me, but it mattereth not. I am not angry, but I do rejoice in the greatness of your heart. I, Pahoran, do not seek for power, save only to retain my judgment seat, that I may preserve the rights and the liberty of my people. My soul standeth fast in that liberty in the which God hath made us free. And now, behold, we will resist wickedness even unto bloodshed. We would not shed the blood of the Lamanites if they would stay in their own land. We would not shed the blood of our brethren if they would not rise up in rebellion and take the sword against us. We would subject ourselves to the yoke of bondage if it were requisite with the justice of God, or if he should command us to do so. But, behold, he doth not command us that we shall subject ourselves to our enemies, but that we should put our trust in him, and he will deliver us. Therefore, my beloved brother Moroni, let us resist evil, and whatsoever evil we cannot resist with our words, yea, such as rebellions and dissensions, let us resist them with our swords, that we may retain our freedom, that we may rejoice in the great privilege of our church, and in the cause of our Redeemer and our God. Therefore come unto me speedily with a few of your men, and leave the remainder in the charge of Lehi and Teancum. Give unto them power to conduct the war in that part of the land according to the Spirit of God, which is also the Spirit of freedom which is in them. Behold, I have sent a few provisions unto them, that they may not perish until you can come unto me. Gather together whatsoever force ye can upon your march hither, and we will go speedily against those dissenters in the strength of our God, according to the faith which is in us. And we will take possession of the city of Zarahemla, that we may obtain more food to send forth unto Lehi and Teancum. Yea, we will go forth against them in the strength of the Lord, and we will put an end to this great iniquity. 
and now moroni i do joy in receiving your epistle for i was somewhat worried concerning what we should do whether it would be just in us to go against our brethren but ye have said except they repent the lord hath commanded you that ye should go against them see that ye strengthen lehi and teancum in the lord tell them to fear not for god will deliver them yea and also all those who stand fast in that liberty wherewith god hath made them free and now i close mine epistle to my beloved brother moroni alma chapter sixty two and now it came to pass that when moroni had received this epistle his heart did take courage and was filled with exceedingly great joy because of the faithfulness of pahoran that he was not also a traitor to the freedom and cause of his country but he did also mourn exceedingly because of the iniquity of those who had driven pahoran from the judgment seat yea in fine because of those who had rebelled against their country and also their god and it came to pass that moroni took a small number of men according to the desire of pahoran and gave lehi and teancum command over the remainder of his army and took his march towards the land of gideon and he did raise the standard of liberty in whatsoever place he did enter and gained whatsoever force he could in all his march towards the land of gideon and it came to pass that thousands did flock unto his standard and did take up their swords in the defence of their freedom that they might not come into bondage and thus when moroni had gathered together whatsoever men he could in all his march he came to the land of gideon and uniting his forces with those of pahoran they became exceedingly strong even stronger than the men of pacus who was the king of those dissenters who had driven the free men out of the land of zarahemla and had taken possession of the land and it came to pass that moroni and pahoran went down with their armies into the land of zarahemla and went forth against the city and did meet the men of pacus insomuch that they did come to battle and behold pacus was slain and his men were taken prisoners and pahoran was restored to his judgment seat and the men of pacus received their trial according to the law and also those king men who had been taken and cast into prison and they were executed according to the law yea those men of pacus and those king men whosoever would not take up arms in the defence of their country but would fight against it were put to death and thus it became expedient that this law should be strictly observed for the safety of their country yea and whosoever was found denying their freedom was speedily executed according to the law and thus ended the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi moroni and pahoran having restored peace to the land of zarahemla among their own people having inflicted death upon all those who were not true to the cause of freedom and it came to pass in the commencement of the thirty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi moroni immediately caused that provisions should be sent and also an army of six thousand men should be sent unto helaman to assist him in preserving that part of the land and he also caused that an army of six thousand men with a sufficient quantity of food should be sent to the armies of lehi and teancum and it came to pass that this was done to fortify the land against the lamanites and it came to pass that moroni and pahoran leaving a large body of men in the land of zarahemla took their march with a large body of men towards the land of nephihah being determined to overthrow the lamanites in that city and it came to pass that as they were marching towards the land they took a large body of men of the lamanites and slew many of them and took their provisions and their weapons of war and it came to pass after they had taken them they caused them to enter into a covenant that they would no more take up their weapons of war against the nephites and when they had entered into this covenant they sent them to dwell with the people of ammon and they were in number about four thousand who had not been slain and it came to pass that when they had sent them away they pursued their march towards the land of nephihah and it came to pass that when they had come to the city of nephihah they did pitch their tents in the plains of nephihah which is near the city of nephihah now moroni was desirous that the lamanites should come out to battle against them upon the plains but the lamanites knowing of their exceedingly great courage and beholding the greatness of their numbers therefore they durst not come out against them therefore they did not come to battle in that day and when the night came moroni went forth in the darkness of the night and came upon the top of the wall to spy out in what part of the city the lamanites did camp with their army 
and it came to pass that they were on the east by the entrance and they were all asleep and now moroni returned to his army and caused that they should prepare in haste strong cords and ladders to be let down from the top of the wall into the inner part of the wall and it came to pass that moroni caused that his men should march forth and come upon the top of the wall and let themselves down into that part of the city yea even on the west where the lamanites did not camp with their armies and it came to pass that they were all let down into the city by night by the means of their strong cords and their ladders thus when the morning came they were all within the walls of the city and now when the lamanites awoke and saw that the armies of moroni were within the walls they were affrighted exceedingly insomuch that they did flee out by the pass and now when moroni saw that they were fleeing before him he did cause that his men should march forth against them and slew many and surrounded many others and took them prisoners and the remainder of them fled into the land of moroni which was in the borders by the seashore thus had moroni and pahoran obtained the possession of the city of nephihah without the loss of one soul and there were many of the lamanites who were slain now it came to pass that many of the lamanites that were prisoners were desirous to join the people of ammon and become a free people and it came to pass that as many as were desirous unto them it was granted according to their desires therefore all the prisoners of the lamanites did join the people of ammon and did begin to labor exceedingly tilling the ground raising all manner of grain and flocks and herds of every kind and thus were the nephites relieved from a great burden yea insomuch that they were relieved from all the prisoners of the lamanites now it came to pass that moroni after he had obtained possession of the city of nephihah having taken many prisoners which did reduce the armies of the lamanites exceedingly and having regained many of the nephites who had been taken prisoners which did strengthen the army of moroni exceedingly therefore moroni went forth from the land of nephihah to the land of lehi and it came to pass that when the lamanites saw that moroni was coming against them they were again affrighted and fled before the army of moroni and it came to pass that moroni and his army did pursue them from city to city until they were met by lehi and teancum and the lamanites fled from lehi and teancum even down upon the borders by the seashore until they came to the land of moroni and the armies of the lamanites were all gathered together insomuch that they were all in one body in the land of moroni now Amoron, the king of the Lamanites, was also with them. And it came to pass that Moroni, and Lehi, and Teancum, did encamp with their armies round about in the borders of the land of Moroni, insomuch that the Lamanites were encircled about in the borders by the wilderness on the south, and in the borders by the wilderness on the east. And thus they did encamp for the night, for behold, the Nephites and the Lamanites also were weary because of the greatness of the march therefore they did not resolve upon any stratagem in the night-time save it were teancum for he was exceedingly angry with ammoron insomuch that he considered that ammoron and amalickiah his brother had been the cause of this great and lasting war between them and the lamanites which had been the cause of so much war and bloodshed yea and so much famine and it came to pass that teancum in his anger did go forth into the camp of the lamanites and did let himself down over the walls of the city and he went forth with a cord from place to place insomuch that he did find the king and he did cast a javelin at him which did pierce him near the heart but behold the king did awaken his servants before he died insomuch that they did pursue teancum and slew him now it came to pass that when lehi and moroni knew that teancum was dead they were exceedingly sorrowful for behold he had been a man who had fought valiantly for his country yea a true friend to liberty and he had suffered very many exceedingly sore afflictions but behold he was dead and had gone the way of all the earth now it came to pass that moroni marched forth on the morrow and came upon the lamanites insomuch that they did slay them with a great slaughter and they did drive them out of the land and they did flee even that they did not return at that time against the nephites and thus ended the thirty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and thus they had had wars and bloodsheds and famine and affliction for the space of many years and there had been murders and contentions and dissensions and all manner of iniquity among the people of nephi nevertheless for the righteous sake yea because of the prayers of the righteous they were spared 
but behold because of the exceedingly great length of the war between the nephites and the lamanites many had become hardened because of the exceedingly great length of the war and many were softened because of their afflictions insomuch that they did humble themselves before god even in the depth of humility and it came to pass that after moroni had fortified those parts of the land which were most exposed to the lamanites until they were sufficiently strong he returned to the city of zarahemla and also helaman returned to the place of his inheritance and there was once more peace established among the people of nephi and moroni yielded up the command of his armies into the hands of his son whose name was moronihah and he retired to his own house that he might spend the remainder of his days in peace and pahoran did return to his judgment seat and helaman did take upon him again to preach unto the people the word of god for because of so many great wars and contentions it had become expedient that a regulation should be made again in the church therefore helaman and his brethren went forth and did declare the word of god with much power unto the convincing of many people of their wickedness which did cause them to repent of their sins and to be baptized unto the lord their god and it came to pass that they did establish again the church of god throughout all the land yea and regulations were made concerning the law and their judges and their chief judges were chosen and the people of nephi began to prosper again in the land and began to multiply and to wax exceedingly strong again in the land and they began to grow exceedingly rich but notwithstanding their riches or their strength or their prosperity they were not lifted up in the pride of their eyes neither were they slow to remember the lord their god but they did humble themselves exceedingly before him yea they did remember how great things the lord had done for them that he had delivered them from death and from bonds and from prisons and from all manner of afflictions and he had delivered them out of the hands of their enemies and they did pray unto the lord their god continually insomuch that the lord did bless them according to his word so that they did wax strong and prosper in the land and it came to pass that all these things were done and helaman died in the thirty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi alma chapter sixty three and it came to pass in the commencement of the thirty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi that shiblon took possession of those sacred things which had been delivered unto helaman by alma and he was a just man and he did walk uprightly before god and he did observe to do good continually to keep the commandments of the lord his god and also did his brother and it came to pass that moroni died also and thus ended the thirty and sixth year of the reign of the judges and it came to pass that in the thirty and seventh year of the reign of the judges there was a large company of men even to the amount of five thousand and four hundred men with their wives and their children departed out of the land of zarahemla into the land which was northward and it came to pass that hagoth he being an exceedingly curious man therefore he went forth and built him an exceedingly large ship on the borders of the land bountiful by the land desolation and launched it forth into the west sea by the narrow neck which led into the land northward and behold there were many of the nephites who did enter therein and did sail forth with much provisions and also many women and children and they took their course northward and thus ended the thirty and seventh year and in the thirty and eighth year this man built other ships and the first ship did also return and many more people did enter into it and they also took much provisions and set out again to the land northward and it came to pass that they were never heard of more and we suppose that they were drowned in the depths of the sea and it came to pass that one other ship also did sail forth and whither she did go we know not and it came to pass that in this year there were many people who went forth into the land northward and thus ended the thirty and eighth year and it came to pass in the thirty and ninth year of the reign of the judges shiblon died also and corianton had gone forth to the land northward in a ship to carry forth provisions unto the people who had gone forth into that land therefore it became expedient for shiblon to confer those sacred things before his death upon the son of helaman who was called helaman being called after the name of his father now behold all those engravings which were in the possession of helaman were written and sent forth among the children of man throughout all the land save it were those parts which had been commanded by alma should not go forth nevertheless these things were to be kept sacred and handed down from one generation to another therefore in this year they had been conferred upon helaman before the death of shiblon 
And it came to pass also in this year that there were some dissenters who had gone forth unto the Lamanites, and they were stirred up again to anger against the Nephites. And also in this same year they came down with a numerous army to war against the people of Moronihah, or against the army of Moronihah, in the which they were beaten and driven back again to their own lands, suffering great loss. And thus ended the thirty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended the account of Alma, and Helaman his son, and also Shiblon, who was his son. End of Alma, chapters 59 through 63. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. Helaman, chapters 1 through 4 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Helaman, chapters 1 through 4. Helaman, chapter 1. And now, behold, it came to pass, in the commencement of the fortieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there began to be a serious difficulty among the people of the Nephites. For, behold, Pahoran had died, and gone the way of all the earth. Therefore there began to be a serious contention concerning who should have the judgment seat among the brethren who were the sons of Pahoran. Now these are their names who did contend for the judgment seat, who did also cause the people to contend. Pahoran, Peankai, and Pecumenai. Now these are not all the sons of Pahoran, for he had many, but these are they who did contend for the judgment seat. Therefore they did cause three divisions among the people. Nevertheless it came to pass that Pahoran was appointed by the voice of the people to be chief judge and a governor over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that Pecumenai, when he saw that he could not obtain the judgment seat, he did unite with the voice of the people. But behold, Peonkai, and that part of the people that were desirous that he should be their governor, was exceedingly wroth. Therefore he was about to flatter away those people to rise up in rebellion against their brethren. And it came to pass, as he was about to do this, behold, he was taken and was tried according to the voice of the people, and condemned unto death. For he had raised up in rebellion, and sought to destroy the liberty of the people. Now when those people who were desirous that he should be their governor saw that he was condemned unto death, therefore they were angry, and behold, they sent forth one Kishkuman, even to the judgment seat of Pahoran, and murdered Pahoran as he sat upon the judgment seat. And he was pursued by the servants of Pahoran, but behold, so speedy was the flight of Kishkuman that no man could overtake him. And he went unto those that sent him, and they all entered into a covenant, yea, swearing by their everlasting maker that they would tell no man that kishkumen had murdered pahoran therefore kishkumen was not known among the people of nephi for he was in disguise at the time that he murdered pahoran and kishkumen and his band who had covenanted with him did mingle themselves among the people in a manner that they all could not be found but as many as were found were condemned unto death and now behold, Pecumenai was appointed according to the voice of the people to be a chief judge and a governor over the people, to reign in the stead of his brother Pahoran, and it was according to his right. And all this was done in the fortieth year of the reign of the judges, and it had an end. And it came to pass in the forty and first year of the reign of the judges that the Lamanites had gathered together an innumerable army of men and armed them with swords and with scimitars and with bows and with arrows and with headplates and with breastplates and with all manner of shields of every kind. And they came down again that they might pitch battle against the Nephites, and they were led by a man whose name was Coriantumr, and he was a descendant of Zarahemla, and he was a dissenter from among the Nephites, and he was a large and a mighty man. Therefore the king of the Lamanites, whose name was Tubaloth, who was the son of Amaron, supposing that Coriantumr, being a mighty man, could stand against the Nephites, with his strength and also with his great wisdom, insomuch that by sending him forth he should gain power over the Nephites, therefore he did stir them up to anger, and he did gather together his armies, and he did appoint Coriantumr to be their leader, and did cause that they should march down to the land of Zarahemla to battle against the Nephites. 
and it came to pass that because of so much contention and so much difficulty in the government that they had not kept sufficient guards in the land of zarahemla for they had supposed that the lamanites durst not come into the heart of their lands to attack that great city zarahemla but it came to pass that coriantumr did march forth at the head of his numerous host and came upon the inhabitants of the city and their march was with such exceedingly great speed that there was no time for the nephites to gather together their armies therefore coriantumr did cut down the watch by the entrance of the city and did march forth with his whole army into the city and they did slay every one who did oppose them insomuch that they did take possession of the whole city and it came to pass that pecumeni who was the chief judge did flee before coriantumr even to the walls of the city and it came to pass that coriantumr did smite him against the wall insomuch that he died and thus ended the days of pecumeni and now when coriantumr saw that he was in possession of the city of zarahemla and saw that the nephites had fled before them and were slain and were taken and were cast into prison and that he had obtained the possession of the strongest hold in all the land his heart took courage insomuch that he was about to go forth against all the land and now he did not tarry in the land of zarahemla but he did march forth with a large army even towards the city of bountiful for it was his determination to go forth and cut his way through with the sword that he might obtain the north parts of the land and supposing that their greatest strength was in the center of the land therefore he did march forth giving them no time to assemble themselves together save it were in small bodies and in this manner they did fall upon them and cut them down to the earth but behold this march of coriantumr through the center of the land gave moronihah great advantage over them notwithstanding the greatness of the number of the nephites who were slain for behold moronihah had supposed that the lamanites durst not come into the center of the land but that they would attack the cities round about in the borders as they had hitherto done therefore moronihah had caused that their strong armies should maintain those parts round about by the borders but behold the lamanites were not frightened according to his desire but they had come into the centre of the land and had taken the capital city which was the city of zarahemla and were marching through the most capital parts of the land slaying the people with a great slaughter both men women and children taking possession of many cities and of many strongholds but when moronihah had discovered this he immediately sent forth lehi with an army round about to head them before they should come to the land bountiful and thus he did and he did head them before they came to the land bountiful and gave unto them battle insomuch that they began to retreat back towards the land of zarahemla and it came to pass that moronihah did head them in their retreat and did give unto them battle insomuch that it became an exceedingly bloody battle yea many were slain and among the people who were slain coriantumr was also found and now behold the lamanites could not retreat either way neither on the north nor on the south nor on the east nor on the west for they were surrounded on every hand by the nephites and thus had coriantumr plunged the lamanites into the midst of the nephites insomuch that they were in the power of the nephites and he himself was slain and the lamanites did yield themselves up into the hands of the nephites and it came to pass that moronihah took possession of the city of zarahemla again and caused that the lamanites who had been taken prisoners should depart out of the land in peace and thus ended the forty and first year of the reign of the judges helaman chapter two and it came to pass in the forty and second year of the reign of the judges after moronihah had established again peace between the nephites and the lamanites behold there was no one to fill the judgment seat therefore there began to be a contention again among the people concerning who should fill the judgment seat and it came to pass that helaman who was the son of helaman was appointed to fill the judgment seat by the voice of the people but behold kishkumen who had murdered pahoran did lay wait to destroy helaman also and he was upheld by his band who had entered into a covenant that no one should know his wickedness for there was one gadianton who was exceedingly expert in many words and also in his craft to carry on the secret work of murder and of robbery therefore he became the leader of the band of kishkumen therefore he did flatter them and also kishkumen that if they would place him in the judgment seat he would grant unto those who belonged to his band that they should be placed in power and authority among the people therefore kishkumen sought to destroy helaman and it came to pass 
as he went forth towards the judgment seat to destroy Helaman, behold, one of the servants of Helaman, having been out by night, and having obtained through disguise a knowledge of those plans which had been laid by this band to destroy Helaman, and it came to pass that he met Kishkumen, and he gave unto him a sign. Therefore Kishkumen made known unto him the object of his desire, desiring that he would conduct him to the judgment seat that he might murder Helaman. And when the servant of Helaman had known all the heart of Kishkumen, and how that it was his object to murder, and also that it was the object of all those who belonged to his band to murder, and to rob, and to gain power, and this was their secret plan, and their combination, the servant of Helaman said unto Kishkumen, Let us go forth unto the judgment seat. Now this did please Kishkumen exceedingly, for he did suppose that he should accomplish his design. But behold, the servant of Helaman, as they were going forth unto the judgment seat, did stab Kishkumen even to the heart, that he fell dead without a groan. And he ran and told Helaman all the things which he had seen and heard and done. And it came to pass that Helaman did send forth to take this band of robbers and secret murderers, that they might be executed according to the law. But behold, when Gadianton had found that Kishkumen did not return, he feared lest that he should be destroyed. Therefore he caused that his band should follow him, and they took their flight out of the land by a secret way into the wilderness. And thus, when Helaman sent forth to take them, they could nowhere be found. And more of this Gadianton shall be spoken hereafter. And thus ended the forty and second year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And behold, in the end of this book ye shall see that this Gadianton did prove the overthrow, yea, almost the entire destruction of the people of Nephi. Behold, I do not mean the end of the book of Helaman, but I mean the end of the book of Nephi, from which I have taken all the account which I have written. Helaman chapter 3 And now it came to pass in the forty and third year of the reign of the judges, there was no contention among the people of Nephi, save it were a little pride which was in the church, which did cause some little dissensions among the people, which affairs were settled in the ending of the forty and third year. And there was no contention among the people in the forty and fourth year, neither was there much contention in the forty and fifth year. And it came to pass in the forty and sixth year, yea, there was much contention and many dissensions, in the which there were an exceedingly great many who departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and went forth unto the land northward to inherit the land. And they did travel to an exceedingly great distance, insomuch that they came to large bodies of water and many rivers. Yea, and even they did spread forth into all parts of the land, into whatever parts of it had not been rendered desolate and without timber, because of the many inhabitants who had before inherited the land. And now no part of the land was desolate, save it were for timber, but because of the greatness of the destruction of the people who had before inhabited the land it was called desolate. And there being but little timber upon the face of the land, nevertheless the people who went forth became exceedingly expert in the working of cement. Therefore they did build houses of cement, in the which they did dwell. And it came to pass that they did multiply and spread, and did go forth from the land southward to the land northward, and did spread insomuch that they began to cover the face of the whole earth, from the sea south to the sea north, from the sea west to the sea east. And the people who were in the land northward did dwell in tents and in houses of cement, and they did suffer whatsoever tree should spring up upon the face of the land, that it should grow up, that in time they might have timber to build their houses, yea, their cities, and their temples, and their synagogues, and their sanctuaries, and all manner of their buildings. And it came to pass, as timber was exceedingly scarce in the land northward, they did send forth much by the way of shipping. And thus they did enable the people in the land northward that they might build many cities, both of wood and of cement. And it came to pass that there were many of the people of Ammon, who were Lamanites by birth, did also go forth into this land. And now there are many records kept of the proceedings of this people by many of this people which are particular and very large concerning them. But behold, a hundredth part of the proceedings of this people, yea, the account of the Lamanites and of the Nephites and their wars and contentions and dissensions and their preaching and their prophecies and their shipping and their building of ships and their building of temples and of synagogues and their sanctuaries and their righteousness and their wickedness 
and their murders, and their robbings, and their plundering, and all manner of abominations and whoredoms, cannot be contained in this work. But behold, there are many books and many records of every kind, and they have been kept chiefly by the Nephites. And they have been handed down from one generation to another by the Nephites, even until they have fallen into transgression, and have been murdered, plundered, and hunted, and driven forth, and slain, and scattered upon the face of the earth, and mixed with the Lamanites until they are no more called the Nephites, becoming wicked and wild and ferocious, yea, even becoming Lamanites. And now I return again to mine account. Therefore what I have spoken had passed after there had been great contentions and disturbances and wars and dissensions among the people of Nephi. The forty and sixth year of the reign of the judges ended. And it came to pass that there was still great contention in the land, yea, even in the forty and seventh year, and also in the forty and eighth year. Nevertheless, Helaman did fill the judgment seat with justice and equity. Yea, he did observe to keep the statutes and the judgments and the commandments of God. And he did do that which was right in the sight of God continually. And he did walk after the ways of his father, insomuch that he did prosper in the land. And it came to pass that he had two sons. He gave unto the eldest the name of Nephi, and unto the youngest the name of Lehi, and they began to grow up unto the Lord. And it came to pass that the wars and contentions began to cease in a small degree among the people of the Nephites in the latter end of the forty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the forty and ninth year of the reign of the judges there was continual peace established in the land, all save it were the secret combinations which Gadianton the robber had established in the more settled parts of the land, which at that time were not known unto those who were at the head of government. Therefore they were not destroyed out of the land. And it came to pass that in this same year there was exceedingly great prosperity in the church, insomuch that there were thousands who did join themselves unto the church and were baptized unto repentance. And so great was the prosperity of the church, and so many the blessings which were poured out upon the people, that even the high priests and the teachers were themselves astonished beyond measure. And it came to pass that the work of the Lord did prosper unto the baptizing and uniting to the church of God many souls, yea, even tens of thousands. Thus we see that the Lord is merciful unto all who will, in the sincerity of their hearts, call upon his holy name. Yea, thus we see that the gate of heaven is open unto all, even to those who will believe on the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. Yea, we see that whosoever will may lay hold upon the word of God, which is quick and powerful which shall divide asunder all the cunning and the snares and the wiles of the devil, and lead the man of Christ in a straight and narrow course across that everlasting gulf of misery which is prepared to engulf the wicked, and land their souls, yea, their immortal souls, at the right hand of God in the kingdom of heaven, to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob and with all our holy fathers to go no more out. And in this year, there was continual rejoicing in the land of Zarahemla, and in all the regions round about, even in all the land which was possessed by the Nephites. And it came to pass that there was peace and exceedingly great joy in the remainder of the forty and ninth year. Yea, and also there was continual peace and great joy in the fiftieth year of the reign of the judges. And in the fifty and first year of the reign of the judges there was peace also, save it were the pride which began to enter into the church, not into the church of God, but into the hearts of the people who professed to belong to the church of God. And they were lifted up in pride, even to the persecution of many of their brethren. Now this was a great evil, which did cause the more humble part of the people to suffer great persecutions, and to wade through much affliction. Nevertheless they did fast and pray oft, and did wax stronger and stronger in their humility, and firmer and firmer in the faith of Christ unto the filling their souls with joy and consolation, yea, even to the purifying and the sanctification of their hearts, which sanctification cometh because of their yielding their hearts unto God. And it came to pass that the fifty and second year ended in peace also, save it were the exceedingly great pride which had gotten into the hearts of the people, and it was because of their exceedingly great riches and their prosperity in the land, and it did grow upon them from day to day. 
And it came to pass in the fifty and third year of the reign of the judges Helaman died, and his eldest son Nephi began to reign in his stead. And it came to pass that he did fill the judgment seat with justice and equity. Yea, he did keep the commandments of God, and did walk in the ways of his father. Helaman chapter 4 And it came to pass in the fifty and fourth year, there were many dissensions in the church, and there was also a contention among the people, insomuch that there was much bloodshed. And the rebellious part were slain and driven out of the land, and they did go unto the king of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did endeavor to stir up the Lamanites to war against the Nephites, but behold, the Lamanites were exceedingly afraid, insomuch that they would not hearken to the words of those dissenters. But it came to pass in the fifty and sixth year of the reign of the judges, there were dissenters who went up from the Nephites unto the Lamanites, and they succeeded with those others in stirring them up to anger against the Nephites, and they were all that year preparing for war. And in the fifty and seventh year they did come down against the Nephites to battle, and they did commence the work of death, yea, insomuch that in the fifty and eighth year of the reign of the judges they succeeded in obtaining possession of the land of Zarahemla, yea, and also all the lands, even unto the land which was near the land bountiful. And the Nephites and the armies of Moronihah were driven even into the land of bountiful. And they did fortify against the Lamanites from the west sea even unto the east, it being a day's journey for a Nephite, on the line which they had fortified and stationed their armies to defend their north country. And thus those dissenters of the Nephites, with the help of a numerous army of the Lamanites, had obtained all the possession of the Nephites, which was in the land southward. And all this was done in the fifty and eighth and ninth years of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass in the sixtieth year of the reign of the judges, Moronihah did succeed with his armies in obtaining many parts of the land. Yea, they regained many cities which had fallen into the hands of the Lamanites. And it came to pass in the sixty and first year of the reign of the judges, they succeeded in regaining even the half of all their possessions. Now this great loss of the Nephites and the great slaughter which was among them would not have happened had it not been for their wickedness and their abomination which was among them yea and it was among those also who professed to belong to the church of god and it was because of the pride of their hearts because of their exceeding riches yea it was because of their oppression to the poor withholding their food from the hungry withholding their clothing from the naked and smiting their humble brethren upon the cheek making a mock of that which was sacred denying the spirit of prophecy and of revelation murdering plundering lying stealing committing adultery rising up in great contentions, and deserting away into the land of Nephi among the Lamanites. And because of their great wickedness, and their boastings in their own strength, they were left in their own strength. Therefore they did not prosper, but were afflicted and smitten, and driven before the Lamanites, until they had lost possession of almost all their lands. But behold, Moronihah did preach many things unto the people because of their iniquity, and also Nephi and Lehi, who were the sons of Helaman, did preach many things unto the people, yea, and did prophesy many things unto them concerning their iniquities, and what should come unto them if they did not repent of their sins. And it came to pass that they did repent, and inasmuch as they did repent, they did begin to prosper. For when Moronihah saw that they did repent, he did venture to lead them forth from place to place and from city to city, even until they had regained the one half of their property and the one half of all their lands. And thus ended the sixty and first year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass in the sixty and second year of the reign of the judges that Moronihah could obtain no more possessions over the Lamanites. Therefore they did abandon their design to obtain the remainder of their lands, for so numerous were the Lamanites that it became impossible for the Nephites to obtain more power over them. Therefore Moronihah did employ all his armies in maintaining those parts which he had taken. And it came to pass, because of the greatness of the number of the Lamanites, the Nephites were in great fear, lest they should be overpowered and trodden down and slain and destroyed. Yea, they began to remember the prophecies of Alma, and also the words of Mosiah, and they saw that they had been a stiff-necked people, and that they had set at naught the commandments of God, and that they had altered and trampled under their feet the laws of Mosiah, or that which the Lord commanded him to give unto the people. And they saw that their laws had become corrupted, and that they had become a wicked people, insomuch that they were wicked, even like unto the Lamanites. 
and because of their iniquity the church had begun to dwindle and they began to disbelieve in the spirit of prophecy and in the spirit of revelation and the judgments of god did stare them in the face and they saw that they had become weak like unto their brethren the lamanites and that the spirit of the lord did no more preserve them yea it had withdrawn from them because the spirit of the lord doth not dwell in unholy temples therefore the lord did cease to preserve them by his miraculous and matchless power for they had fallen into a state of unbelief and awful wickedness and they saw that the lamanites were exceedingly more numerous than they and except they should cleave unto the lord their god they must unavoidably perish for behold they saw that the strength of the lamanites was as great as their strength even man for man and thus had they fallen into this great transgression yea thus had they become weak because of their transgression in the space of not many years End of Helaman chapters 1 through 4. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. Helaman chapters 5 through 7 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Helaman, chapters 5 through 7. Helaman, chapter 5. And it came to pass that in this same year, behold, Nephi delivered up the judgment seat to a man whose name was Sizoram. For as their laws and their governments were established by the voice of the people, and they who chose evil were more numerous than they who chose good, therefore they were ripening for destruction for the laws had become corrupted yea and this was not all they were a stiff-necked people insomuch that they could not be governed by the law nor justice save it were to their destruction and it came to pass that nephi had become weary because of their iniquity and he yielded up the judgment seat and took it upon him to preach the word of god all the remainder of his days and his brother lehi also all the remainder of his days for they remembered the words which their father Helaman spake unto them, and these are the words which he spake. Behold, my sons, I desire that ye should remember to keep the commandments of God, and I would that ye should declare unto the people these words. Behold, I have given unto you the names of our first parents, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, and this I have done, that when you remember your names, ye may remember them, and when ye remember them, ye may remember their works, and when ye remember their works, ye may know how that it is said, and also written, that they were good. Therefore, my sons, I would that ye should do that which is good, that it may be said of you, and also written, even as it has been said and written of them. And now, my sons, behold, I have somewhat more to desire of you, which desire is, that ye may not do these things that ye may boast but that ye may do these things, to lay up for yourselves a treasure in heaven, yea, which is eternal, and which fadeth not away, yea, that ye may have that precious gift of eternal life, which we have reason to suppose hath been given to our fathers. O oh, remember, remember, my sons, the words which King Benjamin spake unto his people. Yea, remember that there is no other way, nor means whereby man can be saved, only through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ who shall come. Yea, remember that he cometh to redeem the world. And remember also the words which Amulek spake unto Zeezrom in the city of Ammonihah. For he said unto him that the Lord surely should come to redeem his people, but that he should not come to redeem them in their sins, but to redeem them from their sins. And he hath power given unto him from the Father to redeem them from their sins because of repentance, Therefore he hath sent his angels to declare the tidings of the conditions of repentance, which bringeth unto the power of the Redeemer, unto the salvation of their souls. And now, my sons, remember, remember that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation, that when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, Yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe, because of the rock upon which ye are built. 
which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. And it came to pass that these were the words which Helaman taught to his sons. Yea, he did teach them many things which are not written, and also many things which are written. And they did remember his words. And therefore they went forth, keeping the commandments of God, to teach the word of God among all the people of Nephi, beginning at the city Bountiful. And from thenceforth to the city of Gid, and from the city of Gid to the city of Mulek, and even from one city to another, until they had gone forth among all the people of Nephi, who were in the land southward, and from thence into the land of Zarahemla among the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did preach with great power, insomuch that they did confound many of those dissenters who had gone over from the Nephites, insomuch that they came forth, and did confess their sins, and were baptized unto repentance, and immediately returned to the Nephites, to endeavor to repair unto them the wrongs which they had done. And it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi did preach unto the Lamanites with such great power and authority, for they had power and authority given unto them that they might speak, and they also had what they should speak given unto them. Therefore they did speak unto the great astonishment of the Lamanites, to the convincing them, insomuch that there were eight thousand of the Lamanites who were in the land of Zarahemla and round about baptized unto repentance and were convinced of the wickedness of the traditions of their fathers. And it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi did proceed from thence to go to the land of Nephi. And it came to pass that they were taken by an army of the Lamanites and cast into prison, yea, even in that same prison in which Ammon and his brethren were cast by the servants of Limhi. And after they had been cast into prison many days without food, behold, they went forth into the prison to take them, that they might slay them. And it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi were encircled about as if by fire, even insomuch that they durst not lay their hands upon them for fear lest they should be burned. Nevertheless, Nephi and Lehi were not burned, and they were as standing in the midst of fire, and were not burned. And when they saw that they were encircled about with a pillar of fire, and that it burned them not, their hearts did take courage. For they saw that the Lamanites durst not lay their hands upon them, neither durst they come near unto them, but stood as if they were struck dumb with amazement. And it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi did stand forth and began to speak unto them, saying, Fear not, for behold it is God that has shown unto you this marvelous thing, in the which is shown unto you that ye cannot lay your hands on us to slay us. And behold, when they had said these words, the earth shook exceedingly, and the walls of the prison did shake, as if they were about to tumble to the earth. But behold, they did not fall. And behold, they that were in the prison were Lamanites and Nephites who were dissenters. And it came to pass that they were overshadowed with a cloud of darkness, and an awful, solemn fear came upon them, and it came to pass that there came a voice, as if it were above the cloud of darkness, saying, Repent ye, repent ye, and seek no more to destroy my servants, whom I have sent unto you to declare good tidings. And it came to pass that when they heard this voice, and beheld that it was not a voice of thunder, neither was it a voice of a great tumultuous noise, but behold, it was a still voice of perfect mildness, as if it had been a whisper, and it did pierce even to the very soul. And notwithstanding the mildness of the voice, behold, the earth shook exceedingly, and the walls of the prison trembled again, as if it were about to tumble to the earth. And behold, the cloud of darkness which had overshadowed them did not disperse. And behold, the voice came again, saying, Repent ye, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and seek no more to destroy my servants. And it came to pass that the earth shook again, and the walls trembled. And also again the third time the voice came, and did speak unto them marvelous words which cannot be uttered by man. And the walls did tremble again, and the earth shook as if it were about to divide asunder. And it came to pass that the Lamanites could not flee because of the cloud of darkness which did overshadow them, Yea, and also they were immovable because of the fear which did come upon them. Now there was one among them who was a Nephite by birth, who had once belonged to the church of God, but had dissented from them. 
and it came to pass that he turned him about, and, behold, he saw through the cloud of darkness the faces of Nephi and Lehi, and, behold, they did shine exceedingly, even as the faces of angels, and he beheld that they did lift their eyes to heaven, and they were in the attitude, as if talking or lifting their voices to some being whom they beheld. And it came to pass that this man did cry unto the multitude that they might turn and look, and behold there was power given unto them that they did turn and look, and they did behold the faces of Nephi and Lehi. And they said unto the man, Behold, what do all these things mean? And who is it with whom these men do converse? Now the man's name was Aminadab, and Aminadab said unto them, They do converse with the angels of God. And it came to pass that the Lamanites said unto him, What shall we do that this cloud of darkness may be removed from overshadowing us? And Aminadab said unto them, You must repent, and cry unto the voice, even until ye shall have faith in Christ, who was taught unto you by Alma and Amulek and Azizram. And when ye shall do this, the cloud of darkness shall be removed from overshadowing you. And it came to pass that they all did begin to cry unto the voice of him who had shaken the earth. Yea, they did cry even until the cloud of darkness was dispersed. And it came to pass that when they cast their eyes about, and saw that the cloud of darkness was dispersed from overshadowing them, behold, that they saw that they were encircled about, yea, every soul, by a pillar of fire. And Nephi and Lehi were in the midst of them, yea, they were encircled about, yea, they were as if in the midst of a flaming fire, yet it did harm them not, neither did it take hold upon the walls of the prison, and they were filled with that joy which is unspeakable and full of glory. And behold, the Holy Spirit of God did come down from heaven, and did enter into their hearts, and they were filled as if with fire, and they could speak forth marvelous words. And it came to pass that there came a voice unto them, yea, a pleasant voice, as if it were a whisper, saying, Peace, peace be unto you, because of your faith in my well-beloved, who was from the foundation of the world. And now when they heard this, they cast up their eyes, as if to behold from whence the voice came. And behold, they saw the heavens open, and angels came down out of heaven and ministered unto them. And there were about three hundred souls who saw and heard these things, and they were bidden to go forth and marvel not, neither should they doubt. And it came to pass that they did go forth and did minister unto the people, declaring throughout all the regions round about all the things which they had heard and seen insomuch that the more part of the Lamanites were convinced of them, because of the greatness of the evidences which they had received. And as many as were convinced did lay down their weapons of war, and also their hatred and the tradition of their fathers. And it came to pass that they did yield up unto the Nephites the lands of their possession. Helaman chapter 6 And it came to pass that when the sixty and second year of the reign of the judges had ended, all these things had happened, and the Lamanites had become, the more part of them, a righteous people, insomuch that their righteousness did exceed that of the Nephites, because of their firmness and their steadiness in the faith. For behold, there were many of the Nephites who had become hardened, and impenitent, and grossly wicked, insomuch that they did reject the word of God, and all the preaching and prophesying which did come among them. Nevertheless, the people of the church did have great joy because of the conversion of the Lamanites, yea, because of the church of God which had been established among them, and they did fellowship one with another, and did rejoice one with another, and did have great joy. And it came to pass that many of the Lamanites did come down into the land of Zarahemla, and did declare unto the people of the Nephites the manner of their conversion, and did exhort them to faith and repentance. Yea, and many did preach with exceedingly great power and authority unto the bringing down many of them into the depths of humility, to be the humble followers of God and the Lamb. And it came to pass that many of the Lamanites did go into the land northward, and also Nephi and Lehi went into the land northward, to preach unto the people, and thus ended the sixty and third year. And behold, there was peace in all the land insomuch that the Nephites did go into whatsoever part of the land they would, 
whether among the Nephites or the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did also go whithersoever they would, whether it were among the Lamanites or among the Nephites. And thus they did have free intercourse one with another, to buy and to sell and to get gain according to their desire. And it came to pass that they became exceedingly rich, both the Lamanites and the Nephites. And they did have an exceeding plenty of gold and of silver, and of all manner of precious metals, both in the land south and in the land north. And the land south was called Lehi, and the land north was called Mulek, which was after the son of Zedekiah, for the Lord did bring Mulek into the land north, and Lehi into the land south. And behold, there was all manner of gold in both these lands, and of silver, and of precious ore of every kind. And there were also curious workmen, who did work all kinds of ore, and did refine it, and thus they did become rich. They did raise grain in abundance, both in the north and in the south, and they did flourish exceedingly, both in the north and in the south. And they did multiply and wax exceedingly strong in the land. And they did raise many flocks and herds, yea, many fatlings. Behold, their women did toil and spin, and did make all manner of cloth, of fine twined linen, and cloth of every kind, to clothe their nakedness. And thus the sixty and fourth year did pass away in peace. And in the sixty and fifth year they did also have great joy and peace, yea, much preaching and many prophecies concerning that which was to come. And thus passed away the sixty and fifth year. And it came to pass that in the sixty and sixth year of the reign of the judges, behold, Sezoram was murdered by an unknown hand as he sat upon the judgment seat. And it came to pass that in the same year that his son, who had been appointed by the people in his stead, was also murdered, and thus ended the sixty and sixth year. And in the commencement of the sixty and seventh year the people began to grow exceedingly wicked again. For behold, the Lord had blessed them so long with the riches of the world that they had not been stirred up to anger, to wars, nor to bloodshed. Therefore they began to set their hearts upon their riches. Yea, they began to seek to get gain, that they might be lifted up one above another. Therefore they began to commit secret murders, and to rob and to plunder that they might get gain. And now behold, those murderers and plunderers were a band who had been formed by Kishkumen and Gadianton. And now it had come to pass that there were many, even among the Nephites of Gadianton's band. But behold, they were more numerous among the more wicked part of the Lamanites, and they were called Gadianton's robbers and murderers. And it was they who did murder the chief judge Sezoram and his son while in the judgment seat, and behold, they were not found. And now it came to pass that when the Lamanites found that there were robbers among them, they were exceedingly sorrowful, and they did use every means in their power to destroy them off the face of the earth. But behold, Satan did stir up the hearts of the more part of the Nephites, insomuch that they did unite with those bands of robbers, and did enter into their covenants and their oaths, that they would protect and preserve one another, in whatsoever difficult circumstances they should be placed that they should not suffer for their murders and their plunderings and their stealings. And it came to pass that they did have their signs, yea, their secret signs and their secret words, and this that they might distinguish a brother who had entered into the covenant, that whatsoever wickedness his brother should do, he should not be injured by his brother, nor by those who did belong to his band who had taken this covenant. And thus they might murder and plunder and steal and commit whoredoms, and all manner of wickedness, contrary to the laws of their country, and also the laws of their God. And whosoever of those who belong to their band should reveal unto the world of their wickedness and their abominations should be tried, not according to the laws of their country, but according to the laws of their wickedness, which had been given by Gadianton and Kishkumen. Now behold, it is these secret oaths and covenants which Alma commanded his son should not go forth unto the world lest they should be a means of bringing down the people unto destruction. Now behold, those secret oaths and covenants did not come forth unto Gadianton from the records which were delivered unto Helaman, but behold, they were put into the heart of Gadianton by that same being who did entice our first parents to partake of the forbidden fruit, yea, that same being who did plot with Cain, that if he would murder his brother Abel, it should not be known unto the world and he did plot with Cain and his followers from that time forth. And also it is that same being who put it into the hearts of the people to build a tower sufficiently high that they might get to heaven. 
and it was that same being who led on the people who came from that tower into this land who spread the works of darkness and abominations over all the face of the land until he dragged the people down to an entire destruction and to an everlasting hell yea it is that same being who put it into the heart of gadianton to still carry on the work of darkness and of secret murder and he has brought it forth from the beginning of man even down to this time and behold it is he who is the author of all sin and behold he doth carry on his works of darkness and secret murder and doth hand down their plots and their oaths and their covenants and their plans of awful wickedness from generation to generation according as he can get hold upon the hearts of the children of men and now behold he had got great hold upon the hearts of the nephites yea insomuch that they had become exceedingly wicked yea the more part of them had turned out of the way of righteousness and did trample under their feet the commandments of god and did turn unto their own ways and did build up unto themselves idols of their gold and their silver and it came to pass that all these iniquities did come unto them in the space of not many years, insomuch that a more part of it had come unto them in the sixty and seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And they did grow in their iniquities in the sixty and eighth year also. And thus we see that the Nephites did begin to dwindle in unbelief, and grow in wickedness and abominations, while the Lamanites began to grow exceedingly in the knowledge of their God, yea they did begin to keep his statutes and commandments and to walk in truth and uprightness before him and thus we see that the spirit of the lord began to withdraw from the nephites because of the wickedness and the hardness of their hearts and thus we see that the lord began to pour out his spirit upon the lamanites because of their easiness and willingness to believe in his words and it came to pass that the lamanites did hunt the band of robbers of gadianton and they did preach the word of god among the more wicked part of them insomuch that this band of robbers was utterly destroyed from among the lamanites and it came to pass on the other hand that the nephites did build them up and support them beginning at the more wicked part of them until they had overspread all the land of the nephites and had seduced the more part of the righteous until they had come down to believe in their works and partake of their spoils and to join with them in their secret murders and combinations and thus they did obtain the sole management of the government insomuch that they did trample under their feet and smite and rend and turn their backs upon the poor and the meek and the humble followers of god and thus we see that they were in an awful state and ripening for an everlasting destruction and it came to pass that thus ended the sixty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi helaman chapter seven behold now it came to pass in the sixty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of the nephites that nephi the son of helaman returned to the land of zarahemla from the land northward for he had been forth among the people who were in the land northward and did preach the word of god unto them and did prophesy many things unto them and they did reject all his words insomuch that he could not stay among them but returned again unto the land of his nativity and seeing the people in a state of such awful wickedness and those gadianton robbers filling the judgment seats having usurped the power and authority of the land laying aside the commandments of god and not in the least right before him doing no justice unto the children of men condemning the righteous because of their righteousness letting the guilty and the wicked go unpunished because of their money and moreover to be held in office at the head of government to rule and to do according to their wills that they might get gain and glory of the world and moreover that they might the more easily commit adultery and steal and kill and do according to their own wills now this great iniquity had come upon the nephites in the space of not many years and when nephi saw it his heart was swollen with sorrow within his breast and he did exclaim in the agony of his soul oh that i could have had my days in the days when my father nephi first came out of the land of jerusalem that i could have joyed with him in the promised land then were his people easy to be entreated firm to keep the commandments of god and slow to be led to do iniquity and they were quick to hearken unto the words of the lord yea if my days could have been in those days then would my soul have had joy in the righteousness of my brethren but behold i am consigned that these are my days 
and that my soul shall be filled with sorrow because of this the wickedness of my brethren. And behold, now it came to pass that it was upon a tower which was in the garden of Nephi, which was in the highway which led to the chief market, which was in the city of Zarahemla. Therefore Nephi had bowed himself upon the tower which was in his garden, which tower was also near unto the garden gate by which led the highway. And it came to pass that there were certain men passing by, and saw Nephi as he was pouring out his soul unto God upon the tower. And they ran and told the people what they had seen, and the people came together in multitudes, that they might know the cause of so great mourning for the wickedness of the people. And now when Nephi arose, he beheld the multitudes of people who had gathered together. And it came to pass that he opened his mouth and said unto them, Behold, why have ye gathered yourselves together, that I may tell you of your iniquities? Yea, because I have got upon my tower, that I might pour out my soul unto my God, because of the exceeding sorrow of my heart, which is because of your iniquities. And because of my mourning and lamentation ye have gathered yourselves together, and do marvel. Yea, and ye have great need to marvel. Yea, ye ought to marvel, because ye are given away, that the devil has got so great hold upon your hearts. Yea, how could you have given way to the enticing of him who is seeking to hurl away your souls down to everlasting misery and endless woe? O oh, repent ye, repent ye, why will ye die? Turn ye, turn ye unto the Lord your God. Why has he forsaken you? It is because you have hardened your hearts. Yea, ye will not hearken unto the voice of the good shepherd. Yea, ye have provoked him to anger against you. And behold, instead of gathering you, except ye will repent, behold, he shall scatter you forth, that ye shall become meat for dogs and wild beasts. Oh, how could you have forgotten your God in the very day that he has delivered you? But, behold, it is to get gain, to be praised of men, yea, and that ye might get gold and silver. And ye have set your hearts upon the riches and the vain things of this world, for the which ye do murder, and plunder, and steal, and bear false witness against your neighbor, and do all manner of iniquity. And for this cause woe shall come unto you, except ye shall repent. For if ye will not repent, behold, this great city, and also all those great cities which are round about, which are in the land of your possession, shall be taken away, that ye shall have no place in them. For behold, the Lord will not grant unto you strength, as he has hitherto done, to withstand against your enemies. For behold, thus saith the Lord, I will not show unto the wicked of my strength to one more than the other, save it be unto those that repent of their sins and hearken unto my words. Now therefore I would that ye should behold my brethren, that it shall be better for the Lamanites than for you, except ye shall repent. For behold, they are more righteous than you, for they have not sinned against that great knowledge which ye have received. Therefore the Lord will be merciful unto them, yea, he will lengthen out their days and increase their seed, even when thou shalt be utterly destroyed, except thou shalt repent. Yea, woe be unto you, because of that great abomination which has come among you, and ye have united yourselves unto it, yea, to that secret band which was established by Gadianton. Yea, woe shall come unto you because of that pride which ye have suffered to enter your hearts, which has lifted you up beyond that which is good because of your exceedingly great riches. Yea, woe be unto you because of your wickedness and abominations, and except ye repent ye shall perish, yea, even your land shall be taken from you and ye shall be destroyed from off the face of the earth. Behold, now I do not say that these things shall be of myself, because it is not of myself that I know these things. But behold, I know that these things are true, because the Lord God has made them known unto me. Therefore I testify that they shall be. End of Helaman chapters 5 through 7 Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah Please visit at hesmes.blogspot.com. Helaman, chapters 8 through 11 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. 
For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Helaman, chapters 8 through 11. Helaman, chapter 8. And now it came to pass that when Nephi had said these words, behold, there were men who were judges, who also belonged to the secret band of Gadianton, and they were angry, and they cried out against him, saying unto the people, Why do ye not seize upon this man, and bring him forth, that he may be condemned according to the crime which he has done? Why seest thou this man, and hearest him revile against this people and against our law? For behold, Nephi had spoken unto them concerning the corruptness of their law. Yea, many things did Nephi speak which cannot be written, and nothing did he speak which was contrary to the commandments of God. And those judges were angry with him, because he spake plainly unto them concerning their secret works of darkness. Nevertheless they durst not lay their own hands upon him, for they feared the people, lest they should cry out against them. Therefore they did cry unto the people, saying, why do you suffer this man to revile against us? For behold, he doth condemn all this people, even unto destruction. Yea, and also that these our great cities shall be taken from us, that we shall have no place in them. And now we know that this is impossible, for behold, we are powerful, and our cities great. Therefore our enemies can have no power over us. And it came to pass that thus they did stir up the people to anger against Nephi and raised contentions among them. For there were some who did cry out, Let this man alone, for he is a good man, and those things which he saith will surely come to pass, except we repent. Yea, behold, all the judgments will come upon us, which he has testified unto us, for we know that he has testified aright unto us concerning our iniquities. And behold, they are many, and he knoweth as well all things which shall befall us as he knoweth of our iniquities. Yea, and behold, if he had not been a prophet, he could not have testified concerning those things. And it came to pass that those people who sought to destroy Nephi were compelled because of their fear, that they did not lay their hands on him. Therefore he began again to speak unto them, seeing that he had gained favor in the eyes of some, insomuch that the remainder of them did fear. Therefore he was constrained to speak more unto them, saying, Behold, my brethren, have ye not read that God gave power unto one man, even Moses, to smite upon the waters of the Red Sea? And they parted hither and thither, insomuch that the Israelites, who were our fathers, came through upon dry ground, and the waters closed upon the armies of the Egyptians and swallowed them up. And now, behold, if God gave unto this man such power, then why should ye dispute among yourselves, and say that he hath given unto me no power whereby I may know concerning the judgments that shall come upon you, except ye repent? But behold, ye not only deny my words, but ye also deny all the words which have been spoken by our fathers, and also the words which were spoken by this man Moses, who had such great power given unto him, yea, the words which he hath spoken concerning the coming of the Messiah. Yea, did he not bear record that the Son of God should come? And as he lifted up the brazen serpent in the wilderness, even so shall he be lifted up who should come. And as many as should look upon that serpent should live, even so as many as should look upon the Son of God with faith, having a contrite spirit might live, even unto that life which is eternal. And now, behold, Moses did not only testify of these things, but also all the holy prophets, from his days even to the days of Abraham. Yea, and behold, Abraham saw of his coming, and was filled with gladness, and did rejoice. Yea, and behold, I say unto you that Abraham not only knew of these things, but there were many before the days of Abraham, who were called by the order of God, yea, even after the order of his son and this that it should be shown unto the people a great many thousand years before his coming, that even redemption should come unto them. And now I would that ye should know, that even since the days of Abraham there have been many prophets that have testified these things. Yea, behold, the prophet Zenos did testify boldly, for the which he was slain. And behold also Zenoch, and also Esaias, and also Isaiah, and Jeremiah, Jeremiah being that same prophet who testified of the destruction of Jerusalem, 
and now we know that Jerusalem was destroyed according to the words of Jeremiah. Oh, then, why not the Son of God come according to his prophecy? And now will you dispute that Jerusalem was destroyed? Will ye say that the sons of Zedekiah were not slain, all except it were Mulek? Yea, and do ye not behold that the seed of Zedekiah are with us, and they were driven out of the land of Jerusalem? But behold, this is not all. Our father Lehi was driven out of Jerusalem because he testified of these things. Nephi also testified of these things, and also almost all of our fathers, even down to this time, yea, they have testified of the coming of Christ, and have looked forward, and have rejoiced in his day which is to come. And behold, he is God, and he is with them, and he did manifest himself unto them, that they were redeemed by him, and they gave unto him glory, because of that which is to come. And now, seeing ye know these things, and cannot deny them, except ye shall lie, therefore in this ye have sinned, for ye have rejected all these things, notwithstanding so many evidences which ye have received. Yea, even ye have received all things, both things in heaven, and all things which are in the earth, as a witness that they are true. But behold, ye have rejected the truth, and rebelled against your holy God, and even at this time, instead of laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where nothing doth corrupt, and where nothing can come which is unclean, ye are heaping up for yourselves wrath against the day of judgment. Yea, even at this time ye are ripening because of your murders and your fornication and wickedness for everlasting destruction. Yea, and except ye repent, it will come unto you soon. Yea, behold, it is now even at your doors. Yea, go ye in unto the judgment seat, and search. And behold, your judge is murdered, and he lieth in his blood, and he hath been murdered by his brother, who seeketh to sit in the judgment seat. And behold, they both belong to your secret band, whose author is Gadianton, and the evil one who seeketh to destroy the souls of men. Helaman chapter 9 Behold, now it came to pass, that when Nephi had spoken these words, certain men who were among them ran to the judgment seat. Yea, even there were five who went, and they said among themselves as they went, Behold, and now we will know of a surety whether this man be a prophet, and God hath commanded him to prophesy such marvellous things unto us. Behold, we do not believe that he hath, yea, we do not believe that he is a prophet. Nevertheless, if this thing which he hath said concerning the chief judge be true, that he be dead, then will we believe that the other words which he has spoken are true. And it came to pass that they ran in their might, and came in unto the judgment seat. And behold, the chief judge had fallen to the earth, and did lie in his blood. And now behold, when they saw this, they were astonished exceedingly, insomuch that they fell to the earth. For they had not believed the words which Nephi had spoken concerning the chief judge. But now when they saw that they believed, and fear came upon them, lest all the judgments which Nephi had spoken should come upon the people, therefore they did quake, and had fallen to the earth. Now immediately when the judge had been murdered, he being stabbed by his brother by a garb of secrecy, and he fled, and the servants ran and told the people, raising the cry of murder among them. And behold, the people did gather themselves together unto the place of the judgment seat, and behold, to their astonishment, they saw those five men who had fallen to the earth. And now, behold, the people knew nothing concerning the multitude who had gathered together at the garden of Nephi. Therefore they said among themselves, These men are they who have murdered the judge, and God has smitten them, that they could not flee from us. And it came to pass that they laid hold on them, and bound them, and cast them into prison. And there was a proclamation sent abroad that the judge was slain, and that the murderers had been taken and were cast into prison. And it came to pass that on the morrow the people did assemble themselves together to mourn and to fast at the burial of the great chief judge who had been slain. And thus also those judges who were at the garden of Nephi and heard his words were also gathered together at the burial. And it came to pass that they inquired among the people, saying, where are the five who were sent to inquire concerning the chief judge whether he was dead? And they answered and said, Concerning this five whom ye say ye have sent, we know not. But there are five who are the murderers, whom we have cast into prison. And it came to pass that the judges desired that they should be brought. And they were brought, 
and behold, they were the five who were sent. And behold, the judges inquired of them to know concerning the matter, and they told them all that they had done, saying, We ran, and came to the place of the judgment seat, and when we saw all things, even as Nephi had testified, we were astonished, insomuch that we fell to the earth. And when we were recovered from our astonishment, behold, they cast us into prison. Now, as for the murder of this man, we know not who has done it, and only this much we know. We ran and came according as ye desired, and behold, he was dead, according to the words of Nephi. And now it came to pass that the judges did expound the matter unto the people, and did cry against Nephi, saying, Behold, we know that this Nephi must have agreed with some one to slay the judge, and then he might declare it unto us that he might convert us unto his faith, that he might raise himself to be a great man, chosen of God and a prophet. And now, behold, we will detect this man, and he shall confess his fault, and make known unto us the true murderer of this judge. And it came to pass that the five were liberated on the day of the burial. Nevertheless they did rebuke the judges in the words which they had spoken against Nephi, and did contend with them one by one, insomuch that they did confound them. Nevertheless they caused that Nephi should be taken and bound and brought before the multitude, and they began to question him in divers ways, that they might cross him, that they might accuse him to death, saying unto him, Thou art confederate. Who is this man that hath done this murder? Now tell us, and acknowledge thy fault, saying, Behold, here is money, and also we will grant unto thee thy life, if thou wilt tell us, and acknowledge the agreement which thou hast made with him. But Nephi said unto them, O ye fools, ye uncircumcised of heart, ye blind and ye stiff-necked people, do ye know how long the Lord your God will suffer you, that ye shall go on in this your way of sin? Oh, ye ought to begin to howl and mourn because of the great destruction which at this time doth await you, except ye shall repent. Behold, ye say that I have agreed with a man that he should murder Caesarum, our chief judge. But behold, I say unto you that this is because I have testified unto you that ye might know concerning this thing. Yea, even for a witness unto you, that I did know of the wickedness and abominations which are among you. And because I have done this, ye say that I have agreed with a man that he should do this thing. Yea, because I showed unto you this sign, ye are angry with me, and seek to destroy my life. And now, behold, I will show unto you another sign, and see if ye will in this thing seek to destroy me. Behold, I say unto you, Go to the house of Seantum who is the brother of Caesarum, and say unto him, Has Nephi the pretended prophet, who doth prophesy so much evil concerning this people, agreed with thee, in the which ye have murdered Caesarum, who is your brother? And behold, he shall say unto you, Nay. And ye shall say unto him, Have ye murdered your brother? And he shall stand with fear, and wist not what to say. And behold, he shall deny unto you, and he shall make as if he were astonished. Nevertheless, he shall declare unto you that he is innocent. But behold, ye shall examine him, and ye shall find blood upon the skirts of his cloak. And when ye have seen this, ye shall say, From whence cometh this blood? Do we not know that it is the blood of your brother? And then shall he tremble, and shall look pale, even as if death had come upon him. And then shall ye say, because of this fear and this paleness which has come upon your face, behold, we know that thou art guilty. And then shalt a greater fear come upon him, and then shall he confess unto you, and deny no more that he has done this murder. And then shall he say unto you that I, Nephi, know nothing concerning the matter, save it were given unto me by the power of God. And then shall ye know that I am an honest man, and that I am sent unto you from God. And it came to pass that they went, and did, even according as Nephi had said unto them. And behold, the words which he had said were true, for according to the words he did deny, and also according to the words he did confess. And he was brought to prove that he himself was the very murderer, insomuch that the five were set at liberty, and also was Nephi. 
and there were some of the nephites who believed on the words of nephi and there were some also who believed because of the testimony of the five for they had been converted while they were in prison and now there were some among the people who said that nephi was a prophet and there were others who said behold he is a god for except he was a god he could not know of all things for behold he has told us the thoughts of our hearts and also has told us things and even he has brought unto our knowledge the true murderer of our chief judge helaman chapter ten and it came to pass that there arose a division among the people insomuch that they divided hither and thither and went their ways leaving nephi alone as he was standing in the midst of them and it came to pass that nephi went his way towards his own house pondering upon the things which the lord had shown unto him and it came to pass as he was thus pondering being much cast down because of the wickedness of the people of the nephites their secret works of darkness and their murderings and their plunderings and all manner of iniquities and it came to pass as he was thus pondering in his heart behold a voice came unto him saying blessed art thou nephi for those things which thou hast done for i have beheld how thou hast with unwearyingness declared the word which i have given unto thee unto this people and thou hast not feared them and hast not sought thine own life but hast sought my will and to keep my commandments and now because thou hast done this with such unwearyingness behold i will bless thee forever and i will make thee mighty in word and in deed in faith and in works yea even that all things shall be done unto thee according to thy word for thou shalt not ask that which is contrary to my will behold thou art nephi and i am god behold i declare it unto thee in the presence of mine angels that ye shall have power over this people and shall smite the earth with famine and with pestilence and destruction according to the wickedness of this people behold i give unto you power that whatsoever ye shall seal on earth shall be sealed in heaven and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and thus shall ye have power among this people and thus if ye shall say unto this temple it shall be rent in twain it shall be done and if ye shall say unto this mountain be thou cast down and become smooth it shall be done and behold if ye shall say that god shall smite this people it shall come to pass and now behold i command you that ye shall go and declare unto this people that thus saith the lord god who is the almighty except ye repent ye shall be smitten even unto destruction and behold now it came to pass that when the lord had spoken these words unto nephi he did stop and did not go unto his own house but did return unto the multitudes who were scattered about upon the face of the land and began to declare unto them the word of the lord which had been spoken unto him concerning their destruction if they did not repent now behold notwithstanding that great miracle which nephi had done in telling them concerning the death of the chief judge they did harden their hearts and did not hearken unto the words of the lord therefore nephi did declare unto them the word of the lord saying except ye repent thus saith the lord ye shall be smitten even unto destruction and it came to pass that when nephi had declared unto them the word behold they did still harden their hearts and would not hearken unto his words therefore they did revile against him and did seek to lay their hands upon him that they might cast him into prison but behold the power of god was with him and they could not take him to cast him into prison for he was taken by the spirit and conveyed away out of the midst of them and it came to pass that thus he did go forth in the spirit from multitude to multitude declaring the word of god even until he had declared it unto them all or sent it forth among all the people and it came to pass that they would not hearken unto his words and there began to be contentions insomuch that they were divided against themselves and began to slay one another with the sword and thus ended the seventy and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi helaman chapter eleven 
And now it came to pass, in the seventy and second year of the reign of the judges, that the contentions did increase, insomuch that there were wars throughout all the land among all the people of Nephi. And it was this secret band of robbers who did carry on this work of destruction and wickedness, and this war did last all that year, and in the seventy and third year it did also last. And it came to pass, that in this year Nephi did cry unto the Lord, saying, O Lord! Do not suffer that this people shall be destroyed by the sword. But, O Lord, rather let there be a famine in the land, to stir them up in remembrance of the Lord their God. And perhaps they will repent and turn unto thee. And so it was done, according to the words of Nephi. And there was a great famine upon the land among all the people of Nephi. And thus in the seventy and fourth year the famine did continue and the work of destruction did cease by the sword, but became sore by famine. And this work of destruction did also continue in the seventy and fifth year, for the earth was smitten, that it was dry, and did not yield forth grain in the season of grain. And the whole earth was smitten, even among the Lamanites as well as among the Nephites, so that they were smitten that they did perish by thousands in the more wicked parts of the land. And it came to pass that the people saw that they were about to perish by famine, and they began to remember the Lord their God, and they began to remember the words of Nephi. And the people began to plead with their chief judges and their leaders, that they would say unto Nephi, Behold, we know that thou art a man of God, and therefore cry unto the Lord our God, that he turn away from us this famine, lest all the words which thou hast spoken concerning our destruction be fulfilled. And it came to pass that the judges did say unto Nephi according to the words which had been desired. And it came to pass that when Nephi saw that the people had repented and did humble themselves in sackcloth, he cried again unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, behold, this people repenteth, and they have swept away the band of Gadianton from amongst them, insomuch that they have become extinct, and they have concealed their secret plans in the earth. Now, O Lord, because of this their humility, wilt thou turn away thine anger, and let thine anger be appeased in the destruction of those wicked men whom thou hast already destroyed. O Lord, wilt thou turn away thine anger, yea, thy fierce anger, and cause that this famine may cease in this land. O Lord, wilt thou hearken unto me, and cause that it may be done according to my words, and send forth rain upon the face of the earth, that she may bring forth her fruit and her grain in the season of grain. O Lord, thou didst hearken unto my words when I said, Let there be a famine, that the pestilence of the sword might cease. And I know that thou wilt, even at this time, hearken unto my words, for thou saidst that, If this people repent, I will spare them. Yea, O Lord, and thou seest that they have repented, because of the famine and the pestilence and destruction which has come unto them. And now, O Lord, wilt thou turn away thine anger, and try again if they will serve thee? And if so, O Lord, thou canst bless them according to thy words which thou hast said. And it came to pass that in the seventy and sixth year the Lord did turn away his anger from the people, and caused that rain should fall upon the earth, insomuch that it did bring forth her fruit in the season of her fruit. And it came to pass that it did bring forth her grain in the season of her grain. And behold, the people did rejoice and glorify God, and the whole face of the land was filled with rejoicing, and they did no more seek to destroy Nephi, but they did esteem him as a great prophet and a man of God, having great power and authority given unto him from God. And behold, Lehi his brother was not a whit behind him as to things pertaining to righteousness. And thus it did come to pass that the people of Nephi began to prosper again in the land, and began to build up their waste places, and began to multiply and spread, even until they did cover the whole face of the land, both on the northward and on the southward, from the sea west to the sea east. And it came to pass that the seventy and sixth year did end in peace, and the seventy and seventh year began in peace, and the church did spread throughout the face of all the land, and the more part of the people, both the Nephites and the Lamanites, did belong to the church, and they did have exceedingly great peace in the land, and thus ended the seventy and seventh year. And also they had peace in the seventy and eighth year, 
save it were a few contentions concerning the points of doctrine which had been laid down by the prophets. And in the seventy and ninth year there began to be much strife. But it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi and many of their brethren, who knew concerning the true points of doctrine, having many revelations daily, therefore they did preach unto the people, insomuch that they did put an end to their strife in that same year. And it came to pass that in the eightieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there were a certain number of the dissenters from the people of Nephi, who had some years before gone over unto the Lamanites, and taken upon themselves the name of Lamanites, and also a certain number who were real descendants of the Lamanites, being stirred up to anger by them, or by those dissenters, therefore they commenced a war with their brethren. And they did commit murder and plunder, and then they would retreat back into the mountains and into the wilderness and secret places, hiding themselves that they could not be discovered, receiving daily in addition to their numbers, inasmuch as there were dissenters that went forth among them. And thus in time, yea, even in the space of not many years, they became an exceedingly great band of robbers, and they did search out all the secret plans of Gadianton, and thus they became robbers of Gadianton. Now behold, these robbers did make great havoc, yea, even great destruction among the people of Nephi, and also among the people of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that it was expedient that there should be a stop put to this work of destruction. Therefore they sent an army of strong men into the wilderness and upon the mountains to search out this band of robbers and to destroy them. But behold, it came to pass that in that same year they were driven back even into their own lands. And thus ended the eightieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the commencement of the eighty and first year they did go forth again against this band of robbers, and did destroy many, and they were also visited with much destruction. And they were again obliged to return out of the wilderness and out of the mountains unto their own lands, because of the exceeding greatness of the numbers of those robbers who infested the mountains and the wilderness. And it came to pass that thus ended this year, and the robbers did still increase and wax strong, insomuch that they did defy the whole armies of the Nephites and also of the Lamanites, and they did cause great fear to come unto the people upon all the face of the land. Yea, for they did visit many parts of the land, and did do great destruction unto them. Yea, did kill many, and did carry away others captive into the wilderness, yea, and more especially their women and their children. Now this great evil, which came unto the people because of their iniquity, did stir them up again in remembrance of the Lord their God. And thus ended the eighty and first year of the reign of the judges. And in the eighty and second year they began again to forget the Lord their God. And in the eighty and third year they began to wax strong in iniquity. And in the eighty and fourth year they did not mend their ways. And it came to pass in the eighty and fifth year they did wax stronger and stronger in their pride and in their wickedness, and thus they were ripening again for destruction. And thus ended the eighty and fifth year. End of Helaman chapters 8 through 11 Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Helaman, chapters 12 through 16 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Helaman, chapters 12 through 16. Helaman, chapter 12. And thus we can behold how false, and also the unsteadiness of the hearts of the children of men. Yea, we can see that the Lord in his great infinite goodness doth bless and prosper those who put their trust in him. Yea, and we may see at the very time when he doth prosper his people, yea, in the increase of their fields, their flocks, and their herds, and in gold, and in silver, and in all manner of precious things of every kind and art, sparing their lives and delivering them out of the hands of their enemies, softening the hearts of their enemies, that they should not declare wars against them, yea, and in fine, doing all things for the welfare and happiness of his people, yea, then is the time that they do harden their hearts, and do forget the Lord their God, and do trample under their feet the Holy One. 
yea, and this because of their ease, and their exceedingly great prosperity. And thus we see that except the Lord doth chasten his people with many afflictions, yea, except he doth visit them with death, and with terror, and with famine, and with all manner of pestilence, they will not remember him. Oh, how foolish, and how vain, and how evil, and devilish, and how quick to do iniquity, and how slow to do good are the children of men. Yea, how quick to hearken unto the words of the evil one, and to set their hearts upon the vain things of the world. Yea, how quick to be lifted up in pride. Yea, how quick to boast, and do all manner of that which is iniquity. And how slow are they to remember the Lord their God, and to give ear unto his counsels. Yea, how slow to walk in wisdom's paths. Behold, they do not desire that the Lord their God, who hath created them, should rule and reign over them, notwithstanding his great goodness and his mercy towards them. They do set at naught his counsels, and they will not that he should be their guide. Oh, how great is the nothingness of the children of men! Yea, even they are less than the dust of the earth. For behold, the dust of the earth moveth hither and thither to the dividing asunder at the command of our great and everlasting God. Yea, behold, at his voice do the hills and mountains tremble and quake, and by the power of his voice they are broken up and become smooth, yea, even like unto a valley. Yea, by the power of his voice doth the whole earth shake. Yea, by the power of his voice do the foundations rock, even to the very center. Yea, and if he say unto the earth, Move, it is moved. Yea, and if he say unto the earth, Thou shalt go back, that it lengthen out the day for many hours it is done. And thus, according to his word, the earth goeth back, and it appeareth unto man that the sun standeth still. Yea, and behold, this is so, for surely it is the earth that moveth, and not the sun. And behold also, if he say unto the waters of the great deep, Be thou dried up, it is done. Behold, if he say unto this mountain, Be thou raised up, and come over, and fall upon that city, that it be buried up, behold, it is done. And behold, if a man hide up a treasure in the earth, and the Lord shall say, Let it be accursed, because of the iniquity of him who hath hid it up, behold, it shall be accursed. And if the Lord shall say, Be thou accursed, that no man shall find thee from this time henceforth and forever, Behold, no man getteth it henceforth and forever. And behold, if the Lord shall say unto a man, Because of thine iniquities, thou shalt be accursed for ever, it shall be done. And if the Lord shall say, Because of thine iniquities, thou shalt be cut off from my presence, he will cause that it shall be so. And woe unto him to whom he shall say this, for it shall be unto him that will do iniquity, and he cannot be saved. Therefore for this cause, that men might be saved, hath repentance been declared. Therefore blessed are they who will repent and hearken unto the voice of the Lord their God, for these are they that shall be saved. And may God grant in his great fullness that men might be brought unto repentance and good works, that they might be restored unto grace for grace according to their works. And I would that all men might be saved, but we read that in the great and last day there are some who shall be cast out, yea, who shall be cast off from the presence of the Lord, yea, who shall be consigned to a state of endless misery, fulfilling the words which say, They that have done good shall have everlasting life, and they that have done evil shall have everlasting damnation. And thus it is. Amen. Helaman, chapter 13. And now it came to pass, in the eighty and sixth year, the Nephites did still remain in wickedness, yea, in great wickedness, while the Lamanites did observe strictly to keep the commandments of God according to the law of Moses. And it came to pass that in this year there was one Samuel, a Lamanite, come into the land of Zarahemla, and began to preach unto the people. And it came to pass that he did preach many days repentance unto the people, and they did cast him out, and he was about to return to his own land. But behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, that he should return again and prophesy unto the people whatsoever things should come into his heart. And it came to pass that they would not suffer that he should enter into the city. Therefore he went and got upon the wall thereof, 
and stretched forth his hand, and cried with a loud voice, and prophesied unto the people whatsoever things the Lord put into his heart. And he said unto them, Behold, I, Samuel, a Lamanite, do speak the words of the Lord which he doth put into my heart. And behold, he hath put it into my heart to say unto this people, that the sword of justice hangeth over this people, and four hundred years pass not away, save the sword of justice falleth upon this people. Yea, heavy destruction awaiteth this people, and it surely cometh unto this people, and nothing can save this people, save it be repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, who surely shall come into the world, and shall suffer many things, and shall be slain by his people. And behold, an angel of the Lord hath declared it unto me, and he did bring glad tidings to my soul. And behold, I was sent unto you to declare it unto you also, that ye might have glad tidings. But behold, ye would not receive me. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Because of the hardness of the hearts of the people of the Nephites, except they repent, I will take away my word from them, and I will withdraw my spirit from them, and I will suffer them no longer, and I will turn the hearts of their brethren against them. And four hundred years shall not pass away before I will cause that they shall be smitten. Yea, I will visit them with the sword, and with famine, and with pestilence. Yea, I will visit them in my fierce anger. And there shall be those of the fourth generation who shall live of your enemies to behold your utter destruction. And this shall surely come, except ye repent, saith the Lord. And those of the fourth generation shall visit your destruction. But if ye will repent, and return unto the Lord your God, I will turn away mine anger, saith the Lord. Yea, thus saith the Lord, Blessed are they who will repent and turn unto me. But woe unto him that repenteth not. Yea, woe unto this great city of Zarahemla. For behold, it is because of those who are righteous that it is saved. Yea, woe unto this great city, for I perceive, saith the Lord, that there are many, yea, even the more part of this great city, that will harden their hearts against me, saith the Lord. But blessed are they who will repent, for them will I spare. But behold, if it were not for the righteous who are in this great city, behold, I would cause that fire should come down out of heaven and destroy it. But behold, it is for the righteous's sake that it is spared. But behold, the time cometh, saith the Lord, that when ye shall cast out the righteous from among you, then shall ye be ripe for destruction. Yea, woe be unto this great city, because of the wickedness and abominations which are in her. Yea, and woe be unto the city of Gideon, for the wickedness and abominations which are in her. Yea, and woe be unto all the cities which are in the land round about, which are possessed by the Nephites, because of the wickedness and abominations which are in them. And behold, a curse shall come upon the land, saith the Lord of hosts, because of the people's sake who were upon the land, yea, because of their wickedness and their abominations. And it shall come to pass, saith the Lord of hosts, yea, our great and true God, that whoso shall hide up treasures in the earth shall find them again no more, because of the great curse of the land, save he be a righteous man, and shall hide it up unto the Lord. For I will, saith the Lord, that they shall hide up their treasures unto me, and cursed be they who hide not up their treasures unto me. For none hideth up their treasures unto me, save it be the righteous. And he that hideth not up his treasures unto me, cursed is he, and also the treasure. And none shall redeem it, because of the curse of the land. And the day shall come, that they shall hide up their treasures, because they have set their hearts upon riches. And because they have set their hearts upon their riches, and will hide up their treasures when they shall flee before their enemies, because they will not hide them up unto me, cursed be they, and also their treasures. And in that day shall they be smitten, saith the Lord. Behold ye, the people of this great city, and hearken unto my words, yea, hearken unto the words which the Lord saith. For behold, he saith that ye are cursed because of your riches and also are your riches cursed, because ye have set your hearts upon them, and have not hearkened unto the words of him who gave them unto you. Ye do not remember the Lord your God in the things with which he hath blessed you, but ye do always remember your riches, 
not to thank the Lord your God for them. Yea, your hearts are not drawn out unto the Lord, but they do swell with great pride unto boasting, and unto great swelling, envyings, strifes, malice, persecutions, and murders, and all manner of iniquities. For this cause hath the Lord God caused that a curse should come upon the land, and also upon your riches, and this because of your iniquities. Yea, woe unto this people because of this time which has arrived, that ye do cast out the prophets, and do mock them, and cast stones at them, and do slay them, and do all manner of iniquity unto them, even as they did of old time. And now when ye talk, ye say, If our days had been in the days of our fathers of old, we would not have slain the prophets, we would not have stoned them, and cast them out. Behold, ye are worse than they, for as the Lord liveth, if a prophet come among you, and declareth unto you the word of the Lord, which testifieth of your sins and iniquities, ye are angry with him, and cast him out, and seek all manner of ways to destroy him. Yea, you will say that he is a false prophet, and that he is a sinner, and of the devil, because he testifieth that your deeds are evil. But behold, if a man shall come among you, and shall say, Do this, and there is no iniquity, and do that, and ye shall not suffer, yea, he will say, Walk after the pride of your own hearts, yea, walk after the pride of your eyes, and do whatsoever your heart desireth. And if a man shall come among you and say this, ye will receive him, and say that he is a prophet. Yea, ye will lift him up, and ye will give unto him of your substance, ye will give unto him of your gold, and of your silver, and ye will clothe him with costly apparel, and because he speaketh flattering words unto you, and he saith that all is well, then ye will not find fault with him. O ye wicked, and ye perverse generation, ye hardened, and ye stiff-necked people, how long will ye suppose that the Lord will suffer you? Yea, how long will ye suffer yourselves to be led by foolish and blind guides? Yea, how long will ye choose darkness rather than light? Yea, behold, the anger of the Lord is already kindled against you. Behold, he hath cursed the land because of your iniquity. And behold, the time cometh that he curseth your riches, that they become slippery, that ye cannot hold them. And in the days of your poverty ye cannot retain them. And in the days of your poverty ye shall cry unto the Lord, and in vain shall ye cry, for your desolation is already come upon you, and your destruction is made sure. And then shall ye weep and howl in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And then shall ye lament and say, Oh, that I had repented, and had not killed the prophets, and stoned them, and cast them out. Yea, in that day ye shall say, Oh, that we had remembered the Lord our God in the day that he gave us our riches. And then they would not have become slippery that we should lose them, for behold, our riches are gone from us. Behold, we lay a tool here, and on the morrow it is gone, and behold, our swords are taken from us in the day we have sought them for battle. Yea, we have hid up our treasure, and they have slipped away from us because of the curse of the land. Oh, that we had repented in the day that the word of the Lord came unto us! For behold, the land is cursed, and all things are become slippery, and we cannot hold them. Behold, we are surrounded by demons, yea, we are encircled about by the angels of him who hath sought to destroy our souls. Behold, our iniquities are great. O Lord, canst thou not turn away thine anger from us? And this shall be your language in those days. But behold, your days of probation are past. Ye have procrastinated the day of your salvation until it is everlastingly too late, and your destruction is made sure. Yea, for ye have sought all the days of your lives for that which ye could not obtain, and ye have sought for happiness in doing iniquity, which thing is contrary to the nature of that righteousness which is in our great and eternal head. O ye people of the land, that ye would hear my words, and I pray that the anger of the Lord be turned away from you, and that ye would repent and be saved. Helaman Chapter 14 And now it came to pass that Samuel the Lamanite did prophesy a great many more things which cannot be written. And behold, he said unto them, Behold, I give unto you a sign. 
For five years more cometh, and behold, then cometh the Son of God to redeem all those who shall believe on his name. And behold, this will I give unto you for a sign at the time of his coming. For behold, there shall be great lights in heaven, insomuch that in the night before he cometh there shall be no darkness, insomuch that it shall appear unto man as if it was day. Therefore there shall be one day and a night and a day, as if it were one day, and there were no night. And this shall be unto you for a sign, for ye shall know of the rising of the sun and also of its setting. Therefore they shall know of a surety that there shall be two days and a night. Nevertheless, the night shall not be darkened, and it shall be the night before he is born. And behold, there shall a new star arise, such an one as ye never have beheld, and this also shall be a sign unto you. And behold, this is not all. There shall be many signs and wonders in heaven. And it shall come to pass that ye shall all be amazed and wonder, insomuch that ye shall fall to the earth. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall believe on the Son of God, the same shall have everlasting life. And behold, thus hath the Lord commanded me, by his angel, that I should come and tell this thing unto you. Yea, he hath commanded that I should prophesy these things unto you. Yea, he hath said unto me, Cry unto this people, Repent, and prepare the way of the Lord. And now, because I am a Lamanite, and have spoken unto you the words which the Lord hath commanded me, and because it was hard against you, ye are angry with me, and do seek to destroy me, and have cast me out from among you. And ye shall hear my words, for for this intent have I come up upon the walls of this city, that ye might hear and know of the judgments of God which do await you because of your iniquities, and also that ye might know the conditions of repentance, and also that ye might know of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, the Creator of all things from the beginning, and that ye might know of the signs of his coming, to the intent that ye might believe on his name. And if ye believe on his name, ye will repent of all your sins, that thereby ye may have a remission of them through his merits. And behold, again, another sign I give unto you, yea, a sign of his death. For behold, he surely must die, that salvation may come. Yea, it behooveth him, and becometh expedient that he dieth, to bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, that thereby men may be brought into the presence of the Lord. Yea, behold, this death bringeth to pass the resurrection, and redeemeth all mankind from the first death, that spiritual death. For all mankind, by the fall of Adam being cut off from the presence of the Lord, are considered as dead, both as to things temporal and to things spiritual. But, behold, the resurrection of Christ redeemeth mankind, yea, even all mankind, and bringeth them back into the presence of the Lord. Yea, and it bringeth to pass the condition of repentance, that whosoever repenteth, the same is not hewn down and cast into the fire, but whosoever repenteth not, is hewn down and cast into the fire. And there cometh upon them again a spiritual death, yea, a second death, for they are cut off again as to things pertaining to righteousness. Therefore repent ye, Repent ye, lest by knowing these things and not doing them ye shall suffer yourselves to come under condemnation, and ye are brought down unto this second death. But behold, as I said unto you concerning another sign, a sign of his death, behold, in that day that he shall suffer death, the sun shall be darkened, and refuse to give his light unto you, and also the moon and the stars and there shall be no light upon the face of the land even from the time that he shall suffer death for the space of three days to the time that he shall rise again from the dead yea at the time that he shall yield up the ghost there shall be thunderings and lightnings for the space of many hours and the earth shall shake and tremble and the rocks which are upon the face of this earth which are both above the earth and beneath which ye know at this time are solid or the more part of it is one solid mass, shall be broken up. Yea, they shall be rent in twain, and shall ever after be found in seams and in cracks, and in broken fragments upon the face of the whole earth, yea, both above the earth and beneath. And behold, there shall be great tempests, and there shall be many mountains laid low, like unto a valley, 
and there shall be many places which are now called valleys which shall become mountains whose height is great and many highways shall be broken up and many cities shall become desolate and many graves shall be opened and shall yield up many of their dead and many saints shall appear unto many and behold thus hath the angel spoken unto me for he said unto me that there should be thunderings and lightnings for the space of many hours and he said unto me that while the thunder and lightning lasted and the tempest that these things should be and that darkness should cover the face of the whole earth for the space of three days and the angel said unto me that many shall see greater things than these to the intent that they might believe that these signs and these wonders should come to pass upon all the face of this land to the intent that there should be no cause for unbelief among the children of men and this to the intent that whosoever will believe might be saved and that whosoever will not believe a righteous judgment might come upon them and also if they are condemned they bring upon themselves their own condemnation and now remember remember my brethren that whosoever perisheth perisheth unto himself and whosoever doeth iniquity doeth it unto himself for behold ye are free ye are permitted to act for yourselves for behold god hath given unto you a knowledge and he hath made you free he hath given unto you that ye might know good from evil and he hath given unto you that ye might choose life or death and ye can do good and be restored unto that which is good or have that which is good restored unto you or ye can do evil and have that which is evil restored unto you Helaman chapter 15 And now, my beloved brethren, behold, I declare unto you, that except ye shall repent, your houses shall be left unto you desolate. Yea, except ye repent, your women shall have great cause to mourn in the day that they shall give suck. For ye shall attempt to flee, and there shall be no place for refuge. Yea, and woe unto them which are with child, for they shall be heavy and cannot flee. Therefore they shall be trodden down and shall be left to perish. Yea, woe unto this people, who are called the people of Nephi, except they shall repent. When they shall see all these signs and wonders which shall be showed unto them, for behold, they have been a chosen people of the Lord. Yea, the people of Nephi hath he loved, and also hath he chastened them. Yea, in the days of their iniquities hath he chastened them, because he loveth them. But behold, my brethren, the Lamanites hath he hated, because their deeds have been evil continually and this because of the iniquity of the tradition of their fathers. But behold, salvation hath come upon them through the preaching of the Nephites, and for this intent hath the Lord prolonged their days. And I would that ye should behold that the more part of them are in the path of their duty, and they do walk circumspectly before God, and they do observe to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments according to the law of Moses. Yea, I say unto you that the more part of them are doing this, and they are striving with unwearied diligence that they may bring the remainder of their brethren to the knowledge of the truth. Therefore there are many who do add to their numbers daily. And behold, ye do know of yourselves, for ye have witnessed it, that as many of them as are brought to the knowledge of the truth, and to know of the wicked and abominable traditions of their fathers, and are led to believe the holy scriptures, yea, the prophecies of the holy prophets which are written, which leadeth them to faith on the Lord and unto repentance, which faith and repentance bringeth a change of heart unto them. Therefore as many as have come to this, ye know of yourselves are firm and steadfast in the faith, and in the thing wherewith they have been made free. And ye know also that they have buried their weapons of war, and they fear to take them up, lest by any means they should sin. Yea, ye can see that they fear to sin, for behold, they will suffer themselves that they be trodden down and slain by their enemies, and will not lift their swords against them, and this because of their faith in Christ. And now because of their steadfastness, when they do believe in that thing which they do believe, for because of their firmness, when they are once enlightened, behold, the Lord shall bless them, and prolong their days, notwithstanding their iniquity. Yea, even if they should dwindle in unbelief, the Lord shall prolong their days until the time shall come, which hath been spoken of by our fathers, and also by the prophet Zenos, 
and many other prophets concerning the restoration of our brethren the Lamanites again to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, I say unto you that in the latter times the promises of the Lord have been extended to our brethren the Lamanites, and notwithstanding the many afflictions which they shall have, and notwithstanding they shall be driven to and fro upon the face of the earth, and be hunted, and shall be smitten and scattered abroad, having no place for refuge, the Lord shall be merciful unto them. And this is according to the prophecy, that they shall again be brought to the true knowledge, which is knowledge of their Redeemer, and their great and true shepherd, and be numbered among his sheep. Therefore I say unto you, it shall be better for them than for you, except you repent. For behold, had the mighty works been shown unto them, which have been shown unto you, yea, unto them who have dwindled in unbelief because of the traditions of their fathers, ye can see of yourselves that they never would again have dwindled in unbelief. Therefore saith the Lord, I will not utterly destroy them, but I will cause that in the day of my wisdom they shall return again unto me, saith the Lord. And now behold, saith the Lord, concerning the people of the Nephites, if they will not repent and observe to do my will, I will utterly destroy them, saith the Lord, because of their unbelief, notwithstanding the many mighty works which I have done among them. And as surely as the Lord liveth, shall these things be, saith the Lord. Helaman chapter 16 And now it came to pass that there were many who heard the words of Samuel the Lamanite, which he spake upon the walls of the city. And as many as believed on his word went forth and sought for Nephi. And when they had come forth and found him, they confessed unto him their sins, and denied not, desiring that they might be baptized unto the Lord. But as many as there were who did not believe in the words of Samuel were angry with him, and they cast stones at him upon the wall, and also many shot arrows at him as he stood upon the wall. But the Spirit of the Lord was with him, insomuch that they could not hit him with their stones, neither with their arrows. Now when they saw that they could not hit him, there were many more who did believe on his words, insomuch that they went away unto Nephi to be baptized. And behold, Nephi was baptizing and prophesying and preaching, crying repentance unto the people, showing signs and wonders, working miracles among the people, that they might know that the Christ must shortly come, telling them of things which must shortly come, that they might know and remember at the time of their coming that they had been made known unto them beforehand, to the intent that they might believe. Therefore, as many as believed on the words of Samuel went forth unto him to be baptized, for they came repenting and confessing their sins. But the more part of them did not believe in the words of Samuel. Therefore when they saw that they could not hit him with their stones and their arrows, they cried unto their captain, saying, Take this fellow, and bind him, for behold, he hath a devil. And because of the power of the devil which is in him, we cannot hit him with our stones and our arrows. Therefore take him and bind him, and away with him. And as they went forth to lay their hands on him, behold, he did cast himself down from the wall and did flee out of their lands, yea, even unto his own country, and began to preach and to prophesy among his own people. And behold, he was never heard of more among the Nephites, and thus were the affairs of the people. And thus ended the eighty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended also the eighty and seventh year of the reign of the judges, the more part of the people remaining in their pride and wickedness, and the lesser part walking more circumspectly before God. And these were the conditions also in the eighty and eighth year of the reign of the judges. And there was but little alteration in the affairs of the people, save it were the people began to be more hardened in iniquity, and do more and more of that which was contrary to the commandments of God, in the eighty and ninth year of the reign of the judges. But it came to pass, in the ninetieth year of the reign of the judges, there were great signs given unto the people, and wonders, and the words of the prophets began to be fulfilled, and angels did appear unto men, wise men, and did declare unto them glad tidings of great joy. Thus in this year the scriptures began to be fulfilled. Nevertheless the people began to harden their hearts, all save it were the most believing part of them, both of the Nephites and also of the Lamanites, and began to depend upon their own strength and upon their own wisdom, saying, some things they may have guessed right among so many, but behold, we know that all these great and marvelous works cannot come to pass, of which has been spoken. 
and they began to reason and to contend among themselves, saying, that it is not reasonable that such a being as a Christ shall come. If so, and he be the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, as it has been spoken, why will he not show himself unto us, as well as unto them who shall be at Jerusalem? Yea, why will he not show himself in this land as well as in the land of Jerusalem? But behold, we know that this is a wicked tradition which has been handed down unto us by our fathers to cause us that we should believe in some great and marvelous thing which should come to pass, but not among us, but in a land that is far distant, a land which we know not. Therefore they can keep us in ignorance, for we cannot witness with our own eyes that they are true. And they will, by the cunning and the mysterious arts of the evil one, work some great mystery that we cannot understand, which will keep us down to be servants to their words, and also servants unto them, for we depend upon them to teach us the word. And thus will they keep us in ignorance, if we will yield ourselves unto them all the days of our lives. And many more things did the people imagine up in their hearts, which were foolish and vain, and they were much disturbed, for Satan did stir them up to do iniquity continually. Yea, he did go about spreading rumors and contentions upon all the face of the land, that he might harden the hearts of the people against that which was good and against that which should come. And notwithstanding the signs and the wonders which were wrought among the people of the Lord, and the many miracles which they did, Satan did get great hold upon the hearts of the people upon all the face of the land. And thus ended the ninetieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended the book of Helaman, according to the record of Helaman and his sons. End of Helaman, chapters 12 through 16, recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Third Nephi, chapters 1 through 4 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters 1 through 4. Third Nephi, chapter 1. Now it came to pass that the ninety and first year had passed away, and it was six hundred years from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem. And it was in the year that Laconius was the chief judge and governor over the land. And Nephi, the son of Helaman, had departed out of the land of Zarahemla, giving charge unto his son Nephi, who was his eldest son, concerning the plates of brass, and all the records which had been kept, and all those things which had been kept sacred from the departure of Lehi out of Jerusalem. Then he departed out of the land, and whither he went no man knoweth. And his son Nephi did keep the records in his stead, yea, the records of this people. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the ninety and second year, behold, the prophecies of the prophets began to be fulfilled more fully, for there began to be greater signs and greater miracles wrought among the people. But there were some who began to say that the time was past for the words to be fulfilled, which were spoken by Samuel the Lamanite. And they began to rejoice over their brethren, saying, Behold, the time is past, and the words of Samuel are not fulfilled. Therefore your joy and your faith concerning this thing hath been vain. And it came to pass that they did make a great uproar throughout the land, and the people who believed began to be very sorrowful, lest by any means those things which had been spoken might not come to pass. But behold, they did watch steadfastly for that day and that night and that day, which should be as one day, as if there were no night that they might know that their faith had not been vain. Now it came to pass that there was a day set apart by the unbelievers, that all those who believed in those traditions should be put to death, except the sign should come to pass which had been given by Samuel the prophet. Now it came to pass that when Nephi, the son of Nephi, saw this wickedness of his people, his heart was exceedingly sorrowful. And it came to pass that he went out and bowed himself down upon the earth, and cried mightily to his God in behalf of his people, 
yea, those who were about to be destroyed because of their faith in the tradition of their fathers. And it came to pass that he cried mightily unto the Lord all that day, and behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, Lift up your head, and be of good cheer, for behold, the time is at hand, and on this night shall the sign be given, and on the morrow come I into the world, to show unto the world that I will fulfill all that which I have caused to be spoken by the mouth of my holy prophets. Behold, I come unto my own, to fulfill all things which I have made known unto the children of men from the foundation of the world, and to do the will both of the Father and of the Son, of the Father because of me, and of the Son because of my flesh. And behold, the time is at hand, and this night shall the sign be given. And it came to pass that the words which came unto Nephi were fulfilled according as they had been spoken. For behold, at the going down of the sun there was no darkness, and the people began to be astonished because there was no darkness when the night came. And there were many who had not believed the words of the prophets who fell to the earth and became as if they were dead. For they knew that the great plan of destruction which they had laid for those who believed in the words of the prophets had been frustrated, for the sign which had been given was already at hand. And they began to know that the Son of God must shortly appear. Yea, in fine, all the people upon the face of the whole earth, from the west to the east, both in the land north and in the land south, were so exceedingly astonished that they fell to the earth. For they knew that the prophets had testified of these things for many years, and that the sign which had been given was already at hand. And they began to fear because of their iniquity and their unbelief. And it came to pass that there was no darkness in all that night, but it was as light as though it was midday. And it came to pass that the sun did rise in the morning again, according to its proper order. And they knew that it was the day that the Lord should be born, because of the sign which had been given. And it had come to pass, yea, all things, every whit, according to the words of the prophets. And it came to pass also that a new star did appear according to the word. And it came to pass that from this time forth there began to be lyings sent forth among the people by Satan, to harden their hearts to the intent that they might not believe in those signs and wonders which they had seen. But notwithstanding these lyings and deceivings, the more part of the people did believe and were converted unto the Lord. And it came to pass that Nephi went forth among the people, and also many others, baptizing unto repentance, in the which there was a great remission of sins, and thus the people began again to have peace in the land. And there were no contentions, save it were a few that began to preach, endeavoring to prove by the scriptures that it was no more expedient to observe the law of Moses. Now in this thing they did err, having not understood the scriptures. But it came to pass that they soon became converted, and were convinced of the error which they were in, for it was made known unto them that the law was not yet fulfilled, and that it must be fulfilled in every whit. Yea, the word came unto them that it must be fulfilled. Yea, that one jot or tittle should not pass away till it should all be fulfilled. Therefore in this same year were they brought to a knowledge of their error, and did confess their faults. And thus the ninety and second year did pass away, bringing glad tidings unto the people because of the signs which did come to pass, according to the words of the prophecy of all the holy prophets. And it came to pass that the ninety and third year did also pass away in peace, save it were for the Gadianton robbers, who dwelt upon the mountains, who did infest the land. For so strong were their holds and their secret places that the people could not overpower them. Therefore they did commit many murders, and did do much slaughter among the people. And it came to pass that in the ninety and fourth year they began to increase in great degree, because there were many dissenters of the Nephites who did flee unto them, which did cause much sorrow 
unto those Nephites who did remain in the land. And there was also a cause of much sorrow among the Lamanites, for behold, they had many children who did grow up and began to wax strong in years that they became for themselves, and were led away by some who were Zoramites, by their lyings and their flattering words, to join those Gadianton robbers. And thus were the Lamanites afflicted also, and began to decrease as to their faith and righteousness, because of the wickedness of the rising generation. Third Nephi, Chapter 2 And it came to pass that thus passed away the ninety and fifth year also, and the people began to forget those signs and wonders which they had heard, and began to be less and less astonished at a sign or a wonder from heaven, insomuch that they began to be hard in their hearts, and blind in their minds, and began to disbelieve all which they had heard and seen, imagining up some vain thing in their hearts, that it was wrought by men, and by the power of the devil, to lead away and deceive the hearts of the people. And thus did Satan get possession of the hearts of the people again, insomuch that he did blind their eyes and lead them away to believe that the doctrine of Christ was a foolish and a vain thing. And it came to pass that the people began to wax strong in wickedness and abominations, and they did not believe that there should be any more signs or wonders given. And Satan did go about leading away the hearts of the people, tempting them and causing them that they should do great wickedness in the land. And thus did pass away the ninety and sixth year, and also the ninety and seventh year, and also the ninety and eighth year, and also the ninety and ninth year. And also an hundred years had passed away since the days of Mosiah, who was king over the people of the Nephites. And six hundred and nine years had passed away since Lehi left Jerusalem. And nine years had passed away from the time when the sign was given, which was spoken of by the prophets, that Christ should come into the world. Now the Nephites began to reckon their time from this period when the sign was given, or from the coming of Christ. Therefore nine years had passed away. And Nephi, who was the father of Nephi, who had the charge of the records, did not return to the land of Zarahemla, and could nowhere be found in all the land. And it came to pass that the people did still remain in wickedness, notwithstanding the much preaching and prophesying which was sent among them, and thus passed away the tenth year also, and the eleventh year also passed away in iniquity. And it came to pass in the thirteenth year there began to be wars and contentions throughout all the land, for the Gadianton robbers had become so numerous, and did slay so many of the people, and did lay waste so many cities and did spread so much death and carnage throughout the land, that it became expedient that all the people, both the Nephites and the Lamanites, should take up arms against them. Therefore all the Lamanites who had become converted unto the Lord did unite with their brethren the Nephites, and were compelled for the safety of their lives, and their women, and their children, to take up arms against those Gadianton robbers, yea, and also to maintain their rights, and the privileges of their church, and of their worship, and their freedom, and their liberty. And it came to pass that before this thirteenth year had passed away, the Nephites were threatened with utter destruction because of this war, which had become exceedingly sore. And it came to pass that those Lamanites who had united with the Nephites were numbered among the Nephites, and their curse was taken from them and their skin became white like unto the Nephites. And their young men and their daughters became exceedingly fair, and they were numbered among the Nephites, and were called Nephites. And thus ended the thirteenth year. And it came to pass in the commencement of the fourteenth year, the war between the robbers and the people of Nephi did continue, and did become exceedingly sore. Nevertheless, the people of Nephi did gain some advantage of the robbers, insomuch that they did drive them back out of their lands into the mountains and into their secret places. And thus ended the fourteenth year. And in the fifteenth year they did come forth against the people of Nephi. 
and because of the wickedness of the people of Nephi, and their many contentions and dissensions, the Gadianton robbers did gain many advantages over them. And thus ended the fifteenth year. And thus were the people in a state of many afflictions, and the sword of destruction did hang over them, insomuch that they were about to be smitten down by it, and this because of their iniquity. Third Nephi, Chapter 3 And now it came to pass that in the sixteenth year from the coming of Christ, Laconius, the governor of the land, received an epistle from the leader and the governor of this band of robbers. And these were the words which were written, saying, Laconius, most noble and chief governor of the land, behold, I write this epistle unto you, and do give unto you exceedingly great praise because of your firmness, and also the firmness of your people in maintaining that which he supposed to be your right and liberty. Yea, ye do stand well, as if ye were supported by the hand of a god in the defense of your liberty and your property and your country, or that which ye do call so. And it seemeth a pity to me, most noble Laconius, that ye should be so foolish and vain as to suppose that ye can stand against so many brave men who are at my command, who do now, at this time, stand in their arms, and do await with great anxiety for the word, Go down upon the Nephites, and destroy them. And I, knowing of their unconquerable spirit, having proved them in the field of battle, and knowing of their everlasting hatred towards you, because of the many wrongs which ye have done unto them, therefore, if they should come down against you, they would visit you with utter destruction. Therefore I have written this epistle, sealing it with mine own hand, feeling for your welfare, because of your firmness in that which ye believe to be right, and your noble spirit in the field of battle. Therefore I write unto you, desiring that ye would yield up unto this my people, your cities, your lands, and your possessions, rather than that they should visit you with the sword, and that destruction should come upon you. Or, in other words, yield up yourselves unto us, and unite with us, and become acquainted with our secret works, and become our brethren, that ye may be like unto us, not our slaves, but our brethren and partners of all our substance. And behold, I swear unto you, if ye will do this with an oath, ye shall not be destroyed. But if ye will not do this, I swear unto you with an oath that on the morrow month I will command that my armies shall come down against you, and they shall not stay their hand, and shall spare not, but shall slay you, and shall let fall the sword upon you even until ye shall become extinct. And behold, I am Gideonhai, and I am the governor of this, the secret society of Gadianton, which society and the works thereof I know to be good, and they are of ancient date, and they have been handed down unto us. And I write this epistle unto you, Laconius, and I hope that ye will deliver up your lands and your possessions, without the shedding of blood, that this my people may recover their rights and government, who have dissented away from you because of your wickedness in retaining from them their rights of government, and except ye do this, I will avenge their wrongs. I am Gideonhai. And now it came to pass, when Laconius received this epistle, he was exceedingly astonished because of the boldness of Gideonhai, demanding the possession of the land of the Nephites, and also of threatening the people and avenging the wrongs of those who had received no wrong, save it were they had wronged themselves by dissenting away unto those wicked and abominable robbers. Now behold, this Laconius, the governor, was a just man, and could not be frightened by the demands and the threatenings of a robber. Therefore, he did not hearken to the epistle of Gideonhai, the governor of the robbers, but he did cause that his people should cry unto the Lord for strength against the time that the robbers should come down against them. Yea, he sent a proclamation among all the people, that they should gather together their women, and their children, their flocks, and their herds, and all their substance, save it were their land, unto one place. And he caused that fortifications should be built round about them, and the strength thereof should be exceedingly great. And he caused that armies both of the Nephites and of the Lamanites, or of all them who were numbered among the Nephites, should be placed as guards round about to watch them and to guard them from the robbers day and night. Yea, he said unto them, As the Lord liveth, except ye repent of all your iniquities, and cry unto the Lord, 
ye will in no wise be delivered out of the hands of those Gadianton robbers. And so great and marvellous were the words and prophecies of Laconius, that they did cause fear to come upon all the people, and they did exert themselves in their might to do according to the words of Laconius. And it came to pass that Laconius did appoint chief captains over all the armies of the Nephites, to command them at the time that the robbers should come down out of the wilderness against them. Now the chiefest among all the chief captains, and the great commander of the armies of the Nephites was appointed, and his name was Gidgidoni. Now it was the custom among all the Nephites to appoint for their chief captains, save it were in their times of wickedness, some one that had the spirit of revelation, and also prophecy. Therefore this Gidgidoni was a great prophet among them, as also was the chief judge. Now the people said unto Gidgidoni, Pray unto the Lord, and let us go up unto the mountains, and into the wilderness, that we may fall upon the robbers, and destroy them in their own lands. But Gidgidoni said unto them, The Lord forbid, for if we should go against them, the Lord would deliver us into their hands. Therefore we will prepare ourselves in the center of our lands, and we will gather all our armies together, and we will not go against them, but we will wait till they shall come against us. Therefore, as the Lord liveth, if we do this, he will deliver them into our hands. And it came to pass, in the seventeenth year, in the latter end of the year, the proclamation of Laconius had gone forth throughout all the face of the land, and they had taken their horses, and their chariots, and their cattle, and all their flocks, and their herds, and their grain, and all their substance, and did march forth by thousands, and by tens of thousands, until they had all gone forth to the place which had been appointed, that they should gather themselves together to defend themselves against their enemies. And the land which was appointed was the land of Zarahemla, and the land which was between the land Zarahemla and the land Bountiful, yea, to the line which was between the land Bountiful and the land Desolation. And there were a great many thousand people who were called Nephites, who did gather themselves together in this land. Now Laconius did cause that they should gather themselves together in the land southward, because of the great curse which was upon the land northward. And they did fortify themselves against their enemies, and they did dwell in one land, and in one body, and they did fear the words which had been spoken by Laconius, insomuch that they did repent of all their sins, and they did put up their prayers unto the Lord their God, that he would deliver them in the time that their enemies should come down against them to battle. And they were exceedingly sorrowful because of their enemies, and Gidgadoni did cause that they should make weapons of war of every kind, and they should be strong with armor, and with shields, and with bucklers, after the manner of his instruction. Third Nephi, Chapter 4 And it came to pass that in the latter end of the eighteenth year those armies of robbers had prepared for battle, and began to come down and to sally forth from the hills, and out of the mountains and the wilderness, and their strongholds, and their secret places, and began to take possession of the lands, both which were in the land south and which were in the land north, and began to take possession of all the lands which had been deserted by the Nephites, and the cities which had been left desolate. But behold, there were no beasts nor wild game in those lands which had been deserted by the Nephites, and there was no game for the robbers, save it were in the wilderness. And the robbers could not exist, save it were in the wilderness, for the want of food. For the Nephites had left their lands desolate, and had gathered their flocks and their herds and all their substance, and they were in one body. Therefore there was no chance for the robbers to plunder and to obtain food, save it were to come up in open battle against the Nephites. And the Nephites being in one body, and having so great a number, and having reserved for themselves provisions and horses and cattle, and flocks of every kind, that they might subsist for the space of seven years, in the which time they did hope to destroy the robbers from off the face of the land. And thus the eighteenth year did pass away. And it came to pass that in the nineteenth year Gideonhai found that it was expedient that he should go up to battle against the Nephites. 
for there was no way that they could subsist save it were to plunder and rob and murder and they durst not spread themselves upon the face of the land insomuch that they could raise grain lest the nephites should come upon them and slay them therefore gideonhi gave commandment unto his armies that in this year they should go up to battle against the nephites and it came to pass that they did come up to battle and it was in the sixth month and behold great and terrible was the day that they did come up to battle for they were girded about after the manner of robbers and they had a lambskin about their loins and they were dyed in blood and their heads were shorn and they had headplates upon them and great and terrible was the appearance of the armies of gideonhi because of their armor and because of their being dyed in blood and it came to pass that the armies of the nephites when they saw the appearance of the army of gideonhi had all fallen to the earth and did lift their cries to the lord their god that he would spare them and deliver them out of the hands of their enemies and it came to pass that when the armies of gideonhi saw this they began to shout with a loud voice because of their joy for they had supposed that the nephites had fallen with fear because of the terror of their armies but in this thing they were disappointed for the nephites did not fear them but they did fear their god and did supplicate him for protection therefore when the armies of gideonhi did rush upon them they were prepared to meet them yea in the strength of the lord they did receive them and the battle commenced in this the sixth month and great and terrible was the battle thereof yea great and terrible was the slaughter thereof insomuch that there never was known so great a slaughter among all the people of lehi since he left jerusalem and notwithstanding the threatenings and the oaths which gideonhi had made behold the nephites did beat them insomuch that they did fall back from before them and it came to pass that gidgadoni commanded that his armies should pursue them as far as the borders of the wilderness and that they should not spare any that should fall into their hands by the way and thus they did pursue them and did slay them to the borders of the wilderness even until they had fulfilled the commandment of gidgadoni and it came to pass that gideonhi who had stood and fought with boldness was pursued as he fled and being weary because of his much fighting he was overtaken and slain and thus was the end of gideonhi the robber and it came to pass that the armies of the nephites did return again to their place of security and it came to pass that this nineteenth year did pass away and the robbers did not come again to battle neither did they come again in the twentieth year and in the twenty and first year they did not come up to battle but they came up on all sides to lay siege round about the people of nephi for they did suppose that if they should cut off the people of nephi from their lands and should hem them in on every side and if they should cut them off from all their outward privileges that they could cause them to yield themselves up according to their wishes now they had appointed unto themselves another leader whose name was zemnarihah therefore it was zemnarihah that did cause that this siege should take place but behold this was an advantage to the nephites for it was impossible for the robbers to lay siege sufficiently long to have any effect upon the nephites because of their much provision which they had laid up in store and because of the scantiness of provisions among the robbers for behold they had nothing save it were meat for their subsistence which meat they did obtain in the wilderness and it came to pass that the wild game became scarce in the wilderness insomuch that the robbers were about to perish with hunger and the nephites were continually marching out by day and by night and falling upon their armies cutting them off by thousands and by tens of thousands and thus it became the desire of the people of zemnarihah to withdraw from their design because of the great destruction which came upon them by night and by day and it came to pass that zemnarihah did give command unto his people that they should withdraw themselves from the siege and march into the furthermost parts of the land northward and now gidgadoni being aware of their design 
and knowing of their weakness because of the want of food and the great slaughter which had been made among them therefore he did send out his armies in the night time and did cut off the way of their retreat and did place his armies in the way of their retreat and this did they do in the night time and got on their march beyond the robbers so that on the morrow when the robbers began their march they were met by the armies of the nephites both in the front and in the rear and the robbers who were on the south were also cut off in their places of retreat and all these things were done by command of gidgadoni and there were many thousands who did yield themselves up prisoners unto the nephites and the remainder of them were slain and their leader zebnarihah was taken and hanged upon a tree yea even upon the top thereof until he was dead and when they had hanged him until he was dead they did fell the tree to the earth and did cry with a loud voice saying may the lord preserve his people in righteousness and in holiness of heart that they may cause to be felled to the earth all who shall seek to slay them because of power and secret combinations even as this man hath been felled to the earth and they did rejoice and cry again with one voice saying may the god of abraham and the god of isaac and the god of jacob protect this people in righteousness so long as they shall call on the name of their god for protection and it came to pass that they did break forth all as one in singing and praising their god for the great thing which he had done for them in preserving them from falling into the hands of their enemies yea they did cry hosanna to the most high god and they did cry blessed be the name of the lord god almighty the most high god and their hearts were swollen with joy unto the gushing out of many tears because of the great goodness of god in delivering them out of the hands of their enemies and they knew it was because of their repentance and their humility that they had been delivered from an everlasting destruction End of Third Nephi, chapters one through four. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Third Nephi, chapters five through eight of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters 5 through 8. Third Nephi, chapter 5. And now behold, there was not a living soul among all the people of the Nephites who did doubt, in the least, the words of all the holy prophets who had spoken, for they knew that it must needs be that they must be fulfilled and they knew that it must be expedient that christ had come because of the many signs which had been given according to the words of the prophets and because of the things which had come to pass already they knew that it must needs be that all things should come to pass according to that which had been spoken therefore they did forsake all their sins and their abominations and their whoredoms and did serve god with all diligence day and night and now it came to pass that when they had taken all the robbers prisoners insomuch that none did escape who were not slain they did cast their prisoners into prison and did cause the word of god to be preached unto them and as many as would repent of their sins and enter into a covenant that they would murder no more were set at liberty but as many as there were who did not enter into a covenant and who did still continue to have those secret murders in their hearts yea as many as were found breathing out threatenings against their brethren were condemned and punished according to the law and thus they did put an end to all those wicked and secret and abominable combinations in the which there was so much wickedness and so many murders committed and thus had the twenty and second year passed away and the twenty and third year also and the twenty and fourth and the twenty and fifth and thus had twenty and five years passed away and there had many things transpired which in the eyes of some would be great and marvellous nevertheless they cannot all be written in this book yea this book cannot contain even a hundredth part of what was done among so many people in the space of twenty and five years but behold there are records which do contain all the proceedings of this people and a shorter but true account was given by nephi 
Therefore I have made my record of these things according to the record of Nephi, which was engraven on the plates, which were called the plates of Nephi. And behold, I do make the record on plates which I have made with mine own hands. And behold, I am called Mormon, being called after the land of Mormon, the land in which Alma did establish the church among the people, yea, the first church which was established among them after their transgression. Behold, I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I have been called of him to declare this word among his people, that they might have everlasting life. And it hath become expedient that I, according to the will of God, that the prayers of those who have gone hence, who were the holy ones, should be fulfilled according to their faith, should make a record of these things which had been done. Yea, a small record of that which hath taken place from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem, even down until the present time. Therefore I do make my record from the accounts which have been given by those who were before me, until the commencement of my day. And then I do make a record of the things which I have seen with mine own eyes. And I know the record which I make to be a just and a true record. Nevertheless there are many things which, according to our language, we are not able to write. And now I make an end of my saying, which is of myself, and proceed to give my account of the things which have been before me. I am Mormon, and a pure descendant of Lehi. I have reason to bless my God and my Saviour Jesus Christ, that he brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem, and no one knew it, save it were himself and those whom he brought out of that land, and that he hath given me and my people so much knowledge unto the salvation of our souls. Surely he hath blessed the house of Jacob, and hath been merciful unto the seed of Joseph. And insomuch as the children of Lehi have kept his commandments, he hath blessed them and prospered them according to his word. Yea, and surely shall he again bring a remnant of the seed of Joseph to the knowledge of the Lord their God. And as surely as the Lord liveth, will he gather in from the four quarters of the earth all the remnant of the seed of Jacob, who are scattered abroad upon all the face of the earth. And as he hath covenanted with all the house of Jacob, even so shall the covenant wherewith he hath covenanted with the house of Jacob be fulfilled in his own due time, unto the restoring of all the house of Jacob unto the knowledge of the covenant that he hath covenanted with them. And then shall they know their Redeemer, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then shall they be gathered in from the four quarters of the earth unto their own lands, from whence they have been dispersed. Yea, as the Lord liveth, so shall it be. Amen. Third Nephi, chapter 6. And now it came to pass that the people of the Nephites did all return to their own lands in the twenty and sixth year. Every man with his family, his flocks, and his herds, his horses, and his cattle, and all things whatsoever did belong unto them. And it came to pass that they had not eaten up all their provisions. Therefore they did take with them all that they had not devoured, of all their grain, of every kind, and their gold, and their silver, and all their precious things, and they did return to their own lands and their possessions, both on the north and on the south, both on the land northward and on the land southward. And they granted unto those robbers who had entered into a covenant to keep the peace of the land, who were desirous to remain Lamanites, lands, according to their numbers, that they might have with their labors wherewith to subsist upon. And thus they did establish peace in all the land. And they began again to prosper and to wax great, and the twenty and sixth and seventh years passed away. And there was great order in the land, and they had formed their laws according to equity and justice. And now there was nothing in all the land to hinder the people from prospering continually, except they should fall into transgression. And now it was Gidgadoni and the judge Laconius, and those who had been appointed leaders who had established this great peace in the land. And it came to pass that there were many cities built anew, and there were many old cities repaired. And there were many highways cast up, and many roads made, which led from city to city, and from land to land, and from place to place. And thus passed away the twenty and eighth year, and the people had continual peace. But it came to pass in the twenty and ninth year there began to be some disputings among the people, and some were lifted up unto pride and boastings because of their exceedingly great riches, yea, even unto great persecutions. For there were many merchants in the land, and also many lawyers and many officers, 
and the people began to be distinguished by ranks according to their riches and their chances for learning yea some were ignorant because of their poverty and others did receive great learning because of their riches some were lifted up in pride and others were exceedingly humble some did return railing for railing while others would receive railing and persecution and all manner of afflictions and would not turn and revile again but were humble and penitent before god and thus there became a great inequality in all the land insomuch that the church began to be broken up yea insomuch that in the thirtieth year the church was broken up in all the land save it were among a few of the lamanites who were converted unto the true faith and they would not depart from it for they were firm and steadfast and immovable willing with all diligence to keep the commandments of the lord now the cause of this iniquity of the people was this satan had great power unto the stirring up of the people to do all manner of iniquity and to the puffing them up with pride tempting them to seek for power and authority and riches and the vain things of the world and thus satan did lead away the hearts of the people to do all manner of iniquity therefore they had enjoyed peace but a few years and thus in the commencement of the thirtieth year the people having been delivered up for the space of a long time to be carried about by the temptations of the devil whithersoever he desired to carry them and to do whatsoever iniquity he desired they should and thus in the commencement of this the thirtieth year they were in a state of awful wickedness now they did not sin ignorantly for they knew the will of god concerning them for it had been taught unto them therefore they did wilfully rebel against god and now it was in the days of laconius the son of laconius for laconius did fill the seat of his father and did govern the people that year and there began to be men inspired from heaven and sent forth standing among the people in all the land preaching and testifying boldly of the sins and iniquities of the people and testifying unto them concerning the redemption which the lord would make for his people or in other words the resurrection of christ and they did testify boldly of his death and sufferings now there were many of the people who were exceedingly angry because of those who testified of these things and those who were angry were chiefly the chief priests and they who had been high priests and lawyers yea all those who were lawyers were angry with those who testified of these things now there was no lawyer nor judge nor high priest that could have power to condemn any one to death save their condemnation was signed by the governor of the land now there were many of those who testified of the things pertaining to christ who testified boldly who were taken and put to death secretly by the judges that the knowledge of their death came not unto the governor of the land until after their death now behold this was contrary to the laws of the land that any man should be put to death except they had power from the governor of the land therefore a complaint came up unto the land of zarahemla to the governor of the land against these judges who had condemned the prophets of the lord unto death not according to the law now it came to pass that they were taken and brought up before the judge to be judged of the crime which they had done according to the law which had been given by the people now it came to pass that those judges had many friends and kindreds and the remainder yea even almost all the lawyers and the high priests did gather themselves together and unite with the kindreds of those judges who were to be tried according to the law and they did enter into a covenant one with another yea even into that covenant which was given by them of old which covenant was given and administered by the devil to combine against all righteousness therefore they did combine against the people of the lord and enter into a covenant to destroy them and to deliver those who were guilty of murder from the grasp of justice which was about to be administered according to the law and they did set at defiance the law and the rights of their country and they did covenant one with another to destroy the governor and to establish a king over the land that the land should no more be at liberty but should be subject unto kings third nephi chapter seven now behold i will show unto you that they did not establish a king over the land but in this same year yea the thirtieth year they did destroy upon the judgment seat yea did murder the chief judge of the land and the people were divided one against another and they did separate one from another into tribes every man according to his family and his kindred and friends and thus they did destroy the government of the land 
and every tribe did appoint a chief or a leader over them, and thus they became tribes and leaders of tribes. Now behold, there was no man among them, save he had much family, many kindreds, and friends. Therefore their tribes became exceedingly great. Now all this was done, and there were no wars as yet among them, and all this iniquity had come upon the people because they did yield themselves unto the power of Satan. And the regulations of the government were destroyed because of the secret combinations of the friends and kindreds of those who murdered the prophets. And they did cause a great contention in the land, insomuch that the more righteous part of the people had nearly all become wicked. Yea, there were but few righteous men among them. And thus six years had not passed away, since the more part of the people had turned from their righteousness, like the dog to his vomit, or like the sow to her wallowing in the mire. Now this secret combination, which had brought so great iniquity upon the people, did gather themselves together, and did place at their head a man whom they did call Jacob. And they did call him their king. Therefore he became a king over this wicked band, and he was one of the chiefest who had given his voice against the prophets who testified of Jesus. And it came to pass that they were not so strong in number as the tribes of the people, who were united together, save it were their leaders to establish their laws, every one according to his tribe. Nevertheless they were enemies. Notwithstanding they were not a righteous people, yet they were united in the hatred of those who had entered into a covenant to destroy the government. Therefore Jacob, seeing that their enemies were more numerous than they, he being the king of the band, therefore he commanded his people that they should take their flight into the northernmost part of the land, and there build up unto themselves a kingdom until they were joined by dissenters, for he flattered them that there would be many dissenters, and they became sufficiently strong to contend with the tribes of the people. And they did so. And so speedy was their march that it could not be impeded until they had gone forth out of the reach of the people, and thus ended the thirtieth year, and thus were the affairs of the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the thirty and first year that they were divided into tribes, every man according to his family, kindred, and friends. Nevertheless they had come to an agreement that they would not go to war one with another, but they were not united as to their laws and their manner of government for they were established according to the minds of those who were their chiefs and their leaders. But they did establish very strict laws that one tribe should not trespass against another, insomuch that in some degree they had peace in the land. Nevertheless their hearts were turned from the Lord their God, and they did stone the prophets, and did cast them out from among them. And it came to pass that Nephi, having been visited by angels and also the voice of the Lord, Therefore, having seen angels, and being eyewitness, and having had power given unto him that he might know concerning the ministry of Christ, and also being eyewitness to their quick return from righteousness unto their wickedness and abominations, therefore being grieved for the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, went forth among them in that same year, and began to testify boldly repentance and remission of sins through faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did minister many things unto them, and all of them cannot be written, and a part of them would not suffice, therefore they are not written in this book. And Nephi did minister with power and with great authority. And it came to pass that they were angry with him, even because he had a greater power than they. For it were not possible that they could disbelieve his words, for so great was his faith on the Lord Jesus Christ that angels did minister unto him daily. And in the name of Jesus did he cast out devils and unclean spirits, and even his brother did he raise from the dead, after he had been stoned and suffered death by the people. And the people saw it, and did witness of it, and were angry with him because of his power. And he did also do many more miracles in the sight of the people, in the name of Jesus. And it came to pass that the thirty and first year did pass away, and there were but few who were converted unto the Lord. But as many as were converted did truly signify unto the people that they had been visited by the power and spirit of God, which was in Jesus Christ, in whom they believed. And as many as had devils cast out of them, and were healed of their sicknesses and their infirmities, did truly manifest unto the people that they had been wrought upon by the spirit of God, and had been healed. 
and they did show forth signs also, and did do some miracles among the people. Thus passed away the thirty and second year also. And Nephi did cry unto the people in the commencement of the thirty and third year, and he did preach unto them repentance and remission of sins. Now I would have you to remember also that there were none who were brought unto repentance who were not baptized with water. Therefore there were ordained of Nephi men unto this ministry, that all such as should come unto them should be baptized with water, and this as a witness and a testimony before God and unto the people, that they had repented and received a remission of their sins. And there were many in the commencement of this year that were baptized unto repentance, and thus the more part of the year did pass away. Third Nephi, chapter 8. And now it came to pass that according to our record, and we know our record to be true, for behold, it was a just man who did keep the record, for he truly did many miracles in the name of Jesus. And there was not any man who could do a miracle in the name of Jesus, save he were cleansed every whit from his iniquity. And now it came to pass, if there was no mistake made by this man in the reckoning of our time, the thirty and third year had passed away, and the people began to look with great earnestness for the sign which had been given by the prophet Samuel the Lamanite, yea, for the time that there should be darkness for the space of three days over the face of the land. And there began to be great doubtings and disputations among the people, notwithstanding so many signs had been given. And it came to pass in the thirty and fourth year, in the first month, on the fourth day of the month, there arose a great storm, such an one as never had been known in all the land. And there was also a great and terrible tempest, and there was terrible thunder, insomuch that it did shake the whole earth, as if it was about to divide asunder. And there were exceedingly sharp lightnings, such as never had been known in all the land. And the city of Zarahemla did take fire, and the city of Moroni did sink into the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof were drowned. And the earth was carried up upon the city of Moronihah, that in the place of the city there became a great mountain, and there was a great and terrible destruction in the land southward. But behold, there was a more great and terrible destruction in the land northward, for behold, the whole face of the land was changed, because of the tempest, and the whirlwinds, and the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the exceedingly great quaking of the whole earth. And the highways were broken up, the level roads were spoiled, and many smooth places became rough, and many great and notable cities were sunk, and many were burned, and many were shaken, till the buildings thereof had fallen to the earth, and the inhabitants thereof were slain, and the places were left desolate. And there were some cities which remained, but the damage thereof was exceedingly great, and there were many of them who were slain. And there were some who were carried away in the whirlwind, and whither they went no man knoweth, save they know that they were carried away. And thus the face of the whole earth became deformed because of the tempests, and the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the quaking of the earth. And behold, the rocks were rent in twain, and they were broken up upon the face of the whole earth, insomuch that they were found in broken fragments, and in seams, and in cracks upon all the face of the land. And it came to pass that when the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the storm, and the tempest, and the quakings of the earth did cease, for behold, they did last for about the space of three hours, and it was said by some that the time was greater, nevertheless all these great and terrible things were done in about the space of three hours. And then, behold, there was darkness upon the face of the land. And it came to pass that there was thick darkness upon all the face of the land, insomuch that the inhabitants thereof who had not fallen could feel the vapor of darkness. And there could be no light because of the darkness, neither candles, neither torches, neither could there be fire kindled with their fine and exceedingly dry wood, so that there could not be any light at all. And there was not any light seen, neither fire, nor glimmer, neither the sun, nor the moon, nor the stars, for so great were the mists of darkness which were upon the face of the land. And it came to pass that it did last for the space of three days, that there was no light seen, and there was great mourning and howling and weeping among all the people continually. Yea, great were the groanings of the people because of the darkness and the great destruction which had come upon them. And in one place they were heard to cry, saying, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day, 
and then would our brethren have been spared, that they would not have been burned in that great city Zarahemla. And in another place they were heard to cry and mourn, saying, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day, and had not killed and stoned the prophets, and cast them out, then would our mothers and our fair daughters and our children have been spared, and not have been buried up in that great city Moronihah. And thus were the howlings of the people great and terrible. End of Third Nephi, chapters 5 through 8, recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com.